Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books let's begin with the first chart which includes the fluid properties then after the fluid statics and the third one is fluid kinematics before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the upcoming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box let's see one by one first one is the fluid properties in fluid properties there are some properties for that you have to remember their equations as well as their mlt dimensions so here first one is density which is equal to m by v then dimensions for the density is equal to m1 l minus 3 then for specific gravity dimension is m0 l0 t0 then for specific weight and bulk modulus there are two equations are there first one is for gamma is equal to weight by volume so gamma is equal to mg by v which is equal to rho into j for bulk modulus k is equal to volumetric stress divided by volumetric strain here units are also important so for the specific weight unit will be newton per meter cube and for bulk modulus unit will be pascal or you can say that kg per meter into second square then after fifth property is compressibility which is equal to alpha alpha is equal to 1 by k and dimension is m minus 1 l1 t2 then Grassoff's number gr is equal to bg delta t into l cube by mu square where b proportional to 1 upon t then for coefficient of volumetric extension beta is equal to 1 upon v into del v by del t at p and beta is also equal to minus 1 upon rho into del rho by del t at p and dimension is m0 l0 t0 theta raised to minus 1 then viscosity mu is equal to tau into mu into du by dy and velocity gradient phi is equal to du by dy which is equal to meter per second by meter so unit will be s raised to minus 1 means you can say that second inverse and d is equal to m0 l0 t raised to minus 1 and theta raised to 0 then sigma t is equal to newton per meter then here tenth one is kinematic viscosity mu is equal to mu by rho and meter square per second which is equal to 10 raised to 4 strokes here one stroke is equal to 1 semi square per second then d is equal to m0 l 2d minus 1 and uh, kinematic viscosity for water is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meters square per second and for air 10 raised to minus 5 meters square per second then newton's law of viscosity here shear stress proportional to rate of shear strain or you can say that tau is proportional to d phi by dt or du by dy so tau is equal to mu into du by dy then here unit of mu is equal to newton into second per meter square then mu is equal to 10 boys and uh, shear stress tau is equal to newton per meter square then 14th is the dynamic viscosity for a moving plate mu is equal to 4 into t into delta by pi w d cube h here effect of t on viscosity number 11 now as you increase the temperature the row of liquid will decrease and for air with increase in temperature the row will increase and mu is proportional to under root t for ideal gas and mu is proportional to t raised to n for real gas here two diagrams are also there now the next topic is for non-Newtonian fluids, time-independent and time-dependent, two types are there. Now in the 
टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट प्लास्टिक्स देर आर बिंगम प्लास्टिक दैन स्पीडो प्लास्टिक एंड डायलेक्टेंट प्लास्टिक फॉर बिंगम प्लास्टिक एन इज इक्वल टू वन एंड बीटा इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो दैन नेचुरली बिहेव लाइक सॉलिड इफ टाव और सीओ स्ट्रेस इज लेस एग्जाम्पल्स आर लाइक टूथपेस्ट दैन जेल दैन ड्रिलिंग मर्ड एंड स्लज दैन इन दूडो प्लास्टिक mu is lesser and n less than 1 beta is equal to 0 examples are like paper pulp then rubber solution lipstick paints ketchup blood and polymetric solution here the third one is dilutant for that n greater than 1 and mu is higher then b is equal to 0 now examples are like butter quicksand and starch then after time dependent fluids in that two types are there thixotropic and rheopactic fluid so in the thixotropic temperature will be higher and mu will be lesser than n is less than 1 beta is not equal to 0 then examples are like the enamels gels and colloids here it is also known as the pseudo plastic time dependent fluids then the second one is rheopactic fluid for that mu is higher and t is also higher here mu for viscosity as you all know then lubricants and the solidify when shaken then examples are like gypsum paste then printer inks and it is also known as time dependent dilutant fluids then there are two diagrams are their first one is the tau versus du by dy and The second one is mu versus temperature. Then the next topic is surface tension sigma t. Here direction of sigma t is always perpendicular to the line on which it is acting and tangential to the surface. Then sigma t always on the free surface and on 1 meter surface if 7 g is equal to surface tension then surface tension of water is equal to 0.072 Newton per meter, and here capillary action is there. First one is capillary rise. For that, the equation will be h is equal to four sigma into cos theta by rho g d. Here theta less than ninety degree for water. Then capillary fall, theta greater than ninety degree. Here h is equal to minus four sigma cos theta by rho g d. You have to use this equation when liquid surface supports the another fluid. of density rho b then vapor pressure p min is always less than pv for forming the bubbles then here for cavitation p in greater than p atomic then one note is there delta p is equal to p in minus p out then delta p is equal to 2 sigma t by d for liquid jet then delta p is equal to 4 sigma by d for liquid drop and delta p is equal to 8 sigma by d for soap bu- air bubble in the water is also considered as the liquid drop now the second topic is fluid statics in that first one is the basic laws first one is hydrostatic law in the static fluid the pressure increases with the depth in the direction of gravity p is equal to rho g s the equation is for that Then second one is Pascal's law. P x is equal to P y is equal to P z, which is equal to P. Then third equation for Bernoulli's equation, P by rho g plus v square by 2 g plus z equal to constant. Now the pressure measurement is there. First one is for the barometer. It shows the atmospheric pressure and P is equal to scalar quantity. Then one bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square, and one mp is equal to 10 bar. And here p absolute is equal to p gauge plus p atmosphere now the second one is the piezometer which is used for small and positive pressure measurement then manometric liquid should have high density in the piezometer and you can use the equation of s1 h1 is equal to s2 h2 where s is equal to relative density h is equal to height 
then the third one is forces on the submerged body here first one is the horizontal position f is equal to rho g into h bar into a here h star is equal to h bar then vertical position f is equal to rho g into h bar into a then h star is equal to h bar plus ig upon a into h bar for vertical position then third one is for inclined position f is equal to rho g h bar into a and i g is equal to i naught minus a into h bar then h star is equal to h bar plus i g into sin square theta upon a into h bar here sin theta is equal to h by x which is equal to h bar by x bar which is equal to h star by x star then after g m is equal to i mean upon epsilon minus b g and i is equal to b d cube by 12 then third one is simple manometer for that it can measure the positive and negative height and d is very small then fourth one is for inclined single column manometer it is used for increase the sensitive vector by 1 upon sin theta then fifth one is inverted and u-tube manometer it is used to measure liquid pressure only here S manometric should be less than S liquid. Here S for relative density. Now the forces on the curved plane. There are equations for that. First one is liquid is present above the curved surface. For that F H is equal to rho g h bar into A, which is equal to P H C G into A and f is equal to rho g b above the free surface fr is equal to under root fv square plus fh square then tan theta is equal to fv by fh then for liquid is present below the surface then fh is equal to zero and for the third one liquid on both the sides then fv is equal to m into g and f net is equal to zero here note that for cylinder and sphere, FR passes through the CG and CP. Then X bar is equal to A1, X1 plus A2, X2 by A1 plus A2. And F is equal to pi by 3 into rho g r cube. Then FH is equal to 2 by 3 into rho g r cube. Here H bar is equal to 4 R by 3 pi. The next one is for buoyancy principle, FB is equal to rho g into V. Then P is equal to E raised to minus G Z by R T plus C. Then W is also equal to M into G which is equal to rho G B. Then in the stability there are three types are there. First one is the stable equilibrium. Then second one is unstable equilibrium. And the third one is neutral equilibrium. Then here these nodes are very useful for the gate examination because from this table so many times the questions were asked in the exam first one is for completely submerged body if b is above g then the case is for the stable equilibrium then the second one is if g is below the b then for unstable equilibrium and if b is equal to g then neutral equilibrium is there so you can remember like we will get for that the stable equilibrium is there then the second one is for floating body if m above g then stable equilibrium is there then if g below the m then unstable equilibrium is there and for neutral equilibrium m is equal to g here for the stable equilibrium gm greater than zero then for unstable equilibrium gm less than zero and for neutral equilibrium gm is equal to zero then there is the concept of time period oscillation of ship. Then t is equal to 2 pi into under root k square by g into gm, where gm is equal to metacentric height. And for general passengers, gm should lower and t should higher. Then for military purpose, gm should higher and t should lower. Because in the general passengers, more comfort should be there and for the military purpose more stability should be there then there is one example for the finding the value of metacentric height here gm is equal to 0.5 so you can say that the stable equilibrium is there 
then there are some equations for the Stokes theorem then after the Joukowsky's theorem and the orthogonal streamline and equipotential line here these two equations are very important dx by v is equal to minus dy by u and dy by dx is equal to minus u by v and the multiplication of the slopes are minus 1 then the third one is fluid kinematics for that the first topic is Lagrangian approach here in this approach particle or system approach is there then particle oriented approach then v is equal to function of x y z and t and in the Lagrangian approach then in the Eulerian approach first one is the control volume approach then position oriented approach and v is equal to function of x y z and t here x y z is not the initial position in the Lagrangian approach it should be the initial position then streamlines are there it is the imaginary line in the flow such that the velocity of all the particles on that line at a given instant is tangential to it then properties for the streamlines are it cannot intersect each other at the same time then the second one is flow cannot cross the streamline then second one then second one is for stream tube stream lines makes a loop from each point and then it makes the tube is called the stream tube then fourth one is the path line you can say that the path of a single particle over a period of time and it represents the history on footprints of a fluid particles then the next one is streak line for that it is the line obtained by the joining series of particles which sequentially passed through the same point and notice there for steady flow d rho by dt is equal to 0 and streamline is equal to path line which is equal to streak line then sixth one is the timeline it is the line between then the sixth one is timeline it is the line obtained by joining a set of the adjacent particles which have marked at the same instant and it is used to visualize the velocity profile in the flow then after there are some equations are there first one is for steady flow it is related to the time and initial position then thus uniform flow which is related to the space and position of the eighth one is the incompressible flow for that two equations should be satisfied first one is del dot v bar is equal to zero and the second one is del square into phi is equal to zero then for the e rotational flow del cross v bar is equal to zero and del square psi is equal to zero these four equations were asked so many times in the examination from this chapter then there is continued equation is there del into rho into v bar plus del rho by del t which is equal to zero then for steady flow del into rho into v bar is equal to zero then incompressible steady flow del dot v bar is equal to zero and for incompressible unsteady flow del dot v bar is equal to zero where rho equal to constant then for compressible and unsteady flow del into rho v bar plus del rho by del t is equal to zero then there is the streamline functions are there which is also very useful first one is u is equal to minus del psi by del y and v is equal to del psi by del x then if this condition is satisfied of del square psi is equal to zero then you can say that the flow is irrotational and for velocity potential function the right equations are there first one is u is equal to minus del phi upon del x then v is equal to minus del phi upon del psi and w is equal to minus del phi by del z here it should satisfy the equation of del dot v bar is equal to 0 and del square phi is equal to 0 then you can say that the flow is incompressible flow and there are equations for the velocity potential function 
in the polar coordinates. First one is ur is equal to minus 1 upon r into d psi by d theta which is equal to minus d phi by dr and u theta is equal to plus d psi by dr which is equal to minus 1 upon r into d phi by d theta. Then CO deformation is there. First one is for CO strand. Epsilon V is equal to del V by del X plus del U by del Y into del T. Then second one is CO strand rate. Epsilon V is equal to del V by del X plus del U by del Y. Then third one is tau XY is equal to mu into del V by del X plus del U by del Y. Then velocity gradients for that three equations are there. Then after angular velocity omega is equal to 1 upon 2 into del cross v bar then there is a topic of vorticity omega is equal to 2 into angular velocity bar then omega is also equal to del cross v bar e rotational flow omega is equal to 0 then fluid acceleration is there for that there are equation of acceleration in the x plane then acceleration in the streamline coordinates is also there a n is equal to v square by r and a s is equal to v into dv by ds plus dv by dt here a s is for convective or adjective acceleration and a n is for local acceleration then there are three equations for the acceleration in cylindrical coordinate system then after material derivative is there d of t by dt is equal to u into del t by del x plus v into del t by del y plus w into del t by del z plus del t by del t then after volume dissolution rate for that epsilon v is equal to del dot v bar then here del x by u is equal to del y by v which is the equation for slope between the streamline and for equipotential so these are the main equations we have discussed it briefly from these equations only the questions were asked mostly in the gate examination and in the fluid mechanics you have to remember the lots of equations but most of them are very easy to remember so this is all about the first chart of the fluid mechanics in which we have discussed about the fluid properties then after the fluid statics and the last one is the fluid kinematics and in the second chart we will cover the fluid dynamics then after the laminar flow and the turbulent flow as well as the flow through the pipes. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Now the second chart of fluid mechanics includes there are four chapters. First one is the fluid dynamics, then after the laminar flow, then after the turbulent flow, and the last one is the flow through pipes. Let's begin with the first one which is fluid dynamics. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. So here in the fluid dynamics, first one is the definition of the fluid dynamics. It is the study of motion of fluid under the influence of various forces is called the fluid dynamics. And there are two forces are there. First one is the surface force which acts on the surface and the example is shear force and the pressure force. The second one is the body force which acts on the body at the centroid of the fluid element and the examples are like self weight and the centrifugal force and the last one is the inertia force. Then after there is the Euler's equation of motion is there, equation for that sigma f is equal to ma and fp plus fp is equal to ma. Then after navier stokes equations are there fv plus fv plus fv plus fi is equal to zero but for navier stroke equation you have to remember these three equations in the form of x y and z these are very simple like for x direction mu into del square u minus del p by del x plus rho into gx which is equal to rho into du by dt 
Now for y direction it is very easy to remember that we have to replace the u by v and x by y. Similarly for the z direction we have to replace the w in the place of u and z in the place of x. Then after Bernoulli's equation is there v by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z equal to constant and the other is v1 by rho 1g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 is equal to v2 by rho 2g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 plus hf here hf is equal to head losses and there are some assumptions which are taken in the Bernoulli's equation first one is the flow should be incompressible then sturdy flow is there then ideal fluid then after applicable only along the streamline and no heat or external work interaction in the flow then there is p top 2 equation is there p stake is equal to p state plus rho is square by 2 and h is equal to p stake minus p state upon rho g here p state is equal to static and stake for stagnation point then after Torricelli's equations for velocity v is equal to under root 2 gh then p top tube or parental tube for static v is equal to root 2 gh and h is equal to x into rho m by rho minus 1 which is equal to p stake minus p state by rho g here p stake minus p state is equal to manometric height then after venturi meter it works on the Bernoulli's principle and in the converging portion V will increase, P will decrease Then for the diverging portion V will decrease and P will increase Then the equation of V2 square minus V1 square by 2G is equal to H1 minus HF And Q is equal to CD into A1 A2 upon under root A1 square minus A2 square into root 2GH Then after orifice meter and nozzle meter Q is equal to CD into a1 a2 upon under root a1 square minus a2 square into root 2 gh then momentum equation is there sigma f is equal to m dot into v out minus m dot into v in plus l by del t into m dot into v bar at control volume then this table you have to remember for venturi meter the losses are low and CD is equal to 0.95 to 0.99 then cost is higher and accuracy is also higher similarly for the nozzle meter losses are medium then CD is also 0.7 to 0.8 and cost is medium then accuracy is medium and for orifice meter losses are higher CD is lower 0.55 to 0.7 cost is low for the orifice meter and accuracy will be lower the impact of jet for that there are two types first one is for free plate and second one is for curved plate the equation for the free plate are first one is f is equal to rho a v square for normal impact on fixed plate then after f is equal to rho a into v minus u square which is for plate moving in the direction of jet then the third one is for moving inclined plane, Fn is equal to rho a into v minus u square into sin theta and for fixed inclined plane, Fn is equal to rho a v square into sin theta. Then similarly for the curve plate, F is equal to rho a v square into 1 plus cos theta, F is equal to rho a into v minus u square into 1 plus cos theta. Then after moving inclined plate, Q1 is equal to Q y2 into 1 plus cos theta and Q2 is equal to Q y2 into 1 minus cos theta. Here jet strikes on the inclined plate, the oblique impact on the fixed flat plate. So you have to use Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 and theta is equal to 90. So Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q by 2. For theta is equal to 90. Then after four plate mounted on the periphery of wheel, then Fn is equal to rho A V into V minus U and omega n is equal to fn minus u then force exerted by a jet on a hinge plate then fn is equal to rho a v square into sine 90 minus theta and for equilibrium sine theta is equal to rho a v square by 
W where W is equal to mg. So this is all about the fluid dynamics. Now the second chapter is laminar flow. For laminar flow, R is should less than 2000. Then for translation flow, R is should be between 2000 to 4000. And for turbulent flow, R is should be greater than 4000. Here R is Reynolds number. Then for hydrodynamic entrance length. LE by D ratio is equal to 0 0.05 into RE for laminar flow and LE by D ratio is 4.4 into RE is 1.6 for turbulent flow. Then there are three examples are there. First one is for finding the value of omega then after the second example you have to find the R and Y and the third one is for finding the value of tau and the third concept is for laminar flow through circular pipe. Here CO stress tau is equal to minus dp by dx into r by 2 which is equal to minus mu into du by dr which is equal to mu into u by h. The last two equations for laminar flow. Then u is equal to u max into 1 minus r square by r square and here small r is equal to r by root 2. Then v average is equal to u max by 2 and del p is equal to 32 into mu v average into l upon d square here t omega is equal to del p by l into d by 4 and tau is equal to 2 into mu into u max into r upon r square then hf is equal to del p by rho g and t omega is equal to 2 into mu into u max upon r then fourth one is cote flow for this flow one plate is fixed and the other plate is parallel to the first one and which is moving with the velocity of u. These questions were asked in the gate examination. Then after if p1 is equal to p2 then dp by dx is equal to 0 and if p1 greater than p2 then dp by dx less than 0 and if p2 greater than p1 then dp by dx greater than 0. Then for laminar flow between two large fixed parallel plates you have to remember these equations of tau u then v average and del p as well as the tau max at y is equal to 0 and v max at y is equal to h by 2 for the laminar flow between two large fixed parallel plates then there is the topic of pipe networks and there are two types are there first one is pipe in series and the second one is pipes in parallel for pipes in series q1 is equal to q2 is equal to q3 is equal to q and del p is equal to del p1 plus del p2 then hf is equal to hf1 plus hf2 and fl by d raised to 5 is equal to f1 l1 by d1 raised to 5 then for the pipes in parallel then for the pipes in parallel connections q1 plus q2 is equal to q and del p is equal to del p1 plus del p2 then hf is equal to hf1 is equal to hf2 and under root d raised to 5 upon f into l which is equal to under root d1 raised to 5 upon f1 into l1 so from this last two equations for the series and parallel connections the questions were so many times asked in the examination so just remember the fourth equations of the both the types then fifth one is the kinematic connection then fifth one is kinematic correction factor alpha is equal to 1 upon av cube into integration u cube into da then alpha is equal to 2 for laminar flow and alpha is equal to 1.05 to 1.7 for turbulent flow then after momentum correction factor beta is equal to 1 upon a into v square into u square da here v is equal to average velocity u is equal to local velocity at distance r and beta is equal to 4 by 3 for laminar flow and beta is equal to 1.01 to 1.03 for turbulent flow then laminar flow through inclined planes the equations are there t is equal to minus dp star by dx into r by 2 where p star is equal to p plus rho g z then the equations of u max delta p stars and u is also there here the equation of u is very important 
u is equal to minus h square upon 2 mu into dp by dx and y by h minus y square by h square then u max is equal to 1 minus r square by r square and del p star is equal to 32 mu v average l upon d square from these four equations there are so many times questions were asked and there is one other diagram is there for the tl where tl is equal to total energy line and hl is equal to tl minus k where hl is equal to hydraulic grade line and k is equal to kinetic energy line and hl may be fall or rise this you have to remember next chapter is the turbulent flow for this chapter there are some equations are important and uh, some concepts are for your knowledge because sometimes the questions will ask from these concepts also first one is the Reynolds experiment for that three diagrams are there then after the time average velocity is there for that u bar is equal to 1 upon t into integration of 0 to t into u dt and for v bar and omega bar the equations are similar then time average of the fluctuating velocity u bar is equal to 0 and for 1d turbulent flow over the flat plate the equations of viscous stress tv is equal to mu into du bar upon dy and dr is equal to minus rho into u dash into v dash bar then tr is equal to minus rho into l square into du bar upon dy bar here it is near to surface the value of stress then there is a node there which is most important at higher Reynolds number there is different value of k by d and surface reference will be higher it will be increased and f is equal to phi of re and k by d then after turbulent flow through circular pipe for this type of flow rho is equal to 11.6 into mu upon mu star then tau is equal to minus dp by dx into r and u is equal to u bar max into 1 minus r by r raised to 1 by 7 and uh, hydrodynamically smooth surface for that k is less than 0.25 into dv here k by del v is less than 0.25 for the hydrodynamic smooth surface five equations first one is u bar by v star then second one is for u max by v star third one is the u max bar minus u r bar upon v star is equal to 5.75 log r upon r minus r then the fourth one is mu by mu star is equal to 5.75 log 10 into r v star by u plus 1.75 here r is equal to 0 then fifth one is u max by v is equal to 1 plus 1.33 root 5 so these are the equations you can take a screenshot and note down in the book because in the short notes we have covered only the equations which are important so you just need to take a screenshot and write down at your own then there are two notes are there you can take a screenshot if you want first one is for f is equal to 4 into f test and for 3d turbulent flow there are nine components of Reynolds stress are present the next chapter is flow through pipes here two types of losses are there first one is for the major loss and the second one is for the minor loss for the major loss delta p is equal to 32 mu l upon d square and hf is equal to f l v square by 2 gd these two equations are very most important for the examination the first equation is known as the hagen poisson equation the second equation hf is equal to fl v square by 2gd is known as the darcy wasebeck equation here remember that f is equal to 4 into f dash where f is equal to fanning friction factor and f dash is equal to friction coefficient 
then HF is equal to 32 mu L by rho GD which is for laminar flow. From these three questions, questions were so many times asked in the examination for finding the ratios of F by D or L by G or any other ratios. So you have to remember these equations. Then the head loss due to the friction is given by the RC wave break equations. Here as you can see that HF is equal to FLV square by 2GD then HF is equal to FLQ square upon 12.1 into D raised to 5. This is also important in the examination you can use. As you can see that HF is proportional to L by D raised to 5 and HF is proportional to delta P by rho G. Then F is equal to 0 0.3164 upon RE raised to 0.25 which is Blasius equation. Then after for turbulent flow, rough surface 1 upon root 5 is equal to minus 2 into log 10 into R by K plus 1.74. Then in the laminar flow, F only depend on the RE and independent from the K by D. Then for non-laminar flow, 1 by root F is equal to minus 2 into log 10 into K by D upon 3.7 plus 2.51 upon RE into root F which is known as the Cole Brook equation. Then there is an example for Q proportional to D raised to 4 and delta P proportional to V raised to 1.8. Then Moody's curve is there. The graphical representation of the Moody's curve you can see there. Then equation based on which this curve is made. The equation is of Cole Brook equation. Then after for minor losses, first one is for loss due to the sudden contraction. The equation is HL contraction is equal to VL square by 2G into 1 by CC minus 1 square where CC is equal to SC upon AL coefficient of vena contractor. Then after second one is loss due to the sudden expansion, HL expansion is equal to V1 square minus 2 into V1 V2 plus V2 square by 2G. Then HL expansion is also equal to V1 square minus V2 square by 2G, which is known as the Borda Carnot equation. To set the pipe influence for sharp edges, the KL is equal to 0.5, then for rounded edge, KL less than 0.5, and for redundant entrance, KL greater than 0.5, and low set, vent, valve, or pipe fitting, etc. Then HL is equal to KL into V2 square by 2G. That V is equal to under root 2GH. Use only when head loss is negligible. And by increasing the L, VL will decrease, then K will decrease and HF will increase. And also, if D increase, the value of Q increase. Then after there is one more notice there, f is equal to function of RE and K by D. Then for turbulent flow, first one is for smooth surface, f decrease with respect to RE increase. And for rough surface, initially f decrease with respect to RE, then f will increase with respect to RE. And third for the same RE. K by D will increase and F will increase. Then after the fourth one is after critical Reynolds number, K by D will increase and F will increase. Here up to R E critical, F will constant. So this is all about the second chart of fluid mechanics in which we have covered fluid dynamics, then after laminar flow, then after turbulent flow. And at the end, the flow through pipes is there. Now, in the third chart of the fluid mechanics, we'll include the boundary layer theory, then, after the dimensional analysis, and the last one is the hydraulic turbines. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next week. Now in the third chart of the fluid mechanics, 
will include the boundary layer theory, then after the dimensional analysis and at the end the hydraulic turbines. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the upcoming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. So in the boundary layer theory, here you can see that basics, first one is external flow, it is the layer near to surface, boundary layer is generated and inside the boundary layer shear stress and drag force is not neglected. The flow is governed by the Navier-Stokes equation. Then the region outside the boundary layer is almost constant velocity and velocity gradient d over dy is equal to zero then shear stress is also equal to zero then this flow is treated as the ideal flow and governed by Euler's equation then after displacement thickness delta star it is defined as the distance normal to surface such that the mass flow rate passing through this distance corresponding to the ideal flow is equal to loss in mass flow rate due to formation of boundary layer. Here the equation for the delta star is equal to integration 0 to delta into 1 minus u upon u infinite into dy. Then momentum thickness theta is equal to integration 0 to delta u by u infinite into 1 minus u upon u infinite into dy. Then drag force is equal to momentum lost by the fluid per unit time. Fd is equal to rho b u infinity square into theta and t omega x is equal to rho into u infinite square into d theta by dx. Here t omega or you can say that tw for whole and this equation is known as the von Karman momentum integral equation and energy thickness delta E is equal to integration 0 to infinity u by u infinite into 1 minus u square upon u infinity square into dy here delta is equal to 0 to infinity 1 dy then boundary layer set factor h is equal to delta star by theta and the value of h is equal to 2.59 for laminar flow and h is equal to 1.3 for turbulent flow then delta greater than delta star greater than theta and less than delta e this note is very important for the examination then there is one more diagram for boundary layer over flat plate now the next topic is lift and drag forces here drag is equal to shear stress and lift is equal to pressure force we are normal to the free stream velocity for solid which is circular then a is equal to pi by 4 into d square for the second type a is equal to l into core and for the third type plate a is equal to l into b here cl is equal to fl upon half rho u infinity square into a and cd is equal to ft upon 1 by 2 rho into u infinity square into a this equation is very important for the drag force then after the note is there for velocity separation point du by dy is equal to 0 and dp by dx greater than 0 then t omega is equal to 0 which are sufficient condition for the velocity separation then here boundary conditions for velocity profile the boundary condition must be used in the same sequence as given above so you have to use the same sequence for the examples also first one is for no slip condition at y of 0 is equal to second one is at y of delta u is equal to 0.99 u infinite then third one is no variation in velocity beyond delta at y is equal to delta du by dy is equal to 0 then linear velocity or constant velocity here shear stress near to the surface tau is equal to mu into du by dy which is equal to constant and tau is equal to mu into d square u by dy square which is also equal to zero then at y is equal to zero d square u by dy square is equal to zero and y is equal to delta 
d square u by dy square is equal to 0 and here one more equation is there ft is equal to 3 into pi into mu vd for stroke slope now the effect of the turbulence on the drag force here du by dy turbulent is greater than du by dy laminar and t omega turbulent is greater than t omega laminar then delta star is equal to delta by 3 then there is one table which is very helpful in the examination first one is del x is equal to 5x upon under root rex then second one is cfx is equal to 0.664 upon rex which is equal to t w into x upon half rho infinity square and del x proportional to root x the curve will be parabolic then after the third one is cd is equal to 1.328 upon under root rex which is equal to ft upon half into rho u infinity square into a then for the turbulent flow first one is del x is equal to 0.38 into x upon rex raised to 1 by 5 now for the turbulent flow first one is del x is equal to 0.38x divided by rex raised to 1 by 5 and the cf is equal to 0.058 divided by rex raised to 1 by 5 which is equal to twx upon 1 by 5 rho u infinity square and third one is cd is equal to 0 0.074 divided by re raised to 1 by 5 which is equal to fd upon half rho infinity square into a and here note that del x proportional to c into d proportional to cf proportional to fd proportional to 1 by r raised to 1 by 5 then after Buckingham Pi theorem and its application first one is Buckingham Pi theorem for that m is equal to total number of fundamental dimensions required to describe all n variables and n is equal to physical variable and n minus m is equal to dimensionless variables so in detail you can check out about this method in youtube or google here we are discussing only the sort nodes so we'll include only the fundamental quantities and the advantages as you can see here first one is the fundamental quantities they are mass length time temperature current luminous intensity and the amount of substance then then there is a note for the buckingham by theorem dimensionless variables such as eta theta fraction factor it should be one of the pi term and similarly it is two variable having same unit then ratio of the two is one of the pi term then the advantages for the buckingham pi theorem first one is it reduces the number of variables in the experimental study by huge factor then second one is result for full scale product can be predicted by conducting test on the geometrically same shape of large size hence it reduces the cost of the analysis the flores law similarities here the first one is when the gravitational force is dominant force so first one is vr is equal to under root lr then second one is r is equal to 1 third one is qr is equal to lr raised to 5 by 2 then fourth one is tr is equal to under root lr then fifth one is fr is equal to rho r into lr cube then there are some important numbers are there first one is Frode's number fr is equal to under root fi by fc then gravitational force fc is proportional to rho into l cube into g then fi is proportional to rho into v square into l square which is inertia force then second number is Mach number ma is equal to here you can see that value of ma is equal to v by under root k by rho which is equal to v by c 
then the third one is the Weber number WE is equal to inertia force upon the surface tension which is equal to rho v square l square upon sigma into l so you can say that we is equal to rho v square l upon sigma then fifth one is euler's number eu is equal to under root if upon vf so eu is equal to v by under root v by rho and t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g but an equation is there for the vortex motion you can note down that z is equal to omega square into r square by 2 into g and p2 minus p1 is equal to rho into omega square by z into r2 square minus r1 square then for this type of diagram initial level x plus y is equal to omega square into r square by 2g then for the third one parabolic of revolution x is equal to y is equal to omega square into r square upon 4g here vp is equal to half into v of cylinder now for the incomplete similarity now for the incomplete similarity Vr is equal to mu by LR and Vr is equal to under root LR. Then mu R is equal to LR raised to 3 by 2. This you have to remember. Here similarity laws and the model studies. First one is model must satisfy the certain conditions. In that, first one is geometric similarity. For that the equation will be like lm upon lp is equal to bm upon vp is equal to hm upon hp is equal to lr here length ratio is equal to lr then area ratio is equal to ar which is equal to lr square then kinematic similarity vr is equal to vam upon vap and vbm upon vbp here m for the model and p for the prototype dimensional similarities REM is equal to REP then gravitational force FR is equal to V by root GL then Reynolds law of similarity here it is used when the viscous force is dominating force in the flow the first equation is REM is equal to REP which is equal to rho VL by mu which is equal to VL by mu then VR is equal to mu R by LR QR is equal to mu R into LR then TR is equal to LR by VR acceleration AR is equal to mu R square upon LR cube and FR is equal to rho R into mu R square then power ratio PR is equal to rho R into VR cube upon LR so these equations we have to remember because from these equations the proportionality questions were asked in the examination for the Reynolds law similarity or the questions will be like for the closed conduit or pipe flow or flow through pipes or AC ducts then you have to use these equations and if the questions will be asked like when the gravitational flow is dominant force or the examples are like for the open channel flows or flow over a river then you have to use the similarity which we have discussed earlier which is for flow flow similarity the last chapter is hydraulic turbines in that first one is for the Pelton turbine hg is equal to h plus hf and h is equal to v square by 2g plus hfn and v is equal to cv under root 2gh here cv is equal to 0.95 to 0.99 for nozzle velocity coefficient then force exerted by jet on the bucket f is equal to rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus k into cos theta then v is equal to k into v minus u where k is equal to bucket friction coefficient then torque developed by the runner t is equal to f into r and t is equal to rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus k into cos theta into r then rp is equal to f into u where p is equal to f into d and u is equal to r into omega then after hydraulic power it is power available at the inlet of the nozzle and at the exit of the main stroke proportional to the net head of the turbine 
here hp is equal to rho g uh then k is equal to 1 by 2 rho into q into v square then various process in the built-in turbine here you can see that in the graph there it is the bar chart first one is the hp then after k then rp and that after sp so the equation will be like for the efficiency k by hp then after eta w is equal to rp by k then after eta m is equal to sp upon rp and eta h is equal to eta n plus eta w then eta naught is equal to eta n into eta w into eta m which is overall efficiency then after the condition for the maximum will efficiency here eta max is equal to 1 plus k into cos theta by 2 then speed is show ku is equal to u by under root 2 gh which is equal to u by v and v is equal to cv into under root 2 gh then jet ratio m is equal to capital d by d here number of buckets z is equal to 15 plus 0.5 into m then this formula is known as the Thaugans formula here m is equal to d by d as you all know then t by m is equal to f into r by m and uh, t by m is equal to 1 plus k into cos theta into r now there is the Francis turbine you can see the diagram for the Francis turbine and the equation of discharge passing through the runner q is equal to a into v then q is equal to pi into d1 into v1 into vf1 then q is also equal to pi into d2 into v2 into vf2 for the exit first one is for the inlet then after t is equal to rho into q into r1 into v omega 1 minus r2 into v omega 2 here the notations are given the above for the east terms then after for francis turbine v w2 is equal to 0 so t is equal to rho into q into r1 into v w1 and h into p is equal to rho g q h which is used for finding the hydraulic power then various losses and efficiencies in the francis turbine here the first one is the hydraulic efficiency eta h is equal to rp by hp and eta h is equal to v w1 into v1 upon gh then eta m is equal to sp by rp then eta naught is equal to eta h into eta m here speed ratio ku is equal to u by v which is equal to u by under root 2gh and flow ratio kf is equal to vf1 upon under root 2 gh from these equations questions were asked in the exam then after similarity laws and model studies in model analysis effect of viscosity is ignored and to equal that effect of ignoring viscosity must be homogeneous conditions should be there first one is the geometrical similarities then after the second one is corresponding velocity triangles should be similar now for the geometric similarities here you can see that by geometric similarity a is proportional to d square and v is equal to cv and to under root 2gh then u is proportional to root h and nd proportional to root h from these two equations questions were asked then for q is equal to a into v which is equal to pi by 4 into d square h so q proportional to d square into root h then for power p is equal to eta into rho g q h then p is proportional to q into h which is equal to d square into under root h into h so in general p is proportional to d square into h raised to 3 by 2 so from the equations of q p u and nd the relations were asked so many times in the examination and the most important equation is for the specific speed 
and s is equal to n into under root v upon h raised to 5 by 4 so this five formulas you should remember for the examination and there is one example based on that equation then for the Pelton, Francis and Kaplan turbine this table is very important because it includes the various speeds then after various heads and the discharge of the respective turbines so for the Pelton turbine, the type of the turbine is impulse and it uses the K then NS which is equal to specific speed is between 8 to 30 and head is high in this turbine to 50 to 1800 meter then for Francis it is reaction turbine then speed is 40 to 400 and a medium type of head then for Kaplan it is reaction turbine speed is 300 to 600 and low head turbine having less than 50 meter capacity then after talking about the discharge and the direction about the turbines first one is for the Pelton turbine it is low discharge capacity then tangential direction then for Francis medium discharge and radial inward direction and for Kaplan turbine high discharge and axial direction of flow then after for Kaplan turbine here the diagram you can see there the equation of V W is equal to K by R then discharge through the runner Q is equal to AF into VF then VF1 is equal to VF2 which is equal to 4Q by pi into dt square minus ds square then speed ratio K is equal to U into T input upon the root 2gh then kf is equal to vf by root 2gh and vf is equal to 4 into q upon pi into dt square minus ds square then the next topic is the cavitation which is the final topic of fluid mechanics here in the draft tube the pressure will be lower and without only the loss in effective air using draft tube P less than PV can be achieved and for reducing the cavitation of draft tube should not be too much larger and P mean greater than PV then sigma greater than sigma C for avoiding the cavitation so draft tube basically used for decreasing the pressure then after Thomas cavitation parameter is there here equation is like sigma is equal to h a minus h s minus h v upon h and sigma c is equal to h a minus h s max minus h v upon h here h is equal to p atm by rho g then HS is equal to height of the draft tube here sigma c for the critical cavitation parameter and HV is equal to PV by rho g which is equal to vapor pressure head and H is equal to net head so this is all about the third chart of the fluid mechanics in which we have covered all the syllabus of the fluid mechanics now we'll start the next subject which is most important for the mechanical engineering Subject name is Strength of Materials. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books now the third subject is machine design so basically machine design includes three charts in which all the concepts of the machine design will be covered let's begin with the first chart of machine design 
which is for the theories of failures different types of stresses then principal stresses then more circles then principal shear stresses then pure bending and pure shear then normal shear stress theory then after the shear stress theory then the hydrostatic loading and distortion theory as well so let's begin one by one this example gives you the idea that why we don't use in every examples the principal stresses equations or the theory of failures equations so let's see the example there is an example like the load is acting on the end of the beam then the yield strength is given as 300 ampere then f is equal to 3 then finding the value of d so you can use the equation of sigma b is equal to mi by i which is equal to p into l into d by t upon pi by 64 into d raised to 4 so the value of the d will be 13.8 mm not axial load but the bending load is there and the second one is tau max is very less than less than then sigma max then principal stresses are not calculated because sigma max is equal to sigma b and theories of failures is not used because by maximum normal stress theory or maximum shear stress theory or by distortion energy theory the values of the sigma b will be remain same now coming towards the types of stresses first one is normal stress or second one is shear stress that can be applied on any area then two types of forces can be applied perpendicular to the axis and per parallel to the axis then second one is axial stress it is also known as the normal stress sigma x is equal to p by a so first one is bending stress you can find the value of sigma b by the equation of sigma by y is equal to m by i is equal to e by r so sigma b is equal to m y upon i then sigma x is also equal to 32m by pi d cube and sigma b max is equal to 32m by pi d cube okay. then third one is torsional shear stress you can find the value of tau by the equation of t by j is equal to g into t tau upon l in is equal to tau upon r so tau is equal to r into t by j then the value of tau max is equal to 16t by pi d cube there is one example which was asked in the ESC 2019 then there is a note here if a circular shaft is subjected to a constant bending moment and constant twisting moment then which will remain the constant then the answer is tau max remains same but sigma b will be changed because the equation of tau max is equal to 16 d by pi d cube and equation of sigma b is equal to m y by i where y is the vertical distance from the center line so y will be changed during the bending moment and testing moment so the value of sigma b will be changed then here two more examples are there you can take a screenshot if you want to calculate it then coming towards the principal stresses first one is the principal normal stress sigma 1 or 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau x y square for checking sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y which is equal to sigma theta plus sigma 90 plus theta then sigma max is equal to maximum of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 here remember that for finding the values of sigma max only consider the values of the sigma do not consider the sign convection for that then after the most important topic for the heat examination from the MD subject is more circle so for making the more circles three steps are there first one is on the x-axis draw the normal stress on the y-axis draw the shear stress and second one is obtain and plot the two points as p of sigma x and tau xy and q of sigma y and minus tau xy then in the third step draw the circle by taking line pq as a diameter then theta m is equal to 2 theta in more circles and tau max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 which is also equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 then the normal stress on the plane of maximum shear stress 
सिग्मा इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स टाव एक्स वाई टाव एक्स जेड टाव एक्स वाई सिग्मा वाई एंड टाव वाई जेड टाव एक्स जेड टाव वाई जेड एंड सिग्मा जेड एंड वन मोर नॉट इज देर सिग्मा वन प्लस सिग्मा टू प्लस सिग्मा थ्री इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स प्लस सिग्मा वाई प्लस सिग्मा जेड then principal shear stress is tau 1 2 is equal to plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau xy square then tau 1 is equal to tau 1 2 is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and tau 1 3 is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 and tau 2 3 is equal to sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 here do not consider the sign then after tau max is equal to maximum of tau 1 2 tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 here remember that tau 1 2 is always maximum in the plane shear stress condition pure bending and pure shear in the pure bending the example is that that of the horizontal beam is hinged at one end then vertical load is given to at the other end then sigma max is equal to sigma 1 is equal to sigma x then tau max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 and tau max is equal to sigma x by 2 then theta is equal to 45 here you can see the mode circle for the pure bending process then coming towards the pure shear the pure shear the normal on the plane of maximum shear stress is equal to 0 then theta is equal to 45 and 135 degree for maximum and minimum values of sigma then for the ductile material it must be designed for the shear stress and tau xy is equal to tau max is equal to 16t upon pi d cube. Then there is one table for the different terms like load and material and theta failure and due to which stress the failure will be occurred. So for the uniaxial load and ductile material at theta is equal to 45, the failure will occur due to the tau max. Then after for uniaxial brittle material, theta is equal to 0 then due to sigma max the failure will be occurred then for the torsion in the ductile material theta is equal to 0 then tau max is the cause for the failure then the last one is if torsion is given to the brittle material then theta is equal to 45 and 135 due to the sigma max the failure will be occurred after first one is normal stress theory it is also known as the maximum normal stress theory or Rankine's theory or you can say that the theory for the brittle material so sigma max is equal to SUT by FOS and sigma max is equal to SYT by FOS then after the second one is shear stress theory you can say that maximum shear stress theory or Tresca Coulomb gas theory or the theory for the ductile material the equation will be like tau max is equal to SSY by FOS is equal to SYT by 2 into FOS where tau max is equal to maximum of tau 1 to tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 similarly sigma max is equal to maximum of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 then the then the third one is the then after the third one is distortion energy theory here the diagram will be like ellipse shape and remember that for the MSST theory the shape of the diagram will be like hexagonal and for the first one which was MNST theory the shape of the diagram will be like rectangular the distortion energy theory as shear strain energy theory and also von Mises Uber Hanke theory and the ductile materials theory. So sigma Vm is equal to under root 1 by 2 into sigma x minus sigma y square plus sigma x minus sigma z square plus sigma y minus sigma z square plus 6 into under root tau xy square plus tau xz square plus tau yz square then sigma vm is equal to under root sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 into sigma 2 plus sigma 2 square then sigma vm is equal to syt by fos and ssy is equal to syt by under root 3 which is also equal to sigma vm by root 3 here remember that for sigma 1 greater than 0 
and sigma 2 less than 0 MSST greater than DET greater than MNST for the conservation point of view and for sigma 1 greater than 0 and sigma 2 greater than 0 MSST is equal to MNST then equivalent TM and BM by the MNST and MSST the equations of strain will be like epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by E then epsilon 2 is equal to sigma 2 minus mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 3 upon E and the third one is epsilon 3 is equal to sigma 3 minus mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by E here epsilon v is equal to del v by d here epsilon v is equal to del v by v and epsilon v is also equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 which is also equal to epsilon v is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 into 1 minus 2 into mu upon e so sigma 1 or sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau into xy square here three main important equations are there first one is m is equal to 1 by 2 into m plus under root m square plus t square then m is also equal to 1 by 2 into m plus t where t is equal to under root m square plus t square and m e always greater than m t always greater than t and t always greater than m e then t into fos is equal to constant remember this thing also then under root m square plus t square into fos is equal to constant okay. pi d cube into m square plus c square which is equal to s by t by 2 into fos then sigma max is equal to 16 by pi d cube into m plus m square plus 2 square which is equal to sigma 1 then strain energy is equal to area under the sigma and epsilon curve and area up to elastic limit will be resilience and area up to plastic limit will be toughness now the design of the shaft as rotating shaft is wearing bending stress like first one is dynamic then fluctuating then third one is fatigue theory and then the static theories in the static theory first one is by MNST then after by MSST and the last one is DET so if in the examination nothing is given then use these priorities number for the design of the shaft and here remember that there are some notes here MNST is used for the brittle material then MSST is used for the ductile material as well as in this theory simple calculation is there and more safety as well as most conservative theory this example or you can say that this question was asked more than two to three times in the examination which is most conservative theory then the answer will be like MSST and if the question will be asked like if which is most accurate theory then the answer will be like DET which means DET is used for ductile material and also it is having difficult calculation and most accurate theory as well as the most economical and more dimension in this theory then for the hydrostatic loading sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and tau x y is equal to tau y z is equal to tau x z is equal to 0 for this type of loading MSST DET cannot be used and the more circles will be like the point for the hydrostatic loading then after the fourth theory from the five types of theories of failure is the principal strain energy theory the shape of the safe area will be like the shape of parallelogram and the equation will be like sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to SYT by FOS which is also known as the St. Venance equation then the last one is the principal or total strain energy theory the shape will be like ellipse and this theory is also known as the Bellramy and Hayes theory the equation will be like sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square minus 2 into mu into sigma 1 2 plus sigma 2 3 plus sigma 1 3 is equal to SYT by FOS square. There are some examples for the theory. You can take a screenshot. 
of the examples and if you want to calculate then you can note down so this is all about the first chart of the machine design in which we have covered the, all the theories of failures and all the important equations of the basics so we hope that you have liked this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and if it is useful to your other friends then please share this video to them also and for the upcoming video of chart 2 of machine design please press the bell icon in which we will cover the dynamic loading as well as the design for welded joint and rivet design also if you like and share this video thank you so much hello and welcome to the bs academy channel now in the third subject of the machine design which include there are three charts and from which the second chart is here for the machine design subject so in the second chart we will cover the design for the dynamic loading as well as the design for welded joints and the rivet design at the end of the video all the important equations will be covered in this chart let's begin with the first and most important topic for the gate examination from the machine design subject which is designed for the dynamic loading from this topic in every year mostly there may be one question for the reversible stress or repeated stress so as you can see here for the reversible stress sigma m is equal to sigma max plus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max minus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max is equal to sigma min and sigma m is equal to sigma min is equal to 0 then for the repeated stress sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to 0 then sigma min is equal to 50 then sigma a is also equal to 50 then sigma a is equal to sigma m is equal to sigma max by 2 because sigma min is equal to 0 for the repeated stress then for option you can cross check the three conditions here sigma m plus sigma a is equal to sigma max then second one is sigma m minus sigma a is equal to sigma min and third one is sigma f1 plus sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y then remember one thing that design of connecting road is based on the endurance strength because it experiences the dynamic load and the connecting road is made by the forging process and third one is static loading for that the diagram is shown here like horizontal line and if sigma is equal to 100 mpa then sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to 100 and sigma m is equal to 100 and sigma a is equal to 0 then for dynamic load the diagram is shown here then stress ratio r is equal to sigma min by sigma max and amplitude ratio is equal to sigma a by sigma m is equal to sigma max minus sigma min divided by sigma max plus sigma min from these four to five equations there are so many examples were asked in the gate examination these are some examples then after stress concentration for the flat plate circular hole the equation will be like sigma 0 is equal to p upon b minus t into t which is equal to p upon a min and for the flat plate elliptical hole kt is equal to 1 plus 2 into a by b sigma 0 is equal to p upon a min which is equal to p upon b minus a into t then theoretical stress concentration factor kt and for circular hole flat plate kt is equal to which is maximum then kt is equal to sigma max upon sigma naught then here remember that one note is here the stress concentration factor kt is not calculated for the static load and the ductile material then failure in dynamic loading so note is there in brittle and ductile material both the failure always occur perpendicular to the direction of applied load and strain is not cause of the failure in the dynamic loading 
Then one more note is that applying the compressing residual stress, life will increase, number of cycle to be performed will increase and decrease the expansion rate of crack. For decreasing the expansion rate of crack, there are two processes like a short blasting method and auto retouch method. Then the other one is the rotating beam method. RR Moray method is also known as the rotating beam method. For that the SN curve is there. For the XN curve, the curve is drawn for the log of sigma a versus the log of n. Here sigma a is the amplitude stress and n is equal to number of cycles then for fatigue life n is equal to 1000 the value of log n is equal to 3 so fatigue strength s is equal to 0.9 into SUT for n is equal to 1000 or you can say that log n is equal to 3 and in the SN curve the SN curve becomes asymptotic after the value of number of cycles is greater than that of 10 raised to 6 cycles. One more note is there when the applied stress sigma ut is less than or equal to se, then the life of the component is infinite and se less than or equal to se dash and se dash is equal to 0.5 into sut if sut is less than the 1400 megapascal, then se dash is equal to 700 megapascal if SUT will greater than the 1400 MPa. Then after Soderbergh, Goodman and Gerber's equation is there. First one is the Soderbergh line. For that the equation will be like Sigma A upon SE plus Sigma M upon SYT is equal to 1 upon FIS. Then for the Goodman line Sigma A by SE plus Sigma M by SUT which is equal to 1 upon FOS. And most conservative theory is Soderbergh line theory. and SYT or SUT always greater than SE. So you can check the diagram for the three lines here. The lower is Soderbergh line, then after the Goodman line, and then after the Gerber's line, which is also known as Gerber's parabola. Then for reversible load, note that Soderbergh line is equal to Goodman line is equal to Gerber's parabola line. Then for the modified Goodman diagram, the sigma a is equal to p upon b minus d into t, and for reversible load, sigma m is equal to zero. For the Goodman line, SUT will be considered sigma a upon SE plus sigma m upon SUT is equal to one upon f for s. Then TM upon SSY plus TA upon SSE is equal to one upon f for s. Here FOS is greater than or equal to 1 for infinite life. FOS will less than 1 for the finite life. Then for the combined loading, equation will be like sigma vm is equal to 1 root sigma x square plus 3 into tau xy square. Then sigma m is equal to 1 root sigma xm square plus 3 into tau xy m square. And sigma a is equal to under root sigma x a square plus 3 into tau xy a square. Then use Soderbergh or Goodman equations. Then for cyclic loading, n is equal to life in cyclic load. Then n1 is equal to life when only sigma 1 is applied, and small n1 is equal to total number of cycles when sigma 1 is applied. Then alpha 1 is equal to fraction or percentage of life when sigma 1 is applied and damaged by sigma 1 in one cycle is equal to 1 upon capital N1 then total damage by sigma 1 is equal to 1 upon alpha is equal to N1 upon N1 where alpha is equal to N1 by N1 then equation is there capital N1 upon N1 is equal to capital N2 by N2 plus capital N3 by N3 is equal to 1 Remember that this equation you can use for the cumulative damage. After that, the Maynard's equation is there. The equation will be like alpha 1 upon n1 plus alpha 2 upon n2 plus alpha 3 upon n3 is equal to 1 upon n. Now the value of SE 
in the equation of sigma a upon a c plus sigma m upon s y t or s u t is equal to 1 upon f o s you have to take the value of s is equal to k into k b into k c into k d into s e dash into 0.5 s u t upon 1 plus q into k t minus 1 here k is equal to surface finish vector k b is equal to size vector k c is equal to reliability vector kd is equal to modified stress concentration factor then kf is equal to fatigue or dynamic stress concentration factor here by increasing the k the ac will decrease by increasing the kb ac will also decrease and by decreasing the kc ac will increase then remember that notch sensitivity Q is equal to Kf minus 1 upon Kt minus 1. For cold working process, Se will increase and surface finish will increase because residual compressive stress is are generated in the cold working process. Then in the rolling process, the Se will lesser than that of the grinding process. Then design for welded joints. In that first one is butt joint weld. The equation of tau max is equal to tau 1 2 is equal to under root sigma x by 2 square plus tau xy square. Then tau max is also equal to ssy by fos is equal to syt by 2 into fos. Then t is equal to h by under root 2. Then after the second one is the lap joint fillet weld. In that two types are there. First one is parallel weld and the second one is transverse weld. The angle in parallel weld will be 45 degree and for transverse weld the theta is equal to 67.5 degree then for the parallel weld process tau max is equal to under root 2 into p upon h into l then tau max is equal to p by t into l and tau max is equal to 1.414 into p upon h into l then for transverse weld tau max is equal to 1.21 into p1 upon h into l and total weld length is l is equal to 2 into l here the parallel weld is more weaker than the transverse weld so the design is always based on the parallel weld then for bolt loading first one is bolt of uniform strength for that the strain energy u is equal to sigma square by 2e into al then dh is equal to under ds square minus dc square then c is equal to kb upon kb plus km and pb is equal to c into p then pcm is equal to 1 minus c into p and rb is equal to pi plus c into p then rcm is equal to 1 minus c into p minus pi here pi greater than or equal to 1 minus c into p and p is equal to p into by 4 into d square of 4 upon n then stresses in the bolt h is equal to 2bn where n is equal to number of threads in contact b is equal to thickness of thread and h is equal to height of nut then sigma t is equal to pi upon pi by 4 into dc square then tau is equal to rl upon n into pi by 4 d square minus dc square into beta and sigma bearing is equal to rb upon n to pi by 4 into d square minus dc square then p is equal to sut upon fos into a and load per unit volt is equal to p is equal to syt by fos into a then the last topic is rivet design in that the types of riveted joint first one is single riveted left joint then second one is double riveted left joint Then fourth one is single riveted single strap butt joint and fifth one is single riveted double sear double strap butt joint. There are mainly four types of questions may be asked from this topic of rivet design. First one is in the example n is unknown. In the second one is n is known. In the third type of question p is unknown. Then fourth type of question eccentric loading is given so for the the n is unknown then use the steps like for finding the value of tau use the equation of 
p upon pi by 4 into d square n then ps is equal to t into pi by 4 into d square n then tearing failure of plate pt is equal to sigma t into p minus d into t then crushing failure of rivet pc is equal to sigma c into n into d into t then for solid plate eta tearing is equal to 1 minus d by p which is also equal to pt by p and eta searing is equal to ps by p and eta crushing is equal to pc by p then one more note is there strength of the rivet joint will be taken from the minimum of ps pc and pt then strength of the rivet will be taken from minimum of ps and pc and eta joint is equal to minimum of eta t eta s and eta c then the second type of questions in which n is known then the value of a and e are same so pt at a and pt at e is equal to sigma t into b minus d into t then pt at bb and dd are same so value of pt is equal to sigma t into b minus 2d into t plus tau into pi by 4 d square then value of pt at cc section is sigma t into b minus 3d into t plus 3 into tau into pi by 4 d square here 1 and 3 are the remaining values of the rivet then in the third type of questions in which p is unknown then equate pc and ps that means by ps is equal to pc tau into pi by 4 d square n is equal to sigma c into n into d into t and use the p for the searing and crushing for finding the diameter and diameter is more in the searing so in the design it always based on the searing process then after the fourth one is eccentric loading in which you have to find the two types of forces first one is the primary force which is always opposite to the external loads direction and for the secondary force it is perpendicular to the radial line then the equation for the primary force will be like p dash is equal to p upon n where n is equal to number of rivets for finding the value of the secondary force pp dash is equal to p into e into rp upon sigma r naught square so these are main two equations for the eccentric loading then you have to calculate some examples at your own for the practice of eccentric loading so this is all about the second chart of machine design in which we have considered the design for the dynamic loading as well as the failure in dynamic loading then the Soderbergh equation, Goodman equation and the Grubler's equation then after the design of welded joints and rivet design at the end so we hope that you have liked this video so please if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming video of the machine design chart 3 in which we cover design of brakes then design of clutch then design of bearings if you think that this video is helpful to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination then please share this video to them also thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. In the third subject of the Gate Mechanical 2021, which is machine design, this is the third chart of the machine design, which is final chart of this subject. In this chart, we will include the various topics like first one is design of brakes, then after design of clutch, then after design of bearings. Now let's begin with the first one, which is the design of brakes. As you can see here, first one is block or shoe brake and for that the equation of p will be like p is equal to n into a plus mu c upon b then for counterclockwise rotation p is equal to n into a minus mu c upon b then after self energizing brake in that load is applied to the downward direction when the movements of the external braking load p and the frictional force 
in the same direction about the hinge then the self energizing brake will be produced then after self locking brake p less than or equal to 0 and a less than or equal to mu c in that condition self locking brake will be generated in the self locking brake no external force is required for braking and self locking for brake is not desirable and for clutch also not desirable but in the screw jack the self locking is desirable then after increase in the intensity of self energizing brake chance of self locking brake increasing more then after for bend brake there are two main equations are there t1 by t2 is equal to e raised to mu theta and braking torque is equal to t1 minus t2 into r as well as line pressure is equal to t tight upon b into r here note that in the self locking in differential bend brake b less than or equal to e raised to mu theta into a for clockwise rotation and a greater than or equal to e raised to mu theta into b for the counter clockwise direction and for simple bend brake p is equal to a by b into t2 and p is equal to a by b into t1 for counter clockwise rotation then after differential band brake for that p is equal to t2 by c into b minus t1 by t2 into a and p is equal to t2 by c into b minus e raised to minus theta into a examples are it is used in the lifts elevators and conveyors etc examples for the band brake because by the examples you can understand these questions very easily then there is a note there for tight side and slack side for the pulley which is driver the side of belt which is pulled is tight side and for the belt which is driven then side of the belt which will try to create a motion is the tight side this is very simple but the important point is there Now coming towards the design of clutch, there are four types of clutch. Is there first one is the jaw clutch, then the plate clutch, then the cone clutch, and fourth one is centrifugal clutch. Here remember that the clutch permits engine to start without the external load, and clutch connects or disconnects the input and output shafts at the will of the operator. Then generally clutches are of two types. First one is of positive type clutch which is jaw clutch or claw clutch and second one is friction clutch which is plate clutch now the first one is positive clutch or you can say that jaw clutch or the claw clutch and it is used for the high speed disengagement and jaw clutch is mostly important for the engagement and disengagement in the situation like low speed and the high speed then no heat generation because of no friction and no slipping your engagement force is normal to the toe of the clutch then after the second one is the friction clutch or you can say that the plate clutch for this clutch pa is equal to pn so p engagement is equal to ps but pa is not equal to p engagement and here in this type of clutch engagement force will be axial to the clutch then pn is equal to p into 2 pi r into dr and t is equal to n into mu into r into pn then r1 is equal to r2 by root 3 for the maximum torque and there are two main terms are there first one is for new clutch uniform pressure and second one is for old clutch uniform wear so the equation for the both the terms will be very useful in the examination now for the first one now for the new clutch uniform pressure condition pn is equal to p into pi into r2 square minus r1 square and t is equal to n into 2 pi into mu into r2 cube minus r1 cube into p by 3 then the t is equal to 2 by 3 into n into mu p pi into r2 cube minus r1 cube so you can rearrange that 
then after t is equal to n into 2 by 3 into mu into pn into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square then the third equation is rf is for the friction radius so rf is equal to 2 by 3 into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square now for the old clutch pn is equal to 2 pi into p into r into r2 minus r1 and t is equal to n into pi into mu into p into r into r2 square minus r1 square then t is equal to n into mu into pn into r1 plus r2 by 2 and rf for the uniform wear type rf is equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 then t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu into pn into n into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square now there is a note there the wear theory is the more safe theory as well as the more conservative theory so if no theory is mentioned in the examination use the wear theory and the other note is there rf is proportional to t then rf for uniform pressure is greater than rf for uniform wear as well as torque for uniform pressure is greater than torque for uniform wear theory then after cone clutch for that sin alpha is equal to r2 minus r1 upon beta and 2 alpha is equal to cone angle then alpha is equal to semi cone angle or pitch angle then beta is equal to width of the friction pair and beta is equal to r2 minus r1 upon sin alpha then p engineering is equal to pn sin alpha plus mu into pn cos alpha pn into sin alpha is equal to pa and sin alpha is equal to pa upon pn then sin alpha is equal to r2 minus r1 upon beta then for the uniform pressure theory in the cone clutch pn is equal to 2 pi rd into r into p upon sin alpha then t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu into pn into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square then for uniform wear pn is equal to 2 pi p into r into r2 minus r1 then t is equal to mu into pa upon 2 into sin alpha into r2 plus r1 then t is equal to mu pn upon 2 into r2 plus r1 then t is equal to mu pn by 2 into r2 plus r1 and t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu p into pi upon sin alpha into r2 cube minus r1 cube then after t cone by t single plate is equal to 1 by sin alpha then t is proportional to 1 upon sin alpha and alpha is decreased then sin alpha is decreased then t will increase so by decreasing the torque carrying capacity t increase but we can reduce the alpha up to phi only because alpha should always greater than or equal to phi for self disengagement clutch then centrifugal clutch it is used for the low starting torque and the k is more speed is more and force is more then omega 2 is greater than omega 1 ps is equal to fc is equal to mrg into omega 1 square then fc is equal to mrg omega 2 square then t is equal to beta into m into mu into r g into omega 2 square minus omega 1 square into rd and beta is equal to m into rg into omega 2 square minus omega 1 square upon p into rd into theta here the engagement will be in the radial direction note that from the single plate clutch the mainly questions were asked in the examination the other two types were just for your information but do not skip this portion also now coming towards the design of bearings which is the last point of the subject now in that first one is hsb and the second one is htb here hsb stands for hydrostatic bearing and htb as you all know hydrodynamic bearing hydrostatic bearing in this high pressurized oil is imported inside the bearing by the pump and externally pressurized bearing then no starting or ending friction in the HSB then load carrying capacity is independent of the shaft speed and the advantages like good radial stiffness then disadvantages is more space required for this bearing and applications in the turbo generators now for the HTB or you can say that the hydrodynamic bearing P is generated because of the rotation of shaft inside the bearing and 
converging shape is there then in the starting the stb is same as like the journal bearing then metal to metal contact in the starting and ending so friction is more and high surface hardness required then high load and high speed is there then stb is used and applications are connecting road and crankshaft then disadvantages is not applicable for the frequent starting is required then journal bearing for that rf is near equal to r into mu then rf is equal to r into sin alpha then bearing characteristics go so you can see that bcn is equal to mu into ns upon p this is very important equation then for static load bcn is greater than 3 into k and for dynamic load bcn is greater than 15 into k then k is equal to bearing modulus and epsilon is equal to eccentricity ratio epsilon is equal to e by e max is equal to e by c and epsilon is equal to 1 minus h not by c then c is equal to r minus r is equal to e plus h not where h not is equal to minimum oil film thickness and capital r is equal to radius for the bearing and r is equal to radius for the shaft then the most important equation from the machine design portion in the bearing is Sommerfeld number s is equal to r by c square into mu n s upon p here s is equal to clearance ratio square into bcn also then there is one more important topic is there dynamic load carrying capacity or you can say that the dynamic load rating the equation for this term is l tn is equal to c by p raised to q into 10 raised to 6 cycles where q is equal to 3 for ball bearing and q is equal to 10 by 3 for the roller bearing then pe is equal to cs into x into v into fr plus y into fa then l average is equal to l50 is equal to 5 into l10 then at l10 r is equal to 90 percent reliability is equal to 90 percent then f is equal to 10 percent and l10 is also equal to 60 into lh into n then rolling contact bearing is there in that dynamic load or fatigue load is applied and applications are in automobile or axle or gearbox then in the rolling process rotate plus movement is there and wall bearing is weaker than that of the cylindrical bearing or roller bearing now petrov's equation p is equal to w by 2 into r into l where p is equal to bearing pressure and t is equal to f into w into r then p is equal to w by l into d and f is equal to 2 pi square into r by c into mu n s by p which is known as the petrov's equation then loss of power is equal to f into w into r into 2 pi n by 60 then q is equal to h a delta t from these two equations there are so many times questions were asked then the limitation for the hydrostatic bearing is center of the shaft is at the center of the bearing then c is equal to r minus r so no leakage is considered and applicable only for the less loads my case equation is there f is equal to k plus 0.326 into r by c into mu n by p and k is equal to leakage factor the value of k is equal to 0 0.002 t is equal to f into p n r then t is equal to f into w into r into omega then t is equal to f into p into u into r square then for axial thrust or thrust bearing p is equal to f by a so p is equal to f by pi by 4 into d2 square minus d1 square then for foot step bearing t is equal to f into w into r which is equal to f into pn into r so t is equal to 2 by 3 into pi into pn into f into r cube and power p is equal to t into w which is equal to 2 by 3 into pi into p into f r cube into w where w is equal to 2 by n by 60 you can say that the omega also
Hello and welcome to Tabias Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference book so in the first chart of the production technology will include that the basics of the production technology as well as all the types of the casting processes now the first and the most important that is the basic definition of the casting it is the oldest method of the manufacturing in which the matter is poured into the preformed cavity and after the solidification the casting part is taken out. The place at which the casting is done is known as the foundry. And there are main two types of casting. First one is the sand casting and the second one is pestle casting. Here you can see that the first one is the sand casting. In sand casting, main important one point is there that is the aspiration effect or you can say that the breathing effect. It is the effect that negative pressure created at the cross section areas of the sprue in the starting due to which the molten metal results into the gaseous defect which is known as the breathing effect or you can say that the aspiration effect. Then after the steps involved in the sand casting. So here you can see that there is the diagram for that steps. First one is the mold making process, then the mold, then casting, then inspection, then machining and then the final product. Then there is the diagram for the casting all the terms. There are two types of risers. First one is the side riser and the other one is the top risers. In the side riser cavity at one side of casting and in the top riser cavity at top of the casting. Then runner. In the runner the channel which feeds the molten metal from a sprue bottom to the mold cavity. Then shrinkage is. First stage is. There are three stages of shrinkage. First stage is liquid shrinkage. Second one is solidification and third one is solid shrinkage here first stage of shrinkage is greater than the third stage is greater than the second stage then time required for the riser is greater than time required for the casting and f net is equal to rho 1 minus rho 2 into mu into g where f is equal to rho g which is bias force then for pure metal tm is equal to tf and for alloy Tm greater than Tf. Here Tm for the melting temperature and Tf for the freezing temperature. So these are the very basic definitions but it's very important in the examination because it will ask more than two to three times in the gate examination. Now then after Corino's equation is there. So the equation for that is Ts is equal to k into E by A square where k is equal to solidification constant then V is equal to volume of the molten metal in the respective gravity and A is and A is equal to area of the molten metal then M is equal to V by A which is equal to modulus. So you can write that T is equal to k into M square then here one note is there tr greater than tc and mr greater than mc for casting only and and one more is there and vr is equal to 3 into vsr and q is equal to av which is equal to a into under root 2gh so vr is equal to 3 into vsr was asked three times in the examination then after for solidification time there are main two important terms are here that time required for the cylinder which means tcy is equal to 1.17 into time required for the square so tcy is equal to 1.17 into t square and tc means the time required for the circular pipe 
is equal to 1.17 into time required for the square pipe. These two equations are valid for side riser and top riser both. So you can say that in the cell so you can say that in the cylindrical riser the time required is more than that of square riser. So and cylindrical riser is more used. Then coming towards the methods of riser design. The first one is the Keynes method. In that method, freezing ratio x is equal to mr by mc which is equal to e by a of r upon v by a of c which is equal to a by v of c upon a by v of r. Here x always greater than 1 because as you all know mr greater than mc. Then volumetric ratio y is equal to vr upon vc and x is equal to a upon y minus b plus c. Then ts is equal to 1 upon beta square alpha into e by a square where beta is equal to geometric constant and alpha is equal to thermal diffusivity. Then there is the graph of the points which are plotted on the y by x graph. So you can see that the points under the graph is represents the defective casting and the points above the graph represents the sound casting. Similarly for the Newell's method the equation will be like x is equal to l plus w by t where l is equal to length and w is equal to width and t is equal to thickness then y is equal to vr by vc and the graph for that is there also. Then the third and the final method is the modulus method. mr is equal to greater than mr greater than or equal to 1.20 into mc for sound casting modulus for riser is greater than that of modulus of casting which is 20% more then for hollow cylinder casting x is equal to pi into d0 plus d1 plus h upon d0 minus d1 then t is equal to d0 minus d1 upon 2 and l is equal to pi into d0 plus pi into di by 2 and w is equal to h so you can put that value in the equation of x is equal to l plus w by t here note is there distance between the riser and the end of the castings is less than or equal to 4.5 into t and distance between the two riser is less than or equal to 4t. So these are the main two important notes which you have to remember. Now coming towards the pattern. So it is the replica of the part being casted with same modification in size. Then types of patterns are there. First one is a single piece pattern which is used for the very simple casting. Then second one is split pattern or two piece pattern which is used for the complex part and withdrawal of patterns. Then third one is gated pattern which is used for the small components in the mass production. Then fourth one is cop and deck pattern which is used for big size casting. Then fifth one is match plate pattern which is used for the piston rings, small size casting and the precision casting. In mass production match plate pattern is used. Then sixth one is loose piece pattern which is used in the parts with the internal webs are produced. Then seventh is sweep pattern which is used for the 2D pattern used to make 3D casting. In sweep pattern, the 2D pattern used to make the 3D casting. The examples are like cone, bells of temples. Then eighth one is then after eighth one is follow board pattern, which is used for the thin section or overhanging section in the casting. Then there is the note that padding is the extra material of the casting then to provide the uniform cooling rate inoculants and the paddings and chills and insulating sleeves are used then sand molar is used to mix and prepare the molding sand and UTM is used for testing green stand here you can see that the first one is the refractoriness it is the ability to withstand the high temperature of the molten metals it should be high for the casting process then green strength is equal to capacity of the containing moisture. Then green strength is the capacity of containing moisture 
and green compressive strength which is in the range of 130 to 160 kilopascal and green shear strength is equal to 10 to 40 kilopascal third one is the dry strength in sand as the moisture evaporated at the same time it should retain the mold cavity and withstand the metallostatic force well, then dry compressive strength which is in the range of 120 to 140 kilopascal and dry shear strength which is in the range of 30 to 80 kilopascal then fourth one is the hold strength which is the strength for hold the shape of the mold cavity after all the moisture is eliminated then fifth one is permeability the gas involving capability of the molding sand then permeability then permeability number is equal to pn which is equal to mu h upon p and t then pn is equal to mu into h upon p a t where p is equal to pressure a is equal to cross sectional area t is equal to time h is equal to height and v is equal to volume then pn is equal to 3007.2 then sixth one is Then sixth one is grain fineness number. So GFN is equal to the average grain size distribution of a given molding, and GFN, and as the GFN is high, the grain size will low. Then seventh one is the flowability. It is the ability to flow over and around the pattern. Then eighth one is the adhesiveness. which is equal to bond between the two different materials for example mold sand and the flask and for example mold sand and the pattern so between the two different materials the bond is there which is known as the adhesiveness then cohesiveness is the homogeneous type bond between the two same materials or two sand grains Then tenth one is the toughness, which is the ability to resist the impact and soak loads of the molding sand. Then eleventh is collapsibility, which is equal to ability to resist the metal contraction. Now moving towards the design of getting system. So here you can see that two designs are there. First one is the design of the top gate, and the second one is the bottom gate. In the both the type. the main equations are very important because from that equation the questions were asked so for the top get vg is equal to v3 is equal to under root 2 gst and tf is equal to filling time which is equal to m into hm upon ag into vg where m represent for the mold and g for the get then for the design of bottom get vg is equal to v3 is equal to under root 2g into ht minus h Then Tf is equal to 2 into Hm upon Ag into root 2g into under root Ht minus under root Ht minus Hm. So these are the main equations you have to note down. Now the ratio for the sprue, runner, and ingot is the 1 gem, 4 gem, 4 for the NPGS system, and 2 gem, 2 gem, 1 for the PGS system. Then there are two types of solidification. First one is the skin forming, and the second one is dendritic growth. In the skin forming. it take place either in the pure metal or the alloys having eutectic composition and it move towards to center layer by layer and in dendritic growth it take place when the mushy zone take place during the solidification of the alloy and in non uniform solidification to provide the uniform solidification chills are used then types of sand the composition of the sand mold generally in the composition of sand mold silica sand is 70 to 85% clay is 10 to 20% water is 3 to 6% and additives are 1 to 6% and additives are 1 to 6% then for the green sand 2 to 6% of the moisture for dry sand evaporated or moisture sand and the facing sand is near mold cavity then facing sand is used near mold cavity and more clay with silica then there are additives used in molding sand so first one is the wood floor which is used to improve the green strength and the collapsibility 
which is used to resist the metal contraction then second one is the starch and the dextrin which is used to organic blinders to improve the skin hardness then resistance to deformation then third one is the iron oxide and the aluminum oxide fe2o3 and al2o3 which is used to improve the hard strength of the casting of the grain sand mold then fourth one is the coal dust sea coal or silica floor which is used to improve the surface finish and the resistance to metal penetration so these are the points which we are asked more than 3 to 4 times in the examination in the form of the table that means you have to choose the respective additives then types of molding technique there are four techniques are there first one is the bench molding second one is the pit molding third one is the four third one is the floor molding and fourth one is the machine molding so here you can see that there are main two types of the casting first one is the expandable molds and the second one is permanent casting so in the expandable molds you can say that the temporary molds are there so there are five types of molding first one is the sand casting second one is shell molding third one is investment casting fourth one is full mold and fifth one is co2 molding means carbon dioxide molding and in the permanent casting methods first one is the centrifugal casting and the second one is the die casting so in the die casting also there are gravity casting and pressure casting two types are there and in the pressure casting hot pressure casting and cold pressure casting are there in the low melting point temperature which is like pbsn zinc and alloy and the cold pressure casting is used for the and the cold pressure casting is used for the high melting point temperature which is like aluminum or copper alloy then second one is shell molding in shell molding the diagram is you can see here in this casting the final product having good dimensional accuracy and the very fine grain size of the sand the limitations are weak shell and the small size mold and the applications are cylinder and cylinder heads and piston rings and automobile transformation parts then third one is the slurs casting in the slurs casting the permanent die casting are there and detailed surface finish can be made applications are ornamental objects and the finish solo statues then limitation is non uniform thickness fourth one is die casting which includes permanent die made of the grey cast iron and having low melting point and it is suitable for the low melting point temperature and the alloys like aluminum and the copper alloys then carburetors are made by the pressurized casting and pistons are made by gravity casting the advantages are rapid production rate and the complex casting can be done and one mold can be used more than one time the examples of the die castings are like uh, pistons carburetors and toys and kitchen part then after fifth one is centrifugal casting as you can see here in the diagram there is one cylindrical mold is there in which the pouring metal will be poured so advantages of the cylindrical casting is or you can say that the centrifugal casting is the free from the gaseous effect and the hollow castings can be made and no need of the runner casting yield is almost 100% and casting yield is In talking about the casting yield the for the true centrifugal casting is greater than for the semi and greater than for the centrifugal casting now the sixth and the most important casting is there which is the invest which is the investment casting so here in the diagram you can see one pattern or cluster first one is the pattern second one is the investing third one is divexing fourth one is preheating five one fifth one is pouring and sixth one is divesting there are application of these castings are in the blades and the vanes of the gas turbines and the surgical instruments can be made from this casting as well as aerospace and the rocket components can be also made by this casting 
then limitations are like this process is very costly and process cycle is long and level cost is high then advantages are first one is very tight dimensional tolerances can be achieved in this casting then excellent surface finish then high melting point temperature that then almost all critical shapes can be casted by this method then there are one final topic is their casting defects one more point is their angular clearance is generally taken as 0.25 to 0.75 degree per side for the components then the final topic is casting defects so there are mainly four defects are there first one is the gas defect which includes the blow holes and open blow due to the moisture then pin hole porosity due to the h2 gas or hydrogen gas then second one is the molding material defect which is which includes the cuts and washes metal penetration fusion and run out then third one is pouring metal defect which includes misruns cold shorts slag inclusions etc and the fourth and the fourth one is metallurgical defect which includes hot tear hot spot hot tear due to cracks occur due to the variation in the solidification rate here hot tear you can say that the crack occurs due to the variation in the solidification rate this is the first chart of the production technology which includes the basics then the types of the casting then types of pattern and the methods of the sprue design and the casting defects so if you like this video please do like and share this video to all the other friends who is preparing for the gate examination do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel for more upcoming videos of the production technology in second chart we'll cover the sheet metal which includes all the important formulas from which surely in the gate examination 3 to 4 marks hello and welcome to the bs academy so recently iit bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches so according to the new syllabus uh, we have made these charts in our base possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books the second subject is production technology in this subject the second chart is for the sheet metals and sheet metals includes the different sheet metal operations as well as the different calculation of the drawing load and the defects in the drawing as you can see here in the diagram that different operations like trimming, slotting, nibbling, parting, notching, lensing and holes. So start one by one. The main two operations which are most important for the examination is the punching and the blanking operations as well as the searing. So in the punching, here the seared portion is scrapped and in the blanking the sear part is useful these are main two different but the important thing is there so for the punching process here is here one note is there that as will increase the i the f will reduce means the force required is reduced for the punching operations then you can remember like the pcd and the bcb process means for the clearance the size of punch is equal to size of hole for the punching operations. PCD denotes that the, in the punching operations clearance will be given to the die and in the blanking operation clearance will be given to the punch. So for the punching process here size of die is equal to size of hole plus 2 into clearance and size of punch is equal to size of hole. Then radial clearance is equal to 0.0032 into t into under root tau 
and diametral clearance is equal to 0 0.0064 into t into under root tau then for the blanking process size of die is equal to size of blank and size of punch is equal to size of blank minus 2 into clearance then after the third process is the searing process then the searing k is equal to penetration upon the thickness means kt by t which is equal to stripping constant then maximum force required for the searing f max is equal to pi into d into t into tau s then f max is equal to 2 into l into b into t into tau s and wd is equal to f max into kt so you can write that f max into kt is equal to f into kt plus i then stripping force Fst is equal to y into d into t into k where k is equal to kt by t. Then angular clearance is equal to 0.25 to 0.75 degree per side. Here notice that the 10 mm die hole is punched from a sheet of 3 mm thickness then the operation is punching. And if 20 mm disc is punched from the 3 mm thickness sheet metal then the operation is blanking then t less than 5 to 6 mm which is known as the seat and thickness greater than 5 to 6 mm which is known as the plate then punching force fp is equal to pi into d into t into tau s for the shear strength then fp is equal to d into t into s upon under cube root of d by t then shear force fs is equal to pi into d into t square into kt upon i and fp is equal to fp into kt upon kt plus i then fb is equal to fb max into kt upon kt plus i so these are the some equation which is useful in the examination directly you can put this equation and find the values of the respective terms then fourth one is trimming which is mostly used in the drop forging and die casting process then fifth one is saving is used in blanking or punching the edge of the blank hole is not perfectly clean then saving is used which removes the burr left on the product then sixth one is nibbling process which used to removing the material in the small increments during the specific contour cutting in the sheet metal then seventh is notching process it is used to cut the small portion of the edges then eighth one is the piercing or the punching used for the making holes in a seat. Then ninth is blanking, removes the desired portion by the punch from the seat metal. Then there is a term like spring back or the elastic recovery. In that total strain produced during deformation is equal to the elastic strain plus the plastic strain and the elastic strain recovered then this phenomena is known as the elastic recovery. Then spring break is directly proportional to 1 upon E and proportional to sigma y and proportional to the amount of the deformation. Then types of die. First one is the simple die, second one is progressive die. For the progressive die, the equations like F total is equal to Fb plus Fp and here note that fp max is greater than fp max means the force required for the blanking is greater than force required for the punching operations then third one is the compound die in which two or more operations take place at one station and it is more productive process then fourth one is the combination die in that at same time blanking and piercing both are producing in one stroke only then calculation of the drawing load for the cup drawing and deep drawing processes. So WD means work done is equal to E1 is equal to F1 into H1 then WD is equal to E2 is equal to F2 into H2 minus H1 then FD is equal to pi dt sigma y into capital D by D minus K then H less than D by 2 cup drawing and if H greater than D by 2 then deep drawing is there. Here note that H greater than or equal to D by 2 is there. Then for the cup drawing h by d is less than 0.5 and h by d is greater than or equal to 0.5 for the deep drawing processes then fd is equal to pi dt into sigma y if k is not given there after that first one is the cup without flange for that process d square is equal to d square plus 4dh and h is equal to d square minus d square by 4d then 
cup with flange d square is equal to d2 square plus 4d1 into h and h is equal to d square minus d2 square by 4d1 the respective terms d d1 and d2 you can see from the diagram there after that there is one table is there for the blank diameter then if d by r is greater than or equal to 20 then d is equal to under root d2 square plus 4d1 into h then d is equal to under root d square plus 4ds minus r by 2 where d by r is equal to 15 to 20 then d is equal to under root d2 square plus 4d1 h minus r and the third one is d is equal to under root d square plus 4ds minus r where d by r is equal to 10 to 15 then d is equal to under root d2 square plus 4d1 h minus 2 into r then stresses in the wall of the cup so in the excel means the tensile in the wall of the cup and biaxial means the tensile plus compressive stress into the flange of the cup then there are two equations for the first row and the second row for the first row sigma 1 is equal to f1 upon pi by 4 into d1 square minus d1 minus 2t square then for the second row sigma 2 is equal to f1 upon pi by 4 into d2 square minus d2 minus 2t square then reduction ratio r is equal to d minus d by d into 100 then for the first row, the draw ratio is equal to dr which is equal to d by dn where n is equal to 1 to 3. Then there are some thumb rule for the reduction when reduction percentage is not given. So for the first row, the reduction will be 50% then second row reduction will 30% for the third row reduction will be 25% for the fourth row reduction will be 16% and for the fifth row reduction will be 13%. Then linting draw ratio LDR is equal to capital D by D mean where capital D for the blank and D mean for the cup. Then there are drawing defects are there. First one is the wrinkling. In the wrinkling process or wrinkling defects, the wrinkles may appear either on the flange or on the wall of the cup or sometimes on the both the flange and wall the wrinkles may be appear it can be avoided by the draw beads or by increasing the pressure of the blank holding then the second one is the hearing in this defect the anistropy ears or loops are generated at the length of the curvature then the number of ears is equal to 2 raised to n where n is equal to 1 to 3 then the third one is the orange wheel in which the large size grains of the sheet metals then the texture of the draw cup appears like the orange peel then after the fourth one is the fracture or tearing in that due to the much pressure or improper design this type of defects will be appear and it appears at the neck or the bottom of the cup and the last one is mixed type defect in that the misalignment of the line uneven flange appears in the drawn cup then there are two processes are like spinning and ironing so the spinning is the cold drawing process for that process tc is equal to tb into sin alpha where tc is equal to cone thickness tb is equal to blank thickness and alpha is equal to semi mandrel angle then ironing is the process of thinning the walls of the drawn cylinder by passing it between the punch and die where T2 less than T1. For example brass cartridge cases, thinned wall beverage cans. Then there is bending load calculation for the equation that Fb is equal to C into B into T square into sigma U by W where B is equal to width of the stock, sigma U is equal to ultimate tensile strength. W is equal to width of the die opening, C is equal to die opening factor and T is equal to stroke thickness. One more equation is there like LB is equal to alpha into R plus KT where length of the neutral axis in the bend zone that R is equal to bend radius. So LB is equal to length of the neutral axis in the bend zone and R is equal to bend radius. Then in the edge blending the diagram is there for v blending the diagram is there and u bending the diagram is there then there is the note for the clearance die opening factor for the e type v type and the u type blending processes so for the w less than 16t for the e type 0.67 then for v type 1.33 and for u type 2.67 and 
for the W greater than 16T, for E type 0.60, for V type 1.20 and for U type 2.40. Then under similar bending parameters, F E gem, F V gem, F U is equal to 1 gem, 2 gem, 4. So this is the ratio in the terms of E, V and U. Then there are two examples for the punching and blanking operations in which you can use the directly the equation which we have discussed earlier in the starting. Then after one note is there for the compounding die F total is equal to F max from the FV or FB where FB is equal to pi into D into tau S and FB is equal to pi into D into tau S. Then there is one example for the drawing operations requirement. If given that the T is equal to 1.5 mm, H is equal to 7.5 mm and we have to produce the D is equal to 5 cm cup, then we have to use the equation of the true ratio which is equal to dm before divided by the dm after. So for the first D1 days, 13.32 by 1.8 is equal to 7.34 which is greater than 5 cm. So we have to repeat that once again, then D2 days is equal to 7.34 divided by 1.8 which is equal to 4.08 which is less than 5 cm so at least we require two drawing operations here h1 is equal to d square minus d1 square by 4d so you can find the value of h1 from that and find the values of f1 and e respectively then the third example is for using the equation d is equal to under root dn square plus 4 dh1. This is used for d1, d2, d3, d4 and d5. When the value of diameter is less than the required diameter, the n is equal to your required answer. Which means that much drawing operations you require. Here in the example you can see that there are 5 times we have used that equation and after that the value of n is equal to 6 means minimum 6 drawing operations we required for the given example. So this is all about the second chart of the sheet metal in which there are main 5 to 6 important formulas and some drawing defects and the spinning and the ironing process as well as the bending load is covered. So we'll hope that from this chart you will gain some important formulas. So if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming chart which is very most important for the gate examination. As you all know the chapter is metal cutting and from which in the every gate examination there are 4 to 5 marks questions will be there and also share this video. To all your friends who is preparing for the gate examination 2021. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. The second subject is production technology. So in this subject, the third chart is here from total seven charts. So in the third chart we will discuss about the metal cutting processes. In the metal cutting chart we have included that the geometry of a single point cutting tool after that the tool signature process in which ASA and ORS is there then after the types of cutting is there then merchant circle which is also very important and MRR then the last one is BUE. So from these terms there are mainly in the gate examination 4 to 5 marks will be covered surely for the exam. So please watch the video till the end and all the important terms or all the important formulas will be covered in one chart for the metal cutting process. So let's begin with the definition of the metal cutting process. It is the manufacturing process to obtain the designed shape and the size by deforming it plastically through the shear mechanism with the help of a machine tool and a cutting tool so that the removal of the material takes place in the form of chips then after a machine tool which is equal to assembly of several different elements mechanisms and a prime mover the examples are like IC engine or the motor it is used for 
holding the cutting tool and the workpiece rigidly. Now the geometry of a single point cutting tool. You can see here in the diagram that the side flank, then face, then sunk body and the end flank were drawn in the diagram. So here ASA tool signature is there. We will discuss about that later in the tool signature. There is the node there. If we increase the nose radius, the surface finish will increase and tool life will increase. But the excessive rise in the nose radial which results into the chattering and severe vibration. Now the single point cutting tool, it can have more than one cutting edge. But while machining only one cutting edge is in the contact so that it is called the single point cutting tool and one point contact while machining also. The examples are like turning, facing, shaping, planning, slotting, thread cutting, undercutting, grooving, parting, boring, etc. These all are the single point cutting tools. So remember that it can have more than one cutting edge, but during the operation only one cutting edge is in the contact. Then after multi point cutting tool, it can have more than one cutting edge and more than one cutting edge will be in the contact while machining. The examples are like drill bit, then milling cutter, then grinding wheel and hexo blade, broach etc tools. Then tool signature is there. So the difference in the tool signatures are due to the different angles and the different reference planes. And seven components of the tool signature is there. So in the tool signature you just have to remember these two tables. Here you can see in the table that BS, ES, ES and N means in both the tool signature system the first two angles are rake angle then the other two are relief angle and the last two are cutting angle. So for the BS alpha beam means the back rake angle then alpha S is side rake angle then for ES gamma E is end relief angle and gamma S is side relief angle then ES which is fifth and sixth psi E is cut side cutting angle then psi S is side cutting angle so n is equal to nose radius for remembering this equation you just have to remember that bs is equal to 2 time es and n n for radius then in the orthogonal rack signature system the equation will be like i into alpha naught into gamma s into gamma e into psi e into lambda where i is equal to inclination angle then alpha naught is equal to orthogonal rack angle and gamma is equal to approach angle. Here note that alpha will always greater than alpha b and alpha naught is greater than alpha s and lambda will always greater than or equal to 55 degree. Then one more note is there if psi s is equal to 0 or lambda is equal to 90 then i is equal to alpha b then pi y is equal to pi c and if alpha naught is equal to alpha s then pi is equal to pi naught here remember that in calculation always orthogonal angles are used means rake angle or orthogonal rake angles are same in the examination then there are types of cutting first one is the orthogonal cutting in which force appears in two dimensionals and i is equal to zero and r is equal to under root fc square plus ft square then examples are sewing, broaching, turning of a very thin pipe and orthogonal cutting operations is there in the diagram. Then in the oblique cutting forces appear in the three dimensionals and the examples are all other operations than the orthogonal cutting operations. So examples are like turning, milling, grinding, facing etc. and for that i is not equal to 0 for the oblique cutting then one more note is there that the heat distribution for the ratio of chip tool and workpiece is in the terms of 70 gem 20 gem 10 approximately 
Then in the primary shear zone, three equations are there. First one is for the W, which is equal to width of the shear plane. Then L shear is equal to T1 by sine alpha. Then second one is the shear area. The equation is AS is equal to W into T1 upon sine phi, which is equal to F into D by sine phi. Then W into T1 is equal to D into F. Then shear force FS is equal to FS is equal to Ts into W into T1 upon sine phi, which is equal to tau S into F into D by sine phi. Then cutting ratio is there. Here R is equal to chip thickness ratio and R dS is equal to chip reduction ratio. So R is equal to T1 by D2, which is less than 1 and R dS is equal to T2 by T1, which is greater than 1 because T1 always less than T2. So in the examination, if R is given less than 1, then you have to understand that this ratio is given as the chip thickness ratio and if the value of R is greater than 1 then the value is given in the form of chip reduction ratio means you have to take R dash is equal to T2 by T1 then after MRR means material removal rate so the equation is like uncut volume is equal to cut volume then W into T1 into V is equal to W into T2 into Vc then T1 by T2 is equal to Vc by V is equal to LC by L. This is very important and useful in the examination. Then the concept of sheaf formation for the different materials are there. The first one is for better material. The causes are the negative rectangle, the large speed and depth of cut, the low cutting speed and insufficient coolant due to which the non-continuous or discontinuous chips are formed which is non-uniform and shapes and size are non-uniform in the better material then for the ductile material the alpha will always positive and theta is less in this material the chips are continuous then cutting speed is high and small feed and the depth of cut will be provided in this material and enough amount of lubricant will be used for the continuous chips then the most important point is there BUE continuous chips with built up edges then the built up edge two main important thing is there that the, by generation of the BUE tool life will increase but by breaking of BUE the tool life will decrease so overall built up edge generation or the formation should not be useful for the processes then remedies for the built up edges we can use the high bake rectangle then we can reduce the cheetah then the, we can increase the cutting velocity then feed depth of cut should be less and lubricant plus coolant should be used and change the tool material like uh, ceramic plus metals can be used for the tool then there is the merchant circle which is most important for the examination because from the, these equations surely the questions will be asked so as you can see here in the diagram there are main six forces which is shown in the diagram the first one is the fc means cutting force is equal to r into cos beta minus alpha naught then the second one is ft which is equal to thrust force the equations for thrust force is equal to ft is equal to r into sine beta minus alpha naught then f s equal to zero force means f s equal to r into cos phi plus beta minus alpha then the equations for the normal to zero means n s is equal to r into sine phi plus beta minus alpha then f is equal to friction force means f is equal to r into sine beta and n is equal to normal force means n is equal to r into cos beta then equation one is there 10 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to ns upon fs then zero reg angle cutting tool alpha naught is equal to zero and fc is equal to n and ft is equal to f for the zero reg angle then orthogonal cutting fc is equal to 67 percent and in ft is equal to 33 percent for the oblique cutting fc is equal to 67 percent and ff is equal to 27 percent and fr is equal to 6 percent means ff is equal to friction force and fr is equal to radial force then there are 10 knot points are there 
in which all the important equations are given. So first one is formula for finding the i and alpha node that tan i is equal to cos into psi s into tan alpha beta minus sin psi s into tan alpha s then tan alpha naught is equal to cos psi s into tan alpha s plus sin psi s into tan alpha beta then second one is for orthogonal cutting i is equal to 0 but alpha naught is not equal to 0 then if i not then if alpha 0 is equal to 0 given in the equation then f is equal to n and ft is equal to f so you can remember it like fc nova means fc is equal to n and ft is equal to f you can remember like foot fare means ft for foot and f for fare then after the third one is if psi is equal to 0 then lambda is equal to 90 and ft is equal to f and fr is equal to 0 then after for i is equal to 0 r is equal to under root fc square plus ft square then ft is equal to under root ff square plus fr square where ff is equal to feed force and fr is equal to radial force so fc always greater than ft then fifth formula for finding the values of the ft fr psi s and lambda so the first one is ft is equal to ff upon cos psi s which is equal to ff by sine lambda then second one is ft is equal to fr by sine psi s plus fr by cos lambda then sixth one is for finding the values of beta, phi, t1 and mu. So the first equation is mu is equal to tan beta. Then tan phi is equal to r cos alpha naught upon 1 minus r into sin alpha. Then the third equation is for finding the value of beta 2 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to 90 degree. Then tan beta minus alpha is equal to ft by fc. Then mu is equal to tan beta. So the beta is equal to tan inverse mu. Then there is a note which is most important in the examples like for the example in which the values of f, d and psi s will be given then you have to take the value of t1 by using f into cos psi s then if value of psi s is not given then use the equation of f and if d is only given then take t1 is equal to d. Then after 7th is chip velocity or shear velocity. The equation of the chip velocity is Vc is equal to V into sin phi upon cos phi minus alpha naught and Vs is equal to V into cos alpha naught upon cos phi minus alpha naught. Then 8th is minimum shear strain gamma is equal to cot phi plus tan phi minus alpha naught and alpha naught is equal to 0 for the phi is equal to 45. Then gamma mean is equal to 2 which was asked in the gate examination where phi is equal to 45 given. Then ninth one is shear strain rate which is equal to Vs by T1 then 10th is tool life means T and finding value of f of T so first one is f of T or T is equal to 1 minus n upon n into fc then vt raised to n is equal to constant which is known as Taylor's constant C then n is equal to ln into T2 by T1 upon ln into V1 by V2 then rt is equal to f square by 8r which is most important equation because more than 4 to 5 times from this equation the proportionality questions were asked in the gate examination so you have to remember that rt is equal to f square by 8r and vt raised to n is equal to constant then after 11th is power consumption p is equal to fc into v in the kilowatts then Ts is equal to Fs upon As, then Ts is equal to Fs into sin phi upon F into D, where As is equal to F into D by sin phi. The value of Ts is in megapascal. Then after 12th is most of abrasive tool. Alpha is equal to negative and phi is equal to higher. Then for grinding wheel, alpha is equal to zero. After the types of wear, the first one is diffusion in that atoms diffuse to the tool chip interface from the face of the tool and notice that diamond is not used for the hard and ferrous material CBN is used for the hard and ferrous materials then second one is oxidation then second one is oxidation in which oxidized layer continuously carried away by chips and leading to the wear at the face of the tool. Then in the addition, 
Due to the very high temperature at face, the tool material loose from the rack face. Then fourth one is abrasive wear. For that, carbides and CBN is responsible for the adhesive wears. Then fifth is crater wear. Crater wears occur at certain distance from the tool chip thickness and temperature is highest at that place. And due to all the above types, this type of wear can be occurred, but the rate of wear is less in the crater wear. Then sixth one is flank wear, which is occurred at the flank surface due to the abrasion, plunging, and the buoy. Here, remember that flank wear will always greater than the crater wear, and at high speed. Crater wear is greater than the flank wear. One more note is that productivity proportional to MRR, proportional to F, proportional to D, and proportional to V from this. Then, 16 note is there that tool life mostly affected by the V greater than F greater than D means mostly affected by the velocity, then feed, and then the depth. Then, after one equation is there. T is equal to C raised to 1 upon N divided by V raised to 1 upon N into F raised to 1 upon N1 into D raised to 1 upon N2 where 1 upon N greater than 1 upon M1 greater than 1 upon N2. Then there are two main analyses which are important in the examination. While value of mu is greater than 1 only, then you can use the Cronenberg's analysis. The equation for the Cronenberg's analysis mu is equal to ln r days upon pi by 2 minus alpha naught. Remember that mu should always greater than 1 for using this equation. Then there are Unnets and Merchant's minimum energy consumption theory. Fc is equal to r cos beta minus alpha naught and Fs is equal to r cos phi plus beta minus alpha naught and 2 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to pi by t which is equal to 90. So you have to use these equations and find the values of beta phi or alpha naught then lee and Seffer's theorem phi plus beta minus alpha is equal to pi by 4 and stabler's theorem phi plus beta minus alpha naught by 2 is equal to pi by 2 sometimes it will be asked in the examination that the choose the correct equation for the lee and Seffer's theorem or for the stabler's theorem so you have to remember this equation then after machining constant cm is equal to summation of 2 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to cm so if cm is equal to 90 degree then tau is equal to tau s then efficiency is 100 percent which means minimum energy consumption and if cm less than 90 degree then tau greater than tau s and eta max less than 100 percent which means machining is possible and if cm greater than 90 degree then tau less than tau s which means efficiency will greater than 100 percent which is not possible so you can say that machining will not possible so these are the important formulas and the terms you have to remember from that you can directly answer any example this is the third chart of the production technology in which we have covered all the metal cutting portion so we will hope that you have liked this video so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel in which we will cover the rolling as well as extrusion as well as wire drawing tube drawing as well as forging process are there so please do like and share this video to the other friends who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much hello and welcome to the bs academy second subject of the Gate 2021 is production technology. In the second subject, the fourth chart of the production technology will be related to the metal forming processes. In the fourth chart, we will include that the flow stress, then the rolling process, then the tube drawing, then the forming process as well as the forging process and at the end 
the non-traditional machining methods will be there. All the formulas related to these processes will be covered in this chart, so please watch the full video till the end. Let's begin with the first one which is the flow stress. As you can see here that the stress at any point in the strain hardening region is called the flow stress. Then types of stress strain curve are there. First one is the perfectly elastic material. The diagram is shown here for that material. Then the second one is the rigid plastic material. For that stress strain diagram is there. After that the elastic perfect plastic. Then elastic linear strain hardening material. For the fourth one sigma mf is equal to sigma f1 plus sigma ff y2 where sigma f is equal to initial stress and the ff is equal to final stress then after the fifth one is the elastic non-linear strain hardening material for that sigma mf is equal to k into strain raised to n upon n plus 1 so sigma f is equal to k into e raised to n so here one note is there during the metal forming processes if v is equal to constant is given in the examination then by this equation you can solve the questions the equation will be like ln lf upon li plus 2 into ln df upon di is equal to 0 that means epsilon l plus 2 into epsilon d is equal to 0 it means where epsilon l is equal to length y is true strength then epsilon d is equal to dimension y is true strength and epsilon t is equal to thickness wise true strain. So you can use this equation of EL plus ED plus EX is equal to 0. Then coming towards the rolling process. First one is the assumptions which are taken in the rolling process. The first is the rolls are straight and rigid cylinders. The second is strips are much wider as compared to the thickness that means w is greater 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 than than the t means thickness then arc of the contact is circular with a radius greater than the radius of the roll then material is rigid and plastic which is perfectly plastic then cof is constant on the both the sides of the material then after from volume consistency HIVI is equal to HFVF it means TIVI is equal to TFVF then you can say that T is directly proportional to 1 upon V then VF upon VI is equal to TI by TF greater than 1 then VF greater than VI that's why you can say that the velocity at the end of the rolling process is greater than that of the starting of the rolling process then the second equation is for enlarging zone the percentage of backward slip which is equal to vr minus vi by vr into 100 is equal to 1 minus vi by vr into 100 then 1 minus hi upon hi into 100 percent so we are greater than vs for the backward slip and in the third one in the leading zone the equation will be like vf minus vr upon vr into 100 percent then vf upon vr minus 1 into 100 percent then hn upon hf minus 1 into 100 percent here you can say that v is greater than vr for the leading zone then one more important equation is arc length or the contact length L is equal to under root R into delta H then for self entry of plate in the roller gap you can use this equation like first one is the mu is equal to greater than or equal to 10 theta then 10 theta is equal to mu which is equal to under root delta H upon R and the third one is cos theta is equal to 1 minus delta H by 2R from the first equation you can say that mu n cos theta greater than or equal to n into sin theta then six one is for maximum draft delta h is equal to mu square into r then delta h is equal to hi minus hf then maximum draft is directly proportional to mu square and proportional to r 
Now the eighth one is for maximum reduction in area AI by AF is equal to E then FD is equal to sigma total into AF then AF upon AI is equal to 1 upon 1 plus beta raised to 1 upon beta where beta is equal to mu into cot alpha and alpha is equal to semi side angle then sigma total is equal to sigma y plus sigma d minus sigma y into e raised to minus 2 into mu l upon rf then seventh is force power and torque for the rolling process so you can use this equation like p total is equal to 2 into p1 is equal to 2 into 2 pi n t1 upon 60 then second is t is equal to f into l by 2 where sigma f is equal to sigma mf is equal to sigma y then sigma mf is equal to 2 by under root 3 into sigma y so third one is f is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus mu l upon 4 h into w into l so h is equal to hi plus hf by 2 then f is equal to wl into sigma mf then sigma mf is equal to 2 by root 3 into sigma y so these are the equations for the rolling process now the next is tube drawing process the drawing stress in the tube drawing you can calculate by this equation of sigma td is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus beta upon beta into 1 minus hf upon hi into beta then tube drawing with stationary mandrel beta is equal to mu1 plus mu2 by 10 alpha minus 10 gamma and beta is equal to mu into cot alpha then second is for floating beta is equal to mu1 minus mu2 upon 10 alpha minus 10 gamma then tube drawing with movable mandrel beta is equal to mu1 upon 10 alpha and fourth one is sigma td is equal to sigma mf into ln hi upon hf for floating mandrel then sigma 2 is equal to sigma y into 1 plus beta by beta into 1 minus hf upon hi raised to beta then sigma 2 by sigma y is equal to ln hi upon hf then after jigs and fixture so the device is used to support and guide the workpiece while repeating the production jigs and fixtures are used jigs is basically used to guide and support the workpiece and the fixture is only used for the support then 3 to 1 principle of the location you can see in the diagram the plane 1 2 and 3 for plane 1 there are two fixtures are made and in the plane 1 three fixture is the here note that in order to locate the workpiece in a fixture from 12 degree of freedom 9 is fixed by this 3 to 1 principle and the three translational motion will be left in the direction of the minus x minus y and minus z then different methods of the location the first one is the flat location then cylindrical location then conical location then jack pin locator then fifth is drill bush locator then sixth is v locator and seventh is setting lock mostly the setting lock location mostly used in the drilling machine then after extrusion process in the case of extrusion the metal is compressed and forced through a suitable diameter having constant cross-sectional area in hot extrusion process phosphate based lubricant plus molten glass used and here one more note is there ratio between the initial cross-sectional area of billet and final cross-sectional area of the product which is equal to extrusion ratio which nearly equal to 40 gem 1 then the hot extrusion process still is around 400 gem 1 then advantages is huge reduction in cross-sectional area and limitation is same cross-sectional area throughout the line then for the forward extrusion process or direct extrusion process material is extruded in the same direction of the stroke 
means f external is equal to means f extrusion is equal to sigma extrusion into ai and large deformation can be obtained then second one is backward or indirect extrusion the material is extruded in the opposite direction of the stroke and the hollow parts are made by this extrusion process as well as the solid extrusion can be formed then for the backward or indirect extrusion process f extrusion is equal to sigma extrusion into area of die then there is most important equation which is of the johnson's equation sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into a plus b into ln r where sigma mf is equal to k into e raised to n upon n plus 1 and r is equal to extrusion ratio and a and b are johnson's constant then ideal case sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into ln into ai upon af then sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into ln into r and for the real case sigma extrusion is equal to k into ln r where k is equal to constant then after slab analysis sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus beta by beta into 1 minus ai upon af raised to beta so beta is equal to mu into cot alpha same for the wire drawing so these are the equations which are similar for the extrusion process as well as the wire drawing process then after the impact extrusion is there it is used for softer material examples are like aluminum and its alloy then collapsible tubes are formed by this process then hydrostatic extrusion is used for the bitter material like wire drawings and for this extrusion process sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z then extrusion defects are first one is the bamboo defect which is due to the non-uniform velocity and the second one is pipe defect which is equal to due to improper planing so this is all about the extrusion process now the forging process steps in forging now the forging process the steps involved in the forging processes are first one is the fullering or the swaying which is used to reduce the workpiece at the center then the edging or rolling after that third one is bending then fourth is blocking then fifth is flattering the workpiece then sixth is finishing and after that the forging process is complete for the press forging in this process using the workpiece into the shape ties with help of the hydraulic press and the production rate is faster and structure quality is good for this process then hardness is higher then toughness is also the higher then the equations for the forging processes are first one is in the average method f average is equal to f into i minimum plus f into f minimum by 2 then for the slab analysis method f actual is equal to sigma y into 1 plus 2 into mu rf upon 3 into hf into af then for the work done e is equal to f actual into hi minus hf upon 2 into wh where w is equal to hammer weight then f separable is equal to sigma mf into lnr into ai upon efficiency then after the barreling in the forging in which it can occur due to the hot forging process and in this process at the ends the metal cools faster than at the center and for controlling this the friction control by lubricant and the second one is the same cooling rate maintaining proportional gradient throughout the height then at the end the forging defects first one is the left fold second one is the unifold section third one is the scale pits fourth one is the die shift and fifth one is hot tear and thermal cracking so this is all about the forging process now coming towards the non-traditional machining method or you can say that the non-conventional machining method NTM and NCM so first one is the form of energy 
there are four types of forms of the energy first one is the electrochemical then the chemical then mechanical and the thermal so according to the form of the energy we have divided the processes like in the electrochemical portion ECM, ECG, ECH and ECD are there then for the chemical CM, PCM and for mechanical HJM, WJM, AWJM and USM for the thermal EDM, WDM, LBM, PAM and EBM are there then the full form of laser is light amplification for the stimulated emission and radiation in the ECM electrochemical machining the diagram will be like here in this process you can say that the reverse of electroplating process here supply voltage is less than 2 to 35 DC then high magnitude I is equal to 500 to 4000 ampere properties are for electrolyte PP will be higher then corrosiveness will be lower K will be lower and cost will be lower mu is equal to also less then for the material electric conductivity should be higher and k should be higher as well as the good machinability and the stiffness will be higher so you can choose the material with the respective properties then after for ecm process equations are there MRR is equal to I into A upon F into rho V which is equal to I into E equivalence upon F into rho then 100 upon E equivalence is equal to sigma 0 to N Xi Vi upon Ai where R is equal to rho L upon A then after second one is ECG electrochemical grinding in that it is used for the shaping and sharpening the high wear rates on expensive diamond wheels then low voltage and high current process it is then no heat damage and no residual stresses third one is EDM process electro discharge machining the diagram is there the workpiece will be positive and tool will be negative as a dielectric you can use the kerosene or deionized water and energy per spark will be equal to E is equal to 1 by 2 into C into Vd square then cycle time T is equal to R into C into ln Vs upon Vs minus Vd then power is equal to E by T and the average power output is equal to 0.5 into C into Vd square by T so these are the main equations for the EDM process then there are advantages of EDM like used for the hard and bitter material, no chip mark or no burr mark on the workpiece, then FC is equal to zero. Then applications are to produce the small holes which is greater than of 0.30 mm to 20 mm, then blind cavities can be made, then burr free surface can be made only by this EDM process and the narrow dies for molding slots then fourth one is WDM process means wire electric discharge machining in this process dielectric is deionized water and electrode wire diameter will be 0.05 to 0.25 mm then thickness will be equal to 5 mm applications are punches stripper plates dies intricate shapes and difficult openings for all these processes you have to remember their applications because in the gate examination the applications of the every process will be asked in the form of the tabular form so all are very important processes then after ultrasonic machining in this process tool vibrate with the frequency of the amplitude between the 15 to 50 microns then machining is for the brittle materials and poor conductors then abrasive materials for the usm process are l203 b4c sic and diamond based on the physioelectric effect magneto striptive effect and electrostriptive effect then 
Applications are most useful process in the fabrication of glass, silicone, skew, round and irregular holes, then making impressions on the glass and for making the logos. These applications were asked more than two to three times for the USM process. Then the sixth one is HM means the abrasive jet machining. The abrasives are L203 and WC and SIC for the HM process. Then applications are cutting, drilling of metal foils, then intricate holes, cleaning, polishing, and deburring of the surfaces. In this process, case compressed and mixed with the abrasive, then passed through the outlet nozzle. So the pressure is very high in this process. Then there are two important tables for the note here. You can take a screenshot because it is very helpful notes for your examination. The first one is for ECM process. It is used for the highest MRR. Then second is USM and HAM are used for the non-materials and the third one is LBM and EBM are used for the highest penetration with low MRR and used for micro drill and sheet metal cutting. Then there is the note for sap cutting capabilities. So LBM and EBM are used for the micro drilling and metal cutting process. Then EDM and USM are used for the die cavity, shrinking, standard drilling holes, logos and blind holes. Then ECM is used for contour cutting and fine hole drilling. Then PM is used for clean and radial cuts. Then HM is used for cello pocketing and impression on tough glass. So this is all about the fourth chart of production technology in which the first one is the flow stress, then after rolling, then extrusion, then forging and tube drawing as well as the, all the non-traditional machining methods we have included in this chart. So please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and for the upcoming video please press the bell icon which is for the welding process in which we will include all the welding processes. Please share this video to all the GATE aspirants of the GATE 2021. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. In the second subject of GATE 2021 which is production technology, this is the fifth chart for the production technology. And this chart will include all the welding processes. So let's start one by one. First one is the arc welding process. So before starting the welding processes, let's see first the definition of the welding process. Welding is the fabrication process in which the permanent joints are made in between two similar or dissimilar material with or without the application of heat and or pressure. The examples are arc welding and gas welding are based on the heat, then expulsion welding based on the pressure and the resistance welding based on the heat and pressure. Let's begin with the first welding process which is arc welding. So the principles of arc welding process are like DCN and DCSP or SPDC. Then third one is DCRP or RPDC and fourth one is DCEP where DCN stands for direct current electronegative process then DCSP stands for direct current straight polarity then DCRP stands for direct current reverse polarity and DCEP stands for direct current electropositivity. So the diagrams of the respective processes are shown here. So for the DCN process, the collide at the interface and UV radiant or arc heat is used, then high arc length avoided in this process and V is equal to A plus B into L, where V is proportional to L and L is proportional to V. So you can say that L is directly proportional to 1 upon I. Then for the DCRP process, the diagram is also there and maximum standard arc length is equal to diameter of electrode 
then L proportional to voltage maximum voltage is equal to 80 volt in this process thermodynamic emission is used for the arc welding then arc blow is equal to low heat penetrations occurred due to the unbalanced magnetic force especially near the edges and the corners then types of electrode first one is the non-consumable it includes the tungsten then graphite then deposition rate is near equal to zero for the filler matter and stable arc as well as the electrode is not melt in this process then second one is for consumable electrode two types are there first one is the bare electrode in the form of spool of wire and used for the semi and automatic welding then coated electrode in this electrode coating is used for the prevent the oxidation of the electrode then blinders which are used for the arc blending process are Na2SiO3 and K2SiO3 then deoxidizing ingredients are cellulose and dolomite as well as the starch, dextrin, wood floor and the graphite here for the manual arc welding process here for the manual arc welding process the note is important that in the case of the semi and automatic arc welding process V is equal to constant transformer R used. V is equal to A plus BL is equal to V naught minus V naught upon IS into I was asked in the gate examination. Then linear volt ampere characteristic curve is there. Here for semi-automatic arc welding you can use this equation V is equal to OCV minus OCV upon SCC raised to I and P is equal to IV. Here note that V is equal to IR you cannot use in the arc welding process then after modes of the metal transfer in the welding first one is by short circuit method then the globular transfer then after the spray transfer and the fourth one is the deep transfer so in the short circuit method the welding current is very low but enough for the stable arc and metal droplet is used for the weld full then in the globular transfer the eye is lower and the gap is enough to drop the continuously to grow until the Fg greater than Fs means gravitational force greater than the surface force here in this method the size now in the spray transfer welding current is very high and no surface tension so the droplets are formed rapidly and pinch off from the electrode tip. In the deep transfer method, the current is very low and feed rate is too much. So the short circuit leads to the melting of the electrode. Then after the second one is the gas metal arc welding GMW or you can say that the MIG. It is used for any metal then primarily it used for non-ferrous metal then welding of steel O2 or CO2 gas is added to improve the arc stability and for shielding AR and HE or AR plus HE is used in this process here we have only mentioned the important terms which are important for the exam point of view so only important points are noted here then third one is the submerged arc welding it is used for the thickness greater than 30 mm and also used for the CPR parts flat bed vessels and fillet weld and LPG cylinder mostly for the low carbon or medium carbon steel high speed high deposition rate and the limitations are for other metal the suitable flux is very difficult and only in the horizontal position welding can be done then after the fourth one is the atomic hydrogen welding for this process the applications are useful the ceramics carbide tungsten can be weld by this method one is oxy fuel gas welding then 
fusion welding process is also known as the oxy fuel gas welding in which heat is obtained by the burning acetylene in the presence of the oxygen so c2h2 gas burns into two stages first one is c2h2 plus o2 gives 2 into co plus h2 plus heat and in the second stage 2 co plus o2 gives 2 co2 plus heat so h2 plus half o2 is equal to h2 plus heat generation here note that in the black cylinder always oxygen will be there and in the red cylinder always c2h2 will be there at any stage or at any place then after the types of flame first one is the neutral flame second one is the oxidizing flame and the third one is carburizing flame so the temperature and the ratio of O2 by C2H2 is very important for all the three flames. So let's see one by one. For the neutral flame, the ratio of the oxygen to the acetylene will be near equal to 1.05 to 0.95 means near equal to 1. And this flame is neither the carburizing nor the oxidizing and most widely used the flame than neutral flame is more safer flame than other two then for the oxidizing flame O2 by C2H2 is greater than 1 it means the oxygen ratio is more than the acetylene ratio that's why it's called the oxidizing flame and the not suitable for carbon steel mostly used for Cu and its alloy then third one is the carburizing flame for that flame O2 by C2H2 is less than 1 then used for Ni and Cu alloy means nickel and copper alloy then hydrocarbon steel and some alloy steels also can be welded then flame welding is used in the field work and manufacturing processes and fusion welding is used where flux may used to clean the surface. Then there is one small topic of duty cycle from which more than two to three times the questions may be asked in the gate examination. So for duty cycle you have to just remember these equations of I square R into dr is equal to I square D into DD where IR represents the rated current, dr for the rated duty cycle ID for the desired current and DD for the desired T cycle and P is equal to IV you can use here then after the explosion welding you can see here in the diagram that the process of the production of oxygen gas resolution is equal to AP upon AP plus AR into 100% where AP is equal to perpendicular area and AR is equal to reinforcement area and ideally AR is equal to 0% but in the practical situation AR is not equal to 0. Then seventh is thermite welding. The applications for thermite welding is very useful because all the welding processes the applications are important. So it is used in the joining railway track and the large size cubic than in remote location. And note is there medium velocity explosive like aluminum nitride and al perchloride as well as the amatol and the dynamite are used for the thermite welding processes in this process the temperature of 2750 degree celsius will be produced in just 30 seconds hence it is used in the large welding requirement then the eighth one is sport resistance welding in this welding process, heat and pressure both are used for the welding process. Heat is generated by the electrical resistance of the workpiece and interface between them and pressure is supplied externally. Then for gas welding and arc welding, T is lower. Then advantages are dissimilar metal can be weld, rapid process as well as the filler metal are not required here and limitations are high initial cost then skilled workers are required and the limitation in the lab joint the ninth one is seam welding process in this process the electrodes in the form of wheels are used 
and the sheet metal is fed between the two rollers connected with the electrodes and this is the variation of the spot welding process the applications are in the gaseous or the liquid joints and in fabrication then the tenth one is the upset welding process in this process you can use the equation of h is equal to i square rt then v is equal to ir you can use this in process and h is equal to v square upon r into t then hn is equal to 2 into t minus indentation then dm of nugget is equal to dn is equal to 6 into under root t then after the last welding process is gas tungsten arc welding process which is also known as CTAW or TIG or you can say that the TIG welding process. In this process the voltage is in the range of 20 to 40 and current is less than 150 degree ampere. Then one note is that for aluminium it oxidizes very easily so TIG is used for cast iron, oxyacetylene or brass welding is there and for stainless steel the welding is difficult due to the Ni and Cr. So TIG and MIG both are best process for the stainless steel. Then after the welding defects. First one is the case porosity. The second one is the slag inclusion. Third one is the weld spatter. Then fourth one is the lack of fusion and penetration. Then fifth one is the weld cracks. Sixth one is welding decay and Seventh is the hydrogen embrittlement, embrittlement, and and seventh is hydrogen embrittlement. For weldability, aluminium less than Cu less than cast iron less than mild steel. This is the fifth chart of the production technology in which we have covered all the welding processes and the important nodes as well as the duty cycles is there. So. We hope that you have liked this video so please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming chart of production technology which is the final chart of production technology subject in which we will cover the all the machining operations thank you so much As you can see here in the milling operation, it is used for producing the flat surface in a horizontal, vertical and the inclined position. For producing 2D countering such as case of the gears, clutches and 3D contour of the dies and cavity in mold. Then helical grooves in the drills are used for milling operation. Then after milling time. Tm is equal to L plus LA plus L0 plus LC upon F into Z into N, where N is equal to RPM, L is equal to length of workpiece, LA is equal to approach, then F is equal to feed, then LC is equal to compulsory approach, and Z equal to number of teeth. From this equation, many times in the grade examination questions were asked, plane milling or the side milling. So the diagram you can see here in the screen. Then cutting teeth on periphery and uh, axis of rotation is parallel to the workpiece surface. In this type of milling, the LC is equal to under root D into capital D minus D. Then after four face milling, the cutting teeth on the face and axis of rotation is perpendicular to the workpiece surface. Then the third one is the symmetric face milling. For this type of milling, LC is equal to 1 by 2 into D minus under root D square minus D square. Then WI is equal to W. Then after fourth one is asymmetric phase milling. So WI is equal to W plus 2 into offset. And fifth one is end milling. For that, cutting tooth are both side face and periphery or the surface. Then D is equal to W and LC is equal to D by 2 for this type of milling. Then for the straddle milling, it is used to cut the T-slot and gang milling 
is used more than two slab milling cutters are there then on a single arbor these type of operations can be made so these are the types of the milling process then up milling and down milling processes are there so for the up milling process the workpiece and cutter movement are in opposite direction and thickness is in between 0 to the maximum then force will be minimum to maximum and feed f is equal to more and mrr will be more then undercut may be possible and a rough operation is there in the up milling process then tool life will lower and wear will be higher then strong holding required and strong jigs and fixtures are used for the up milling process then in the down milling process workpiece and the cutter movement are in same direction t is equal to maximum to zero then force is equal to maximum to the minimum then feed is less and mrr will also lesser then better surface finish then tool life will higher and wear is lower then strong holding is not required and normal jigs and fixtures are used in this process then these are the some equations which are useful f is equal to f upon n into z then sin theta is equal to 2 into under root d by d then t max is equal to f into sin theta then t max is equal to f into 2 into under root d by d then t max is equal to 2 into f upon n into z into under root d by d then third one is average chip thickness t average is equal to f upon n z into under root d by d so t average is also equal to t max by 2 then indexing in milling it can be achieved by divide the peripheries of the workpiece into subdivisions and n subdivisions are there then 360 upon n is equal to angle and suppose 40 holes rotate then one time workpiece will rotate now coming towards the second operation which is drilling so it is the oblique cutting operation to cut the cylindrical holes in the workpiece and made from hss then first hss blank is forged then forced blank is twisted to increase the torsional rigidity then milling cutters are used to make helical grooves called flutes and flutes are on cylindrical periphery so that chip flows outward easily then width of the cut for drilling so depth of the cut d is equal to capital d by 2 and width of the cut w is equal to d upon 2 into sin beta where sin beta is equal to d by w so that after uncut thickness t1 is equal to f by 2 into sin beta then lc is equal to d by 2 into cot beta and lc is equal to capital d by 2 into tan beta then drilling time td is equal to l upon fn and l is equal to t plus la plus l0 plus lc then the last one is the mrr which is equal to pi by 4 d square into f into n and for blind hole lc is equal to 0.33d and for conventional processes lc is equal to 0.5d through hole then angle between two cutting edges is equal to point angle 2 beta and standard point angle 2 beta is equal to 180 then beta is equal to normally taken as 59 degree then after helix angle angle between the leading edge of land and axis of drill bit maximum helix angle is equal to tack angle of drill bit after the steel cast iron 116 to 118 degree celsius 2 beta then for hardened steel 125 degree then for brass and bronze 130 to 140 then wood and plastic 40 to 60 now the third process is broaching it is orthogonal cutting tool and primary is used for making keyways then now used for several scrapes especially in the automobile and industries rise per tooth is equal to each of the tooth slightly higher than the previous tooth then gap between two different teeth is called as the pitch then
here you can see that hr is greater than hs greater than hf it means the height for roughing is greater than height for semi finished teeth is greater than that of the finishing teeth then for the broach length lb is equal to lb is equal to zr into pr plus zs into ps plus zf into pf then depth of keyway d is equal to zr into hr plus zs into hs and the broaching time tv is equal to lb plus t upon vb then keyway cutting then fourth one is keyway cutting for that depth of the keyway d is equal to zr into hr plus zs into hs and for the fifth one enhancing a hole z is equal to d by h is equal to df minus da by 2 into h and d is equal to df minus da by 2 so these are the equation these are the equations for the broaching process then after iso designation of the grinding wheel there are six types so you have to remember this table because from this table so many times the questions were asked in the exam like if first one is the 30 means manufacturers private marketing then a is the type of abrasive then 220 is equal to grain size then r is equal to hardness or softness then 11 is equal to structure and v is equal to type of bond then the last one 25 once again it is the private marketing to keep the record so in the types of aggressive there are four types a is for l203 b for bona zone then SIC for silicon carbide, then D for diamond, then grain size 10 to 20 is coarse, then 30 to 60 is medium, then 70 to 180 is finishing, then 220 to 600 is very fine. Then for hardness, A to T is soft, then I to P is medium, and P to Z is hard. Then for the structure 1 to 8 is dense, 9 to 16 is open. Then after types of bond, so V for vitrified or clay bond, then E for silic, then R for rubber, and B for bakelite or resonate, and M for metal bond. Then after the last one is private marketing to keep the record. And there are types of bone in detail here. Then after saper, slaughter and planner. So in the saper, tool will reciprocate and feed is given to the workpiece. Then in the slaughter, it is vertical. Then cutting stroke is slow and the return stroke is faster. Then in the planner, the feed is given to the tool and workpiece will reciprocate. So there are some equations also similar to the other operations like L is equal to L plus LA plus L naught then W is equal to W plus WA plus W naught then number of strokes N is equal to W by F and T1 is equal to L by VC plus L by VR then after total time taken T is equal to N into T1 where T1 is equal to L by VC plus L by VR branding process Grinding wheel contains the abrasive grades and grinding wheel is milling cutter with infinite number of cutting edges. Then each grid is equal to SPCT means with alpha is between 40 to 60 and SPCT means single point cutting tool. Then in the grinding it is the combination of the searing, clutching and rubbing. Then there are types of abrasives. L203 SIC CBN and diamond. Then there are some properties for the grinding wheel like grid number is inversely proportional to the grain size, and for grinding hard material, the soft grinding wheels are used. Then there are structures are there dense and open. And there are two processes are important like truing 
it is an act of the regenerating the required geometry on the wheel before brazing then in the brazing process the glazed and the loaded wheels are turned at its surface so that the fresh and sharp grits are exposed to the workpiece during the grinding process then sixth one is lathe operations in that there are four to five lathe operations are there first one is for the plane turning operation d is equal to di minus df by 2 then d1 is equal to l upon f into n1 then n is equal to 1000 into v upon pi into d1 and t is equal to t1 plus t2 plus t3 then for the facing process t is equal to pi upon 4 into fv into df square minus di square then for solid plate t is equal to pi into df square upon 4 into fv then for the taper turning process capital t total is equal to d max into cosec theta upon f into n into n into n plus 1 by 2 then l is equal to d max into cosec theta then t is equal to l upon fn once again ln is equal to d max into cosec theta into n and n is equal to 1000 v upon pi into d1 then for thread cutting process external thread n is equal to 25 upon tpc then internal thread n is equal to 30 by tpc then tpc is equal to thread per cut then after gear ratio gr is equal to pitch of thread upon to the pitch of lead screw so gr is equal to p of t by p of l then gamma is equal to n max upon n min raised to 1 upon n minus 1 where n is equal to 1000 v by pi into d then there are taper turning methods the compound rest method includes d is equal to di minus df by 2 then 10 theta is equal to di minus df by 2 into l is equal to d by l and it is not used for the long length and production rate is lower and poor surface finish in that compound rest method then in the tail stock offset method h is equal to l into 10 theta and h is equal to l into di minus df by 2 into l then the tail stock is offset and feeded then the last one is foam tool method in this method a foam tool is plunged into the workpiece to produce a very small taper such as in case of the chamfering now these are some notes for the boring process if the offset is in upward direction then alpha effective will decrease and gamma effective will increase if the offset will be in downward direction then alpha effective will increase and gamma effective will decrease now the last one is the powder metallurgy it is the method of producing the fine powder material blended and pressed into the desired shape then heated in a controlled atmosphere and the manufacturing of powder process there are five steps are there first one is by atomization then the reduction then after third one is electrolytic deposition fourth one is granulation and fifth one is shooting then two important terms are there infiltration and impregnation the infiltration the pm component is dipped into the low melting point alloy in metal alloy and voids are filled by the liquid then decreasing the porosity strength will increase then in the impregnation in this process kept in oil bath the oil penetrate into the void by capillary action during the actual process service condition and the oil is released slowly to provide the necessary lubrication plu is in cnc machines the length of the work table for one pulse output from the machine is defined as blu This is all about the 6 chart of the production technology. We have completed all the 6 charts of the production technology. So if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming videos. Now we will start the next subject of the machine design. Thank you so much.
Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence. So basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference. Here in this chart will include the important concepts which were frequently asked in the gate examination from the material science. Before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. First concept is crystallography. Here there is one table which is most important for the examination. Here for the simple cubic A is equal to 2R, then unit cell is equal to 1, then CN which is coordination number is equal to 6, then APF which is equal to atomic packing factor which is equal to 52% and the example is alpha polonium. Then after for the BCC, the body cubic center a is equal to 4 by root 3 into R, then unit cell R2, then CN is equal to 8, and APF is equal to 68%. Then the examples are thermolybdenum, then after titanium, then after vanadium, then tungsten, then chromium, and alpha iron. Then after the third one is the FCC structure, for that A is equal to 2 root 2 R, and N is equal to 4 then CN is equal to 12 and APF is equal to 74% then after the examples are platinum, silicon, nickel, copper, aluminium, gallium, lithium, AU means gold then after 4 the HCP, hexagonal closed back structure H is equal to 4R and 2 under root 2 by 3 then here n is equal to 6 and cn is equal to 12 similar to the fcc which is 74 percent then the examples are manganese then after alpha titanium then zirconium zinc beryllium and cadmium then this table of the value of apc and alpha beta gamma are also important for the structures like the cubic then rhombohedral and etc here let's see one by one for the cubic structure there are three structures in the cubic which are SCP then BCC and FCC then for the rhombohedral number of structure is 1 and in that structure A is equal to B is equal to C and alpha is equal to beta and and alpha beta gamma are same but not equal to 90 degree then the third one is tetragonal for that two structures are there then after the orthogonal or orthorhombic for this type of structure four types of structure are there and a is not equal to b not equal to c then alpha beta gamma all are equal to 90 degree then for the hexagonal here alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degree but gamma is equal to 120 degree then for the monoclinic there are two structures and alpha and gamma are 90 degree but beta is not 90 degree then for triclinic a is equal to b is not equal to c and alpha is not equal to beta is not equal to gamma here gamma is equal to 90 degree so there are 14 types of unit cells which are known as the Bravis lattices. Here note that the Martin site is having the tetragonal structure. This question was asked in the examination. This table is very useful. Then the next topic is the Miller indices. Here for the Miller indices there are some examples are there. You can go through it because from this topic mainly 
the selected questions were asked in the examination. Here in the Miller indices, you have to take the reciprocal of the values of x, y, and z and reduce to the smallest integer by taking common factor. Then after the next topic is the strain hardening. For that, some equations are there. Epsilon is equal to ln LF by Li, then Epsilon is equal to ln AI by AF, then Epsilon is equal to 2 into ln DI by DF, and Epsilon is equal to ln into 1 plus E. Here sigma is equal to k into epsilon raised to n. Here n is equal to strain hardening exponent and e is equal to lf by li minus 1. Here note that epsilon is equal to true strain and sigma is equal to e into epsilon. Then there is diagram for the stress versus strain. Then after the next topic is solid and liquid fraction. For this here the diagram is drawn and the equation of ms is equal to co minus cl by cs minus cl. So you can take the values from the diagrams. Similarly you can find the value of ml from the equation of ms plus ml is equal to 1. Here ms is equal to mass fraction of solid and ml is equal to mass fraction of liquid then the most important topic from the material science subject which is iron iron carbide diagram here the diagram is shown very carefully and after referring all the materials so you need not to take care about the accuracy of the diagram you can take a screenshot if you want here there are some important terms which are useful First one is the eutectoid point. From this diagram, you have to remember the temperature and the percentage of the carbon for the three points, which are very important. For the first one, which is eutectoid point, here the temperature is 723 degrees Celsius and, and the carbon percentage is 0.76%. Here at the eutectoid point, Austenite is converted into the alpha iron plus the Fe3C. Then after the second one is eutectic point. Here the temperature is 1147 degrees Celsius and carbon percentage is 4.3%. And at this point alpha iron is converted into the gamma iron plus Fe3C. Then after peritectic point. Here the temperature is 1495 degrees Celsius and, and the carbon percentage is 0.16%. Then at this point delta iron plus L iron is converted into the gamma iron. Then after four more regions which are important in the diagram, first one is the hypo region in which the steel is there means the P plus alpha iron is there here P is equal to pearlite and alpha is equal to alpha ferrite here gamma is equal to austenite so pearlite includes alpha plus Fe3C then in the hypoeutectic region P plus Fe3C which means cementite is there third region which is hypoeutectic region there is Cast iron is there which includes the gamma plus L iron. Then after the fourth region is hyperutectic region which includes the cast iron and the combination of plus Fe3C. Here the combi here the combination of the gamma and Fe3C is known as the ladeburite and the cementite is the combination of pearlite plus Fe3C. These two you have to note down. Then after next topic is hardness test. First one is the Rockwell hardness test in which one division equal to 0 0.02 mm and minor load is 10 kg and major load is 150 kg. 
and here the diameter of bowl is between 1.6 to 3.2 mm then after the brindle hardness test in which the bowl indenter is used here bhn is equal to 2p divided by pi into d into d into d square minus small d square so you can say that hardness is proportional to the bhn and the third one is the Wickers hardness test in which VHN is equal to 1.854 into V divided by L square. In this type of the test, the square diamond pyramid indenter is used. Here L is equal to L1 plus L2 by 2. Then the fourth one is the impact test. In this type of test, the pole pit hammer is used and V and U notch are there. Then specimen is horizontal and the 55 by 10 by 10 mm of pole bit hammer is used in the impact test. Then after the ISO test which is used only for the V-notch and here grew in same direction of the impact. Then the dimension of the framing hammer is 755 by 10 by 10 mm then specimen is vertical in this test then here for the case hardness process the nitriding is most impactful than that of the cyaniding and that of carburizing then after for the temperature here in the carburizing the temperature is highest then that of the cyaniding and that of nitriding then after in the martempering the strapped quenching is used and interrupted quenching is used here from austenite to martensite is produced then in the austenpering bainite formation is there these are some key points you just have to remember then the next topic is the limits fits and tolerance here first one is find the division then find the tolerance then here for finding the division two types of systems are there first one is the whole base system and the second one is soft base system and three types of fits are there clearance fit then after the transmission fit and the third one is interference fit you can see the diagram for the respective fits then if the tolerance is positive then add the value of the tolerance and if the tolerance is negative then subtract so you can understand better by one example here so here one example is there you can take a screenshot if you want let's see in the example here if 525 from 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.0208 then here minimum clearance is equal to whole clearance plus the F clearance which is equal to 0 0.074 mm then after for go gauge the lower limit is whole diameter which is equal to 25 mm and then the size of no gauge is equal to 25.021 mm here fourth one is for goring the dimension will be 25 minus 0 0.02 which is equal to 24.98 and for no goring gauge here the answer will be 24.947 and wear allowance is provided on the go gauge only then after the next topic is from the material science dm row 3 conditions there are four conditions are there first one is the atoms should have same atomic size factor and d less than 15 percent then after the second one is for the valency it should be same then third one is the electronegativity and gap should be less then the fourth one is microstructure should same it means it uh, may be 
any kind of the microstructure like SC or BCC or FCC but it should be same for the, both the atoms these are the conditions for making the compound mixture then after types of defects are there first one is the point defect in which interstitial defect then after substitutional defect then third one is the Frankel defect and the fourth one is Schottky defect in the Frankel defect one atom is missing and in the Schottky defect the pair of atoms is missing from the structure then after the line defects it includes three types first one is the positive then after the negative and third one is the edge dislocation here it is occurred due to mostly during the cold work process then after one more important concept from material science the name of the concept is Gibbs phase rule here the equation for f is equal to c minus b plus z where c is equal to number of components b is equal to number of phases and z is equal to variable which are p and t means pressure and temperature then take one example here at triple point f is equal to 1 minus 3 plus 2 which means the number of components in the water is only one the number of phases are three and the variables are two pressure and temperature so the value of f is zero for the triple point similarly in the vapor or liquid or solid region degree of freedom f is equal to two and on the curve here value of f is equal to one so you can find the degree of freedom from the Gibbs phase rule so these are some basics about the material science and in the gate examination mostly from the material science there may be question of one or two mark only but you have to prepare for this subject also so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and the complete short notes of all the subjects of mechanical engineering is in the description box you can check out the links for any of the subject please share this video to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books now this is the fourth subject of the gate mechanical 2021 the subject name is im and or or you can say that the industrial engineering for this subject we have made total four charts in which we'll cover all the concepts and the syllabus for the industrial engineering subject now in the first chart of the industrial engineering subject will include the forecasting process as well as the assembly line balancing and the last topic is queuing theory now let's begin with the first one which is forecasting before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box the first one which is forecasting forecasting estimates the demand of future and the lead of demand in the future then first one is supply chain management it is there in that the chain will be like supplier then manufacturer then warehouse then distributors then retailers then customers then after the types of forecasting first one is on the basis of time there are three types short term forecasting which is less than one year then long term forecasting which is for greater than three year and the medium term forecasting which is for one to three year then after there is a note there short term forecasting is for training related activities and demand will be function of something like uh, there are five types of demand first one is destable demand then cyclic demand then seasonal demand then fourth one is residual demand and the last one is trending demand 
then on the basis of availability of the data there are two types first one is qualitative forecasting and the second one is quantitative type of forecasting so for the qualitative forecasting there are four types first one is group averaging then after the group consensus then delphi method and the last one is market survey then the second one is quantitative type of forecasting this is also known as time series forecasting now the five types are there first one is simple moving average or rolling average or time horizontal method then the second one is weighted moving average method or rainfall forecasting method then third one is simple exponential smoothing method and fourth one is regression method the fifth one is least square method now for the simple moving average method fi is equal to sigma di by n and for weighted moving average method fi is equal to sigma wi into di upon sigma wn then equation then for the regression method equation will be like sigma yt is equal to a into sigma t plus b into sigma t square and a is equal to sigma y by n minus sigma x upon n then b is equal to n into sigma xy upon n into sigma x square minus sigma x into sigma y upon sigma x square then third one is simple exponential method for this method the equation will be like ft plus 1 is equal to alpha into dt plus 1 minus alpha into ft where you can say that alpha is equal to smoothing constant and value of alpha is equal to 2 by n plus 1 and f2 is equal to alpha into d1 plus 1 minus alpha into f1 here remember that the value of alpha should always in between 0 to 1 then there are two cases are there if f2 is equal to f1 then alpha is equal to 0 and stable demand is there then ft plus 1 is equal to dt then f2 is equal to d1 then alpha is equal to 1 so the error is d1 minus f1 or dt minus ft then the last method is least square method for this method a is equal to sigma y by n then b is equal to sigma xy by sigma x square and y is equal to a plus bx so these are the five methods from this mainly the questions were asked now the second topic is assembly line balancing in this first one is manufacturing point of view in which with the critical time is based on the maximum amount of the product and the second topic is time point of view in which the critical time will be taken as the cycle time or maximum time for the cycle then cycle time ct is equal to greater than station time always remember that cycle time ct is always greater than or equal to station time then line efficiency l is equal to sigma st by ct into n and balance delay bd is equal to 1 minus le then bd is also equal to sigma it upon ct into n where it is equal to ideal time and ct is equal to cycle time then smoothing index si is equal to under root sigma i is equal to 1 to n ct minus st of i square and si should be as low as possible then critical time over bottleneck time eta mean is equal to sigma st by ct then for l is equal to 100 percent bd is equal to 0 percent and eta is minimum note that l is always in the percentage then there is one example there which was asked in the get examination now the third topic is queuing theory in that first point is lambda which is equal to customer arrival rate and it follows the poisons distribution p of t is equal to lambda t raised to n into e raised to minus lambda t by n factorial then pt means for the second one is mu is equal to customer service rate which is assumed to be exponential distribution the equation for that p of t is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus mu t then then the third one is system and calling population system is the place or facility where customer arrive in the order to get the service and its capacity may be finite or infinite then note there lambda less than mu is the condition of steady state 
finite q then fourth one is customer attitude there are three types of attitude there first one is choky second one is barking and third one is reneging in the choking the customer keep changing the queue in the barking customer leave the queue after waiting for long time and in the reneging customer join the queue for the short duration time and after receiving the service customer leave the group then candle notation is there a jam b jam c is equal to d jam e jam f where a is equal to probability distribution for arrival pattern then b is equal to probability distribution for service pattern then c is equal to number of service in the system d is equal to service rule or service model then e is equal to size or capacity of the system and f is equal to size or capacity of the calling population or you can say that input source then after expected waiting time in the system ws is equal to 1 upon mu minus lambda then expected waiting time in the queue is equal to wq is equal to lambda by mu into mu minus lambda and wq is equal to rho into ws then there is one other point is there then traffic intensity or you can say that the system utilization or average utilization or channel efficiency or the clearing ratio will all be same as the rho and rho is equal to lambda by mu so the rho is equal to 70% means 70% of time is waiting time then if the system is idle then probability of zero customer in the system p0 is equal to 1 minus rho and n customer in the system is given by pn is equal to rho raised to n into p0 where 0 less than or equal to n less than or equal to infinity then note there sigma n equal to 0 to infinity pn is equal to 1 then fourth one is length of the system ls or expected number of units in the system ls is equal to lambda upon mu minus lambda and ls is equal to lambda into ws then expected number of units in the length of the queue lq is equal to lambda square upon mu into mu minus lambda and lq is also equal to lambda upon mu into ls and lq is equal to rho into ls then lq is equal to lambda into wq also lq is equal to rho square upon 1 minus rho then variance v is equal to lambda into mu upon lambda minus mu square then average length of non mpq l n eq is equal to mu upon mu minus lambda then tenth one is little slow for stable system lq is equal to lambda into wq is equal to rho into ls and ls is equal to lambda into ws so this is all about the first chart of the industrial engineering in which we have covered the first one is forecasting methods then after the second one is assembly line balancing and at the last queuing theory is there so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy and press the bell icon for the upcoming video if it is useful for your other friends then please share this video who is preparing for the gate examination 2021 thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. Now this is the second chart of the IM and OR in which will include the project management as well as the linear programming problems and at the end of the video the assignment problems are there. Let's begin with the first one which is project management. Now in that there are three charts are there. First one is the bar chart then after the milestone chart and the third one is part or CPM. In the bar chart you can see the diagram here then it is the simplest project management technique and it is used for smaller projects then activities are represented by the horizontal bar and here not applicable for the complex type of work and interdependency is not established in the bar chart then after the second one is milestone chart it is the improvement or bar chart in which at any point of the time it gives the detail about how much fraction of activities are completed 
then third one is bot and cpm we will discuss about it later then there is not for the equation of the part here t is equal to t naught plus 4 tm plus tp by 6 and tp greater than tm greater than t naught where t naught is equal to optimistic time then tp is equal to pessimistic time and tm is equal to most likely time then after the difference between the part and cpm so first one is for the part the full form is program evolution revenue technique and for cpm critical path method now if we talk about the PERT system, in that PERT is event oriented, then control device, then fourth one is applied on new type of project, then project data are not available, then sixth one is based upon the probabilistic approach, and the last one is uncertainty of the results in the PERT system. Then coming towards the CPM system in that, it is critical path method, then activity oriented method then planning device then repetitive type of project then datas are available for this type of system and deterministic approach then after the seventh one is certain results now there are definition for the activity and the event first one is for activity it is used for to complete a project within minimum time with minimum cost it is necessary to divide a project into subparts then these subparts are called as activities and activities consumes resources and time then event it is an instantaneous phenomena and it doesn't consume any resource or time it can be represented by various symbols like circle triangle operation and the nodes then after there are some rules for making the diagrams first one is in the forward pass the time will be maximum and in the backward pass the time will be minimum then first rule is there two activities cannot have same starting and ending point then after the second one is cyclic concepts should be always avoided in making the diagram and third one is dangling should be avoided it means not one open end in the middle so these are some rules then after here EST stands for earliest start time then EFT stands for earlier finished time then after LST stands for late start time and LFT stands for late finish time then here for select calculation if we take an example like two activities here 1 2 and 3 4 then here first one is head event select is equal to LFT minus EFT then head event select is equal to 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 then tail event select LST minus EST TES is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 then after critical path here for networks critical path is equal to maximum time plus network then for project minimum time plus project then one note is there the slack is always zero for the critical path and so you can say that ft is equal to ff is equal to fi is zero for the critical path z is equal to ts minus t upon sigma then here some equations for the variance and the standard deviation as well as the range of the project so first one is for variance v is equal to sigma square which is equal to tp minus t naught by 6 square then for sigma cp which is standard deviation of critical path the equation will be like under root sigma cp square then the range of a project r is equal to t plus or minus 3 into sigma cp then there is a note there overall project duration follows the normal distribution curve then gaussian distribution curve and then bell shape curve here one hemp symmetrical curve is also known as the bell shape curve in im and or subject the examples are very important because based on the example you can understand the different concepts very easily now here is the first example for the finding the value of critical time and the critical path as well as the standard deviation of critical path then the third example is find the value of free float for activity 4 to 6 and the project duration 
then network diagram is given in this example so here first one is HES is equal to 10 minus 10 is equal to 0 then TES is equal to 6 minus 2 is equal to 4 these values of 10 and 2 are given in the diagram then after FT is equal to LFT minus EST minus TIJ which is equal to 10 minus 2 minus 4 is equal to 4 then FF is equal to FT minus HES then FI is equal to FF minus TES here FT stands for total float then FF stands for free float and FI stands for independent float in the example mainly you have to find these three floats then the fourth example is for finding the normal distribution value then here Z and P percentage values are given in the question then you have to use the equation of Z is equal to TS minus T by Sigma CP then the value of TS will be 65.76 then second one is P is equal to 35% and TS will be 58.25 you can understand this example in this way that for 90% probability the work is completed in 65.75 unit at a workstation and for 35% probability the TS means the time at the station is 58.25 then for finding the value of float FT is equal to LFT minus EST minus TIJ, then FF is equal to FT minus HUS, then FT minus LFT minus EFT, then FI is equal to FT minus HUS minus TES, and FF minus LST minus EST, which is also equal to FI. So, from this chapter, mainly the questions were asked based on this equation. Now, there is one more example which was asked in the gate example 2019 so you can calculate this example here in this example you have to use the equation of z is equal to x minus mu by sigma then you have to also use the concept of six sigma for that the probability less than or equal to minus two to one you have to divide into two parts minus two to zero then zero to one so the probability at the end will be 81.85% then after the next topic is crashing in the crashing process costs reduce by reducing the time and crashing always turn on the critical path due to the crashing the TC will always decrease here TC means total cost and direct cost will be increase and indirect cost will be decrease then after in critical path activity having minimum slope should be crashed first this you have to remember because you have to use this in the questions then after direct cost and indirect cost are there then you can see the diagram here for the direct cost and example like then after cost slope is equal to cc minus cn upon tn minus tc where cc is equal to crash cost then cn is equal to normal cost then tn is equal to normal time and tc is equal to crash time then for the indirect cost it is the cost not directly involved in the completion of an activity but is required for safe and timely completion of project then the curve is there for the indirect cost here TC is equal to minimum activity duration to which an activity can be compressed by increasing the resources and hence by increasing the direct cost. Here TC is equal to DC plus slope of the activities. You can check the example here. This diagram is very important for the exam in which the TC, IDC and DC were represented now coming towards the linear programming problem so the requirements are to find the objective in the terms of function then constraint or subjective equation then LPP is used for optimization of limited resources when there are alternative solutions possible for the given problem 
width and all the constraints should be linear and rules in linear programming are first one is law of certainty then after the law of proportionality then the third one is law of addition or you can say that the summation then the fourth one is law of continuity or you can say that the divisibility then after there are types of solutions are there first one is unique solution in which the number of zeros in cj minus zj row is equal to the number of basic variables then for the second one multiple solutions in which number of zeros in cj minus zj row is greater than number of basic variable then third one is unbounded solution in which if there is no least minimum ratio then it is called as the unbalanced solution or you can say that the unbounded solution then after fourth one is degenerated solution tie in the minimum ratio is also covered in the degenerated solution then if one of the basic variable RHF is zero at optimal point then it is called as degenerated solution here you can see the example there and here note that degenerated solution always on the axis then the last one is no solution for which the m remains positive here you can see the first example in which binding constant equation is given like maximum z is equal to 3x1 plus 9x2 subjected to these values then you have to find the zc and zd so first of all you have to draw the diagram based on the values are given then after the area under the curve it gives you the points of c and d then put the values in the equation of z is equal to 3x1 plus 9x2 so there are two points are zc and zd then after the second example is for maximum z equal to 3x1 plus 2x2 and x1 less than or equal to 4 then you can make the diagram like this one and the values are 18 18 12 and 18 here note that redundant constraint equation in which the constraint which doesn't becomes the part of boundary making feasible region is called as the redundant constraint equation then inclusion or extrusion of such constraint doesn't have any effect of final optimal solution of the given problem here you can see in the diagram that the upper curve is known as the redundant constraint because it doesn't affect on the final solution here the third example is there for the degenerated solution in which you can see that the solution is on the axis fourth example is for no solution then there is one other example for the duality concept from that the questions were asked in the gate 2019 then the final topic is assignment problem and it is normally used in the job sequencing process so here the Hungarian method or you can say that the Hungarian algorithm or degenerated solution or square matrix for that one method is there which is used in the assignment problem. Let's see Hungarian method by one example here. If there is a matrix is given here of 3 by 4 then first you have to add one dummy column here in the first step then make the first step is row minimization. In that you have to deduct the minimum row from the all the rows then after the column minimization process in which you have to deduct or minimize the minimum column from all the columns and then after in the third step you have to calculate the number of zeros is equal to the number of row or column if not possible then minimum element from all the elements select that element and subtract it from all the other elements and add it at the intersection of the lines then here one is minimum element so we'll 
deduct it from all the above element and add it at the intersection here two zeros are intersection so at two places we add the value of one then after once again calculate the number of zeros which is equal to number of rows or columns then the answer is optimum similarly for the maximization problem first we have to minimize the maximum value from all the other elements and then after the problem will be like the minimization as the above so this is all about the second chart of the assignment problem in which we have briefly discuss all the important terms and important formulas if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy and press the bell icon for the upcoming video if it is useful for your other friends then please share this video who is preparing for the gate examination 2021 thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. Now this is the third chart of the subject IM and OR in which will include the transportation problem as well as the plant layout and that after the job sequencing at the end the quality engineering is there. Let's begin with the first one which is transportation problems. We are providing the short notes for the different subjects of the mechanical engineering for GATE 2021. So if you are new to our channel then please subscribe for the upcoming videos. And till now we have completed the three subjects. The links for that videos are in description box. In the transportation problems or you can say that the transportation models. First question in your mind that what is the need for these models. As you all know LPP which is linear programming problems is dealing with the issue of shipping commodities from multiple sources to multiple destinations. So the objective of the transportation models are to determine the shipping schedule that minimizes the total shipping cost while satisfying supply and demand constraints. And here TM is a comparative tool in the business decision making. Then after main applications of the transportation models are for the location decisions then after the production planning, then capacity planning and the transshipment. Then there are major assumptions which are taken in the transportation models. First one is items are homogeneous. Then second one is shipping cost per unit is same. Then the third one is only one route is from place of the shipment to the destination. Now there are some notes which are very important for the gate examination point of view. First one is the number of decision variable which is equal to m cross n and also you can say that the number of dependent point. Then second note is if total demand is not equal to total supply then number of demand is equal to m. Then third one is number of supply point or you can say that the number of constraint or number of basic variable all is equal to m plus n minus 1. Here the fourth note is there. Then fourth one is number of basic variable plus number of non basic variable is equal to number of dependent variables. Then fifth one is for non degenerate problem allocated cell is equal to m plus n minus 1 where allocated cell is equal to number of basic cells. Then after for degenerate problems number of basic cell is not equal to m plus n minus 1. Then after Modi method is used for basic feasible solution of non-degenerate problems. Mostly in every example Modi method is used. Then after in degeneracy you have to add the epsilon or some values at the non-basic cell having the least cost and which do not make the closed loop that you have to remember. Then after if demand is not equal to the supply then add dummy row or the dummy column and a penalty is equal to difference between two minimum cost. Then the last note is for the LCM method for two equal list cost cells you have to give the priority the cell having the more demand. Then there are five methods for the transportation models. 
It can be classified in two ways. First, for the initial basic visible solution, there are three methods are there. First one is northwest corner method. Then after second one is least cost method, and the third one is the Vogel's approximation method. Then for optimal solution, there are two methods are there. First one is the Modi method, and the second one is stepping stone method. And due to we are making the videos of short notes only we are not here explaining the methods in detail so if you want to learn this method then the videos are available in the youtube you can search out there then coming towards the next chapter which is plant layout basically there are four types of the plant layout first one is product or line layout then after the process layout, then the fixed position layout and the last one is cellular layout. Now for the first layout which is product or line layout, the efficiency will be more than high quantity, than mass production, than less waiting time and PPC will be easy for this layout. Then efficiency is also you can say here the line efficiency is there. Then in the second layout which is the process layout or functional layout the variety of the products is more in this layout then non-standard products then after automation is not possible then efficiency is lower than the product layout then after high scale main power is required then PPC is very difficult for this layout then third layout is fixed position layout here the product is made at the place or the location of the requirement and the examples are like wagons, boilers, sheep, big weapons, aircrafts, etc. Then the fourth layout is cellular layout. It includes the FMS, your FMS stands for flexible manufacturing system and cellular layout is the building block of the FMS. In this layout batch production can be done cellular layout you can say that it is the combination of product layout and the process layout because by this layout you can get the more line efficiency as well as more variety of products then after lean manufacturing system before that we have completed six chapters of IMNOR the link for that videos are in decision box now it is used for reducing the wastage of the material then transportation as well as inventory and the machining delay time then after in this process JIT means just in time process which used and it is pool system there then Kanban system is also used for feedback need of inventory and can means visual and ban means signal then after the visuals are P Kanban and signals are C Kanban also called. Now there are two types of systems. First one is pool system and second one is push system. In the pool systems after the requirement of the customer the orders are placed and in the push system without the requirement of the customers the products are pushed in the market and note that the cheat is pool system is there because when the requirement of the customers are there then just in time the process is used and the manufacturing is done one note is there which is important for the examination if we talk about the quantity point of view then job then after batch production then after mass production and then after the continuous production the quantity will increase and if we talk about the variety of the products then continuous products then mass products then base products and then after the job products the variety will increase then the full form of craft is computerized relative allocation of facility technique and full form of LDAP is automated layout design problem techniques then after the fourth one is the facility layout technique chart is LDAP and it is used for relationship. These four nodes were asked in the gate examination in the questions like 
the full form of the respective terms then here the important term is there BEA means the break even analysis in that first one is BEP means break even point for break even analysis the graph is here you can see that there are FC, TVC, TC and TRC are represented so when the total cost and total revenue cost are intersect each other then the point is known as the QBEP means break even point at break even point no loss no profit situation is there after that the profit will generate it here one example is also there for finding the value of BEP see that y1 is 100 plus 2x and y2 is 200 plus x then draw the diagram then at x is equal to 100 the line 1 and 2 are intersect each other then the point x is equal to 100 is known at the break even point and at BEP total cost is equal to total revenue cost then after some equations are there first one is contribution is equal to P minus VC then contribution of margin QX is equal to TRC minus TVC then marginal cost MC is equal to PQ minus VQ then CMR is equal to TRC minus TVC upon TRC then CMR is also equal to PQX minus VQX upon PQX then after the quantity Q is equal to FC upon P minus VC where Q at BEP and CMR is equal to 1 minus VC upon P then sixth one is break even quantity BES means break even sales which is equal to P into Q at BEP and BES is also equal to FC upon 1 minus VC by P then profit is equal to TRC minus TC which is equal to PQ minus FC plus Q into VC and profit is also equal to minus FC plus P minus VC into QX then for profit QX should greater than QBEP and TRC should greater than TC then after some equation for the financial evolution of project and the objective of the financial evolution of project is potential for earning and impact of an inflection then effect of risk first one is the concept of fixed deposit for that the equation will be like f is equal to p into 1 plus i raised to n where f is equal to future value p is equal to present value n is equal to number of year and i is equal to interest rate per year then corresponding factor for single payment is equal to 1 plus i raised to n gem 1 then present value factor for future payment is equal to 1 upon 1 plus i raised to n then after rearing deposit rd for that f is equal to a into 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 upon i then a is equal to f into i upon 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 where corresponding factor is equal to 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 and uh, nvt or equal payment series a is equal to the equation will be like f into i upon 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 then sinking factor or deficit factor is equal to 1 upon 1 plus i raised to n minus 1 and the last one is the loan concept in which p is equal to a into 1 plus i raised to n where n is negative and divided by i then a is equal to p into i upon 1 minus 1 plus i raised to minus n then capital recovery factor is equal to i upon 1 minus 1 plus i raised to minus n then coming towards the job sequencing in this process the Gannett chart or Johnson's algorithm is very important for the examination so there are mainly three to four types of questions were asked from this chapter the second type of questions which is based on the Jackson's algorithm for that two conditions are there first one is minimum 
of m1 is greater than that of maximum of m2 and the other one is minimum of m3 greater than or equal to maximum of m2 from these two conditions if one of the conditions is satisfied then you can use the jackson's algorithm then after n job one machine questions there are three methods are there first one is spt then edd and the last one is cr method here spt stands for shortest processing time then edd stands for earliest due date rule and cr stands for critical ratio here note that in the EDD, the jobs will be sequenced in increasing order of the due date and for critical ratio, the CR is equal to due date minus today's date upon days needed to complete the work or complete the job which is equal to time remaining upon the work remaining and CR greater than 1 then the job is ahead of schedule, then CR is equal to 1, then job is on schedule and CR less than 1, then job is behind the schedule. So these are some notes there. Then list slack is equal to slack is equal to due date minus processing time. Some important terms are there. First one is the job flow time. We can say that the time from starting time to the completing time of the job. Then second one is the average JFT means total JFT divided by the number of job. Then MOS is equal to PQX minus PQ at BAP then divided by PQX and the average number of job in the system which is equal to total job flow time upon MST or you can say that the elapsed time. Here MST stands for max span time. Then after the lateness is equal to positive which means positive is a task will complete after the due date and if the negative lateness is there then before due date is there which is desirable for the process or for the job then after the last chapter is quality engineering from this chapter, mostly the one marks questions will be asked in the CAT examination. First one is value engineering. It is a function oriented systematic team approach and study and it provides the value in product or service. Then value is equal to function proposed or you can say that the utility proposed. Then value engineering is a productive approach and done before the product formation. Then the second one is the value analysis and after production value addition is known as the value analysis. Here it is the reactive approach and it is done in the post production process. Then total quality management EQM is there. It is based on the top management then fully involved then strong customer orientation then after systematic problem solving approach. And then the QFD is there quality function deployment then premium customer is there then fulfill customers requirements and voice of customers into design specification then after methods of identify the critical customer attributes to create a specific link between the customer attributes and the design specification then the meaning of Kazan is continuous improvement then after the most important topic is there which is Six Sigma and the diagram for this topic you can see here then the equation of f of x is equal to 1 upon sigma into under root 2 pi into e raised to minus 1 upon z into x minus mu by sigma square then for plus or minus sigma the percentage will be like 68 percent then plus or minus 2 sigma percentage will be 95 percent and for plus or minus 3 sigma the percentage will be 99.7 percent and there are some methodologies first one is DMAIC it stands for define measure analysis improve and control then the second one is DMADV means 
define measure analysis and design verify then dm at d o v stands for design measure analysis design optimize and verify then dsss stands for developing six sigma software then cfpm stands for cross function process mapping then after the lean manufacturing is there it is an op operational system that maximize the value addition and eliminate the waste in the entire process which is called the lean manufacturing and it reduces the waste of first one is over production then after inventory then after motion then waiting or dwell time then after over processing and the last one is transportation then it based on the japanese method which focused on the 3m where first m stands for mura which is wastage then second one is m for mura which is stands for inconsistent then the last one is m for muri which is for unreasonableness or or burden then jit stands for just in time process which is full system implemented first ever by toyota company then after the last term is process capability in that topic first one is usl which stands for upper specification limit then lsl which stands for lower specification limit and cpk stands for process capability index then pp stands for process performance and ppk stands for process performance index then the equations are there first one is cp is equal to usl minus lsl upon 6 into sigma then cpk is equal to minimum of usl minus x bar upon 3 into sigma or x bar minus lsl upon 3 into sigma then pp is equal to usl minus lsl upon 6 and ppk is equal to minimum of lsl minus mu upon 3 into sigma star then mu minus lsl upon 3 into sigma star then mu stands for population mean then sigma stands for sample standard deviation and sigma star stands for population standard deviation here in the pp you have to consider the value of sigma star so this is all about the third chart of the im and or subject in which we have consider the first one is the transportation problem then after the plant layout then after the job sequencing and at the end the quality engineering is there we have consider only the important formula for understanding the concepts you can calculate some more examples based on the concept for your practice and if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in description box. Let's begin with the first one which is quality control and this quality control some concepts of this chapter we have discussed earlier in the third chart of IIM and OR. so the link for that chart is given in the description box now let's continue from the third chart here the first topic is there are some seven quality control tools are there first one is histogram then after the pareto analysis then after the cause and effect diagram or you can say that the isikawa or fishbone diagram then fourth one is defect concentration diagram then fifth one is check sheet diagram then sixth one is scatter diagram and seventh one is control chart so from these seven tools the questions may be asked like which is not the tool for the quality control so you have to remember these seven tools then after let's see one by one some diagrams here first one is fishbone diagram or you can say that the isikawa diagram or herringbone diagram or cause and effect diagram 
it is used for identifying the possible causes for a problem. Then this diagram is created first ever by the Kaura Ishikawa. Then after the next diagram is scatter diagram. It is similar to the line diagrams in which uses the dots to represent the individual pieces of data and then this scatter diagram is first ever invented by the René Descartes then histogram is for accurate representation of the distribution of numerical data and the first step is known as the bin or bucket then it is in the form of the bars so it is also known as the bar chart and the inventor of the diagram is Carl Pearson then control chart is there in there two types are there first one is variable continuous distribution and the second one is attributes so in the variable continuous distribution there are two types first one is x bar chart and the second one is r bar chart here you can say x bar chart is also as min and r bar chart for range then x bar and r bar both the chart the normal distribution next one is attributes in that two types are there first one is p chart and the another is c chart here p for the proportion defective or you can say that the fraction defective and p chart follows the binomial distribution then C chart for count of defect or defect position distribution and C chart follows the mu or exponential distribution. Then after the next one is 5S technique which is Japanese technique and it results into the well organized workplace with complete and visual controls and order and key step in this technique is workplace improvement then five steps are there first one is short or you can say that the Siri then second one is set in order or you can say that the C tone then third one is shine for C show then fourth one is standardize for Siketsu and the fifth one is sustain for Shitsuke so you have to remember these five terms from the 5s technique and talking about the reliability it is the ability of the product to perform its main function for a specified period of time and reliability in the series for that the equation of r is r system is equal to r1 into r2 into r3 into r4 into rn then in the parallel the equation will be like r system is equal to 1 minus in bracket 1 minus r into 1 minus r2 up to the 1 minus rn so from this equation you can note down the example here and response time r of t is equal to e raised to minus lambda t and f of t is equal to 1 minus r of t here f of t for the failure time then bathtub curve is also there the diagram for the bathtub curve you have to remember that in the first stage the warranty phase is there in the second stage the catastrophic failure is occur and in the third stage wear out failure is occur now the next topic is ppc which means the production planning and control here first one is routing for the loading here it is the assignment of the work either to the individual or to the workstation without specifying the time of start of real product is called as the loading and then after the balancing is there it is the process of ensuring that the workload on different workstation remains same then scheduling it take care of the time associated with the product at the different workstation and per 10 cpm are common scheduling technique then in the dispatch it is the execution function of ppc this function actual production activity to start concerned with a smooth introduction work on the soft floor 
basically it is the execution of two ideas mrp1 and mrp2 method are there first one is mrp1 which is the method for the material requirement planning and it is push system and dependent on the demand the purpose of the mrp is to ensure that the materials are available at right quantity at right time so that finished product can be completed according to the master production schedule and in the mrp2 the manufacturing resource planning is there then method for effective planning of all the resources of the manufacturing company and it's not excessively a software function but the management of people skills requiring a dedication and to database accuracy and sufficient computer resources vd analysis is there v stands for vital item e stands for essential item and d stands for desirable item now the next topic is work study the analysis of a job product for the purpose of finding the preferred method for doing it and also determining the standard time to perform then this job comes under the domain of work study and work study is used for calculating the standard time and advantages will be like it helps in a smooth production with minimum interruption and it helps to reduce the cost of the product by eliminating the waste and unnecessary operations then there are some modes are there first one is o for operation d for delay aero for transportation and triangle for storage or low triangle you can say that then square for the inspection the symbols were mostly asked in the gate examination then Gilbert has given total 18 symbols and it calls the Thurbling symbols and it is used for the recording then eight steps in the work study is there first one is select then record then examine then develop then measure then define then install and maintain then types of chart are there first one is operation chart then flow process chart then multiple activity chart the last one is the simo chart in the operation chart the idea about the operation and the major activity then in the flow process chart the movement of the main material and equipment are recorded to examine then the third one is multiple activity chart which is used for record activity of main and machine and in the simo chart the full form of simo will be like simultaneous motion chart and this is the chart of the micro motion study and it is used for short duration then movements are recorded against the time scale by using micrometer or wing meter and one wing is equal to 1 by 2000 minute then two types of diagrams are there first one is flow diagram and second one is string diagram in the flow diagram it shows the path of main material and equipment on a scale model of factory and in the string diagram strings are placed on a scale model of working area by which the frequent movement between the different points can be studied then density of strings is equal to idea about the frequency of movement and examples are like ergonomic now the next one is work sampling in this process the person is continuously observing and he might become too sensitive or alert then data obtained by work sampling pl is equal to z into sigma p then sigma p is equal to under root p into 1 minus p upon n and p into l is equal to z into under root p into 1 minus p upon n here p for observation function l for level of accuracy z for factor related to the confidence level or you can say that the cl then z is equal to 1 for cl is equal to 68% or plus or minus 1 sigma then z equal to 2 for cl is equal to 95% or plus or minus 2 sigma then z equal to 3 for cl is or plus or minus 3 sigma 
okay then after the next topic is pmts here pmts stands for predetermined motion time standard and in the pmts each activity is divided in such a way that the size of each element is more than 0.04 minute stopwatch is not used because one time the questions were asked in the examination that if stopwatch is used in the pmts or not it's further divided into three categories first one is the method time measurement then after the basic motion time study and the third one is work factor system here the time study is not a part of the pmts two examples are there for the above equations in which we have to use the p into l is equal to z into sigma p then you can find the value of n similarly in the second example you have to find the value of l your l for accuracy work measurement is there it is the application of techniques designed to establish a standard time for skilled or qualified worker and first one is mos which is for mean observation time then the second one is standard time is equal to nt plus percentage allowance of standard time and mot is equal to efficiency into mot here one example which was asked in the 2005 you have to use the equation of nt is equal to rf into average here rf is equal to rating factor now this is the most important topic from the im and or subject for the gate examination point of view which is inventory control first ever the definition is there inventory is termed as stock on the hand at a given point of time which may be held for the purpose of a later use or sell then total cost is equal to the purchase cost plus total inventory cost here in the inventory cost there are three cost are there first one is total holding cost then total ordering cost and the third one is back order cost or shortage cost then after the classification of inventory four types are there first one is transit or pipeline inventory which can not service while in transportation then the second one is safety or buffer stock which reserves the stock came through out the year and in critical demand then third one is seasonal inventory the demand for this inventory item changes with the seasonal variation then fourth one is anticipation inventory it built up due to the some anticipation in demand in the future because of government policies changes here note that dependent demand calculated by mrp method and independent demand calculated by the forecasting methods then after review system is there two types of review system first one is q system and second one is p system now for the q system fixed order system is this then reorder or level system and two bin system then safety stock is not required and a class items is there in the q system and safety stock is zero for the q system then for the p system fixed period system then periodic review system then safety stock is not is needed then suitable for b and c class system then inventory review systems are there in that first one is fixed order system and the second one is fixed period system here for the fixed order system size of the order is fixed but the time of the order is variable and in the fixed period system the time of the order is fixed and the size of the order is variable then abc analysis this is also very important here by pareto principle or 8020 rule is also used in the abc analysis the diagram you can see that in the inventory control technique abc analysis is mostly used here product a which is more careful than accurate forecasting and frequent order 
of inventory. Then for product B, the more trade control and product C, less control, less accurate and bulk purchasing for the third type of system. Here the percentage of the A type is 10% for B type, 20% and for C type, 70% is there. Here the diagram is for the cost versus the percentage of inventory. From the diagram you can understand that for A type of products, the percentage of inventory is 10% and the cost is around the 70%. For B type, the inventory is 20% and cost is 70 to 90 percent and for the C type the inventory is 70 percent then after the inventory model and calculation first one is Wilson Harris model for inventory without the shortage here TC for total cost TIC for total inventory cost TOC for total ordering cost or total procurement cost or total setup cost then THC for total holding cost or shortage cost then R for annual demand Q for quality to be ordered then R by Q is equal to number of order in one year and Q by R is equal to time between two order in one year or you can say that the cycle time in one year then CU is equal to unit cost or purchase cost then CO is equal to ordering cost per order then CH is equal to holding cost per unit per year and LT for lead time, ROL for reorder level and Q average for average quantity then CT for cycle time. Here you can see that lead time is equal to the interval before which the order should be placed so that the material will be received on time and inventory corresponding to lead time is equal to reorder level. By a similar triangle from the diagram you can see that Q by CT is equal to ROL by LT. This is the third equation which is useful. Then TPC is equal to CU into R. Then total procurement cost TOC is equal to C0 into R by Q. Then total holding cost which is equal to CH into Q average. That means THC is equal to CH into Q by 2. Then TC is equal to CU into R plus CU into R by Q plus CH into Q by 2. Then TIC is equal to C0 into R by Q plus CH into Q by 2. Then to minimize the total inventory cost, Q is equal to under root 2 into R into C0 by CH. Then TIC at Q at EOQ which is equal to under root 2 into R into C0 into CH. Here at EOQ, remember that THC is equal to TOC. Here note that at EOQ, TIC is minimum but TC may or may not be minimum. And optimum order quantity, it is the quantity at which the total cost is minimum. These are some equations based on which every year the examples may be asked in the great examination from the inventory control. So there are some examples are there first one is for finding the EOQ then after for TIC at Q is equal to EOQ you have to find the value of Q in the third example the percentage increase you have to find then for the fourth example you have to find the value of ROL and use the equation of Q by ZT is equal to ROL by LT then for the fifth type you have to find the value of demand which is annual demand in which you have to use the equation of EOQ is equal to under root 2 into R into C0 upon CH. So this is all about the fourth chart of the IM and OR subject in which we have covered all the syllabus of the IM and OR subject. If you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy and press the bell icon for the upcoming video if it is useful. For your other friends, then please share this video who is preparing for the GATE examination 2021. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. 
so recently iit bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches so according to the new syllabus uh, we have made these charts in our base possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books now this is the 10th subject of the gate mechanical 2021 the name of the subject is engineering mechanics this is the final subject of our short notes as well as the syllabus of the gate mechanical 2021 so let's begin one by one here in the starting let's see one example which is very simple but very useful in the examination if a block is at rest and the force is applied of 10 newton then find the friction here f max is equal to mu s into n but here the f max is equal to 30 newton but the condition is p should less than or equal to mu s into n so here in the example the value of P which is given as 10 Newton is less than that of F max. So at P which is equal to 10 Newton the block starts to move. Then after the Lamis theorem is there A upon sin alpha is equal to B upon sin beta is equal to C upon sin theta. Then it is also known as the sine law. Then after the next one is the cosine law a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos alpha then after the parallelogram law r square is equal to b square plus q square plus 2 into pq cos theta and then alpha is equal to q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta then after very knowns theorem it states that the moment of a force about a point is same as the vector addition of the moments of components of force about the same point then the tension is always away from the point inside the body then after some equations which are useful t1 by t2 is equal to e dash to mu theta here t1 is equal to tight side and t2 is equal to slack side then theta is equal to contact angle and phi is equal to tan inverse mu then after some more important equations which are basics but you just have to go through it once v square is equal to u square plus 2s then s is equal to ut plus half t square and s is equal to t by 2 into u plus v then sigma f is equal to ma similarly that of the omega f square is equal to omega naught square plus 2 into alpha theta then omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha t then theta is equal to omega naught t plus half into alpha t square and theta is equal to t by 2 into omega t plus omega naught then sigma t is equal to i into alpha then h max is equal to u square into sin square theta divided by 2g then t is equal to 2u by g then capital t is equal to 2u into sin theta by g then h max is equal to u square by 2g and v is equal to under root 2gh r is equal to u square into sine 2 theta by g then r max is equal to u square by g then time to reach the top t is equal to u by g then total flight time t is equal to 2u by g then h star is equal to h bar plus ig into h bar then h star is equal to h bar plus ig sin square theta by h bar and ig is equal to i naught minus h square then for capital theta is theta is less than 90 degree h is equal to 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd then h is equal to minus 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd for capillary 4 and theta greater than 180 degree then here a t is equal to r into alpha and a n is equal to omega square into r here a t and a n are the accelerations then after a is equal to under root n square plus a t square here a n is equal to g into cos alpha or g into cos beta and a t is equal to g into sin alpha or g into sin beta then after for rolling without slipping a is equal to 2 by 3 into g sin theta for cylinder 
and a is equal to 5 by 7 into g sin theta 4 sphere then for slipping without rolling a is equal to g into sin theta which is same for the cylinder and sphere then after for linear rolling here first equation for the sphere f is equal to 2 by 5 into ma and a is equal to 5 by 7 into p by m then f is equal to 2 by 7 into p then for cylinder a is equal to 2 by 3 into p by m then f is equal to p by 3 and f is equal to m by 2 into a t here a t is equal to r alpha then here coefficient of restitution first one is the elastic impact e is equal to 1 then vt minus v1 is equal to u1 minus u2 then e is equal to v2 minus v1 divided by u1 minus u2 then for plastic impact e is equal to 0 so v2 is equal to v1 then here if a ball drop from the top to ground then the equation of distance traveled by the ball before coming to rest d is equal to h into 1 plus e square divided by 1 minus e square and if ball thrown upward from the ground then distance traveled by the ball before coming to rest is d is equal to 2 into h upon 1 minus e square then after the important concept from the engineering mechanics which is truss if 2j is equal to m plus 3 then the determinant or perfect or stable structure is there then if 2j is greater than m plus 3 then unstable structure is there and if 2j less than m plus 3 then indeterminate or all stable structure is there here j is equal to the number of joint and m is equal to number of links so there are two examples for the structure here in the first one m is equal to 4 and j is equal to 4 then by equation the value of 2j is greater than that of the m plus 3 so the structure is unstable and in the second one m is equal to 8 and j is equal to 5 so here the overstable stable structure is there then there are three more examples from the truss here you can take a screenshot if you want in the first one use the sign law and in the second one you have to find the RAC and RAB and in the third one you have to find the value of RBC this is all about the subject engineering mechanics from which we have completed only the important formulas and the links for the complete short notes of all the subject of mechanical engineering which are in description box you can check out any subject from the description box if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and please share these short notes to all your other friends who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference book so in the first chart of the production technology will include that the basics of the production technology as well as all the types of the casting processes now the first and the most important that is the basic definition of the casting it is the oldest method of the manufacturing in which the matter is poured into the preformed cavity and after the solidification the casting part is taken out. The place at which the casting is done is known as the foundry. And there are main two types of casting. First one is the sand casting and the second one is basal casting. Here you can see that the first one is the sand casting. In sand casting, main important one point is there that is the aspiration effect or you can say that the breathing effect. 
It is the effect that negative pressure created at the cross-section areas of the sprue in the starting, due to which the molten metal results into the gaseous defect, which is known as the breathing effect, or you can say that the aspiration effect. Then after the steps involved in the sand casting. So here you can see that there is the diagram for that steps. First one is the mold making process, then the mold, then casting, then inspection, then machining and then the final product. Then there is the diagram for the casting all the terms. There are two types of risers, first one is the side riser and the other one is the top risers. In the side riser cavity at one side of casting and in the top riser cavity at top of the casting. Then runner. In the runner, the channel which feeds the molten metal from a sprue bottom to the mold cavity. Then shrinkages. First stage is, there are three stages of shrinkage. First stage is liquid shrinkage, second one is solidification and third one is solid shrinkage. Here first stage of shrinkage is greater than the third stage is greater than the second stage. Then time required for the riser is greater than time required for the casting. And F net is equal to rho 1 minus rho 2 into mu into g, where F is equal to rho vg which is Bayan's force. Then for pure metal, Tm is equal to Tf and for alloy, Tm greater than Tf. Here Tm for the melting temperature and Tf for the freezing temperature. So these are the very basic definitions but it's very important in the examination because it were asked more than 2 to 3 times in the gate examination. Now then after, Corino's equation is there. So the equation for that is Ts is equal to K into V by A square where K is equal to solidification constant then V is equal to volume of the molten metal in the respective cavity and A is and A is equal to area of the molten metal. Then M is equal to V by A which is equal to modulus. So you can write that T is equal to K into M square. Then here one note is there TR greater than TC and MR greater than MC for casting only. And, and one more is there and vr is equal to 3 into vsr and q is equal to av which is equal to a into under root 2gh so vr is equal to 3 into vsr was asked three times in the examination then after for solidification time there are main two important terms are here that time required for the cylinder which means tcy is equal to 1.17 into time required for the square so TCY is equal to 1.17 into T square and TC means the time required for the circular pipe is equal to 1.17 into time required for the square pipe. These two equations are valid for side riser and top riser both. So you can say that in the cil so you can say that in the cylindrical riser the time required is more than that of square riser. So, and cylindrical riser is more used. Then coming towards the methods of riser design. The first one is the Keynes method. In that method, freezing ratio x is equal to mr by mc which is equal to e by a of r upon v by a of c which is equal to a by v of c upon a by v of r. Here x always greater than 1 because as you all know mr greater than mc. Then volumetric ratio y is equal to vr upon vc and x is equal to a upon y minus b plus c. Then ts is equal to 1 upon beta square alpha into v by a square where beta is equal to geometric constant and alpha is equal to thermal diffusivity. Then there is the graph of the points which are plotted on the y by x graph. So you can see that the points under the graph is represents the defective casting and the points above the graph represents the sound casting. Similarly, for the Newell's method, the equation will be like x is equal to l plus w by t, where l is equal to length, then w is equal to width, and t is equal to thickness. Then y is equal to vr by vc, 
and the graph for that is there also. Then the third and the final method is the modulus method. MR is equal to greater than MR greater than or equal to 1.20 into MC for sound casting. Modulus for riser is greater than that of modulus of casting, which is 20% more. Then for hollow cylinder casting, x is equal to pi into d0 plus d1 plus h upon d0 minus d1. Then t is equal to d0 minus d1 upon 2 and l is equal to pi into d0 plus pi into di by 2 and w is equal to h. So you can put that value in the equation of x is equal to l plus w by t. Here note is there distance between the riser and the end of the castings is less than or equal to 4.5 into t and distance between the two riser is less than or equal to 40. So these are the main two important notes which you have to remember. Now coming towards the pattern, so it is the replica of the part being casted with same modification in size. Then types of patterns are there, first one is a single piece pattern which is used for the very simple casting, then second one is split pattern or two piece pattern which is used for the complex part and withdrawal of patterns. Then third one is gated pattern which is used for the small components in the mass production, then fourth one is cop and deck pattern which is used for big size casting. Then fifth one is match plate pattern which is used for the piston rings, small size casting and the precision casting. In mass production match plate pattern is used. Then sixth one is loose piece pattern which is used in the parts with the internal webs are produced. Then seventh is sweep pattern which is used for the 2D pattern used to make 3D casting. In sweep pattern, the 2D pattern used to make the 3D casting. The examples are like cone, bells of temples. Then eighth one is. Then after, eighth one is follow board pattern, which is used for the thin section or overhanging section in the casting. Then there is the note that padding is the extra material of the casting then to provide the uniform cooling rate inoculants and the paddings and chills and insulating sleeves are used then sand molar is used to mix and prepare the molding sand and UTM is used for testing green stand here you can see that the first one is the refractoriness it is the ability to withstand the high temperature of the molten metals it should be high for the casting process then green strength is equal to capacity of the containing moisture. Then green strength is the capacity of containing moisture and green compressive strength which is in the range of 130 to 160 kilopascal. And green shear strength is equal to 10 to 40 kilopascal. Third one is the dry strength. In sand, as the moisture evaporated at the same time, it should retain the mold cavity and withstand the metallostatic force. Then dry compressive strength which is in the range of 120 to 140 kilopascal and dry shear strength which is in the range of 30 to 80 kilopascal. Then fourth one is the hot strength which is the strength for hold the shape of the mold cavity after all the moisture is eliminated. Then fifth one is permeability. The gas involving capability of the molding sand. Then permeability, then permeability number is equal to Pn which is equal to mu h upon P and T. Then Pn is equal to mu into h upon P A T, where P is equal to pressure, A is equal to cross sectional area, T is equal to time, H is equal to height and V is equal to volume. Then Pn is equal to 3007.2. Then sixth one is Then sixth one is grain fineness number. So GFN is equal to the average grain size distribution of a given molding and GFN 
and as the GFN is high, the grain size will low. Then seventh one is the flowability. It is the ability to flow over and around the pattern. Then eighth one is the adhesiveness, which is equal to bond between the two different materials. For example, mold sand and the flask, and for example, mold sand and the pattern. So between the two different materials, the bond is there, which is known as the adhesiveness. Then cohesiveness is the homogeneous type bond between the two same materials or two sand grains. Then tenth one is the toughness which is the ability to resist the impact and soak loads of the molding sand. Then eleventh is collapsibility which is equal to ability to resist the metal contraction. Now moving towards the design of getting system. So here you can see that two designs are there first one is the design of the top gate and the second one is the bottom gate in the both the type the main equations are very important because from that equation the questions were asked so for the top gate vg is equal to v3 is equal to under root 2 ghd and tf is equal to filling time which is equal to m into hm upon ag into vg where m represent for the mold and g for the gate then for the design of bottom gate, Vg is equal to V3 is equal to under root 2G into HT minus H. Then Tf is equal to 2 into HM upon Ag into root 2G into under root HT minus under root HT minus HM. So these are the main equations you have to note down. Now the ratio for the sprue, runner and ingot is the 1 gem, 4 gem, 4 for the NPGS system and 2 gem, 2 gem, 1 for the PGS system. Then there are two types of solidification, first one is the skin forming and the second one is dendritic growth. In the skin forming, it takes place either in the pure metal or the alloys having eutectic composition and it moves towards to center layer by layer and in dendritic growth, it takes place when the mushy zone takes place during the solidification of the alloy. And in non-uniform solidification, to provide the uniform solidification, chills are used. Then types of sand, the composition of the sand mold. Generally, in the composition of sand mold, silica sand is 70 to 85 percent, clay is 10 to 20 percent, water is 3 to 6 percent, and additives are 1 to 6 percent. And additives are 1 to 6 percent. Then for the green sand, 2 to 6 percent of the moisture for dry sand, evaporated or moisture sand, and the facing sand is near mold cavity. Then facing sand is used near mold cavity and more clay with silica. Then there are additives used in molding sand. So first one is the wood floor which is used to improve the green strength and the collapsibility which is used to resist the metal contraction then second one is the starch and the dextrin which is used to organic blinders to improve the skin hardness then resistance to deformation then third one is the iron oxide and the aluminum oxide Fe2O3 and Al2O3 which is used to improve the hard strength of the casting of the green sand mold then fourth one is the coal dust, sea coal or silica floor which is used to improve the surface finish and the resistance to metal penetration. So these are the points which were asked more than 3 to 4 times in the examination in the form of the table. That means you have to choose the respective additives. Then types of molding technique. There are four techniques are there. First one is the bench molding, second one is the pit molding, third one is the four third one is the floor molding and fourth one is the machine molding so here you can see that there are main two types of the casting first one is the expandable molds and the second one is permanent casting so in the expandable molds you can say that the temporary molds are there so there are five types of molding first one is the sand casting second one is cell molding third one is investment casting fourth one is full mold and fifth one is co2 molding means carbon dioxide molding and in the permanent casting methods, first one is the centrifugal casting and the second one is the die casting. 
so in the die casting also there are gravity casting and pressure casting two types are there and in the pressure casting hot pressure casting and cold pressure casting are there in the low melting point temperature which is like pvs and zinc and alloy and the cold pressure casting is used for the and the cold pressure casting is used for the high melting point temperature which is like aluminium or copper alloy then second one is cell molding in cell molding the diagram is you can see here in this casting the final product having good dimensional accuracy and the very fine grain size of the sand the limitations are weak cell and the small size mold and the applications are cylinder and cylinder heads and piston rings and automobile transformation parts then third one is the slurs casting in the slurs casting the permanent die casting are there and detailed surface finish can be made applications are ornamental objects and the finish hollow statues then limitation is non uniform thickness fourth one is die casting which includes permanent die made of the grey cast iron and having low melting point and it is suitable for the low melting point temperature and the alloys like aluminium and the copper alloys then carburetors are made by the pressurized casting and pistons are made by gravity casting the advantages are rapid production rate and the complex casting can be done and one mold can be used more than one time the examples of the die castings are like uh, pistons carburetors and toys and kitchen part then after fifth one is centrifugal casting as you can see here in the diagram there is one cylindrical mold is there in which the pouring metal will be poured so advantages of the cylindrical casting is or you can say that the centrifugal casting is the free from the gaseous effect and the hollow castings can be made and no need of the runner casting yield is almost 100% and casting yield is in talking about the casting yield the for the true centrifugal casting is greater than for the semi and greater than for the centrifugal casting now the sixth and the most important casting is there which is the invest which is the investment casting so here in the diagram you can see one pattern or cluster first one is the pattern second one is the investing third one is divexing fourth one is preheating five one fifth one is pouring and sixth one is divesting there are application of these castings are in the blades and the vents of the gas turbines and the surgical instruments can be made from this casting as well as aerospace and the rocket components can be also made by this casting then limitations are like this process is very costly and process cycle is long and level cost is high the advantages are first one is very tight dimensional tolerances can be achieved in this casting then excellent surface finish then high melting point temperature that then almost all critical shapes can be casted by this method then there are one final topic is their casting defects one more point is their angular clearance is generally taken as 0.25 to 0.75 degree per side for the components then the final topic is casting defects so there are mainly four defects are there first one is the gas defect which includes the blow holes and open blow due to the moisture then pin hole porosity due to the h2 gas or hydrogen gas then second one is the molding material defect which is which includes the cuts and washes metal penetration fusion and run out then third one is pouring metal defect which includes misruns cold shots slag inclusions etc and the fun and the fourth one is metallurgical defect which includes hot tear hot spot hot tear due to cracks occur due to the variation in the solidification rate 
Here hot tear, you can say that the crack occurs due to the variation in the solidification rate. This is the first chart of the production technology which includes the basics, then the types of the casting, then types of pattern and the methods of the screw design and the casting defects. So if you like this video, please do like and share this video to all the other friends who is preparing for the gate examination. Do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel for more upcoming videos of the production technology. In second chart, we will cover the sheet metal which includes all the important formulas from which surely in the gate examination 3 to 4 marks. Hello and welcome to Tabias Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence. So basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books. The second subject is production technology. In this subject the second chart is for the sheet metals and sheet metals includes the different sheet metal operations as well as the different calculation of the drawing load and the defects in the drawing. As you can see here in the diagram that different operations like trimming, slotting, nibbling, parting, notching, lensing and holes. So start one by one. The main two operations which are most important for the examination is the punching and the blanking operations as well as the searing. So in the punching, here the seared portion is scrap and in the blanking the sear part is useful these are main two different but the important thing is there so for the punching process here is here one note is there that as will increase the i the f will reduce means the force required is reduced for the punching operations then you can remember like the pcd and the bcb process means for the clearance the size of punch is equal to size of hole for the punching operations. PCD denotes that the, in the punching operations clearance will be given to the die and in the blanking operation clearance will be given to the punch. So for the punching process here size of die is equal to size of hole plus 2 into clearance and size of punch is equal to size of hole. Then radial clearance is equal to 0.0032 into t into under root tau and diametral clearance is equal to 0.0064 into t into under root tau then for the blanking process size of die is equal to size of blank and size of punch is equal to size of blank minus 2 into clearance then after the third process is the searing process then the searing K is equal to penetration upon the thickness means KT by T which is equal to stripping constant then maximum force required for the searing F max is equal to pi into D into T into tau S then F max is equal to 2 into L into B into T into tau S and WD is equal to F max into KT so you can write that F max into KT is equal to F into KT plus I then stripping force FST is equal to Y into D into T into K where K is equal to KT by T. Then angular clearance is equal to 0.25 to 0.75 degree per side. Here notice that the 10 mm die hole is punched from a sheet of 3 mm thickness then the operation is punching. And if 20 mm disc is punched from the 3 mm thickness sheet metal then the operation is blanking then T less than 5 to 6 mm which is known as the seat and thickness greater than 5 to 6 mm which is known as the plate. Then punching force 
F P is equal to pi into D into T into tau S for the shear strength then F P is equal to D into T into S upon under cube root of D by T then shear force F S is equal to pi into D into T square into KT upon I and F P is equal to F P into KT upon KT plus I then F B is equal to F B max into KT upon KT plus I so these are the some equation which is useful in the examination directly you can put this equation and find the values of the respective terms then fourth one is trimming which is mostly used in the drop forging and die casting process then fifth one is saving is used in blanking or punching the edge of the blank hole is not perfectly clean then saving is used which removes the burr left on the product then sixth one is nibbling process which used to removing the material in the small increments during the specific contour cutting in the sheet metal. Then seventh is notching process. It is used to cut the small portion of the edges. Then eighth one is the piercing or the punching used for the making holes in a sheet. Then ninth is blanking. Removes the desired portion by the punch from the sheet metal. Then there is a term like spring break or the elastic recovery. In that, total strain produced during deformation is equal to the elastic strain plus the plastic strain. And the elastic strain recovered, then this phenomena is known as the elastic recovery. Then spring break is directly proportional to 1 upon E and proportional to sigma y and proportional to the amount of the deformation then types of die first one is the simple die second one is progressive die for the progressive die the equations like f total is equal to fb plus fp and here note that fb max is greater than fp max means the force required for the blanking is greater than force required for the punching operations then third one is the compound die in which two or more operations take place at one station and it is more productive process then fourth one is the combination die in that at same time blanking and piercing both are producing in one stroke only then calculation of the drawing load for the cup drawing and deep drawing processes so wd means work done is equal to e1 is equal to f1 into h1 then WD is equal to E2 is equal to F2 into H2 minus H1. Then FD is equal to pi DT sigma Y into capital D by D minus K. Then H less than D by 2 cup drawing. And if H greater than D by 2, then deep drawing is there. Here note that H greater than or equal to D by 2 is there. Then for the cup drawing, H by D is less than 0.5 and H by D is greater than or equal to 0.5 for the deep drawing processes. Then Ft is equal to pi dt into sigma y if k is not given there. After that first one is the cup without flange. For that process d square is equal to d square plus 4dh and h is equal to d square minus d square by 4d. Then cup with flange d square is equal to d2 square plus 4d1 into h and h is equal to d square minus d2 square by 4d1. The respective terms d, d1 and d2 you can see from the diagram there. After that there is one table is there for the blank diameter then if d by r is greater than or equal to 20 then d is equal to under root d2 square plus 4 d1 into h then d is equal to under root d square plus 4 d h minus r by 2 where d by r is equal to 15 to 20 then d is equal to under root d2 square plus 4 d1 h minus r and the third one is d is equal to under root d square plus 4 d h minus r where d by r is equal to 10 to 15 then d is equal to under root d 2 square plus 4 d 1 h minus 2 into r then stresses in the wall of the cup so in the axle means the tensile in the wall of the cup and by axle means the tensile plus compressive stress into the flange of the cup then there are two equations for the first row and the second row for the first row sigma 1 is equal to f1 upon pi by 4 into d1 square minus d1 minus 2t square then for the second row sigma 2 is equal to f1 upon pi by 4 into d2 square minus d2 minus 2t square then reduction ratio r is equal to d minus d by d into 100 then for the first row the draw ratio is equal to dr which is equal to d by dn where n is equal to 1 2 3 then there are some thumb rule for the reduction when reduction percentage 
is not given. So for the first row the reduction will be 50% then second row reduction will 30% for the third row reduction will be 25% for the fourth row reduction will be 16% and for the fifth row reduction will be 13%. Then linting row ratio LDR is equal to capital D by D mean where capital D for the blank and D mean for the cup. Then there are drawing defects are there. First one is the wrinkling. In the wrinkling process or wrinkling defects, the wrinkles may appear either on the flange or on the wall of the cup or sometimes on the both the flange and wall the wrinkles may be appear. It can be avoided by the drop beads or by increasing the pressure of the blank holding. Then the second one is the earring. In this defect, the Anistropy ears or loops are generated at the length of the curvature. Then the number of ears is equal to 2 raised to n, where n is equal to 1 to 3. Then the third one is the orange wheel, in which the large size grains of the sheet metals. Then the texture of the draw cup appears like the orange wheel. Then after the fourth one is the fracture or tearing, in that due to the much pressure or improper design this type of defects will be appear and it appears at the neck or the bottom of the cup and the last one is mixed type defect in that the misalignment of the line uneven flange appears in the drawn cup then there are two process are like spinning and ironing so the spinning is the cold drawing process for that process Tc is equal to Tb into sin alpha where Tc is equal to cone thickness, Tb is equal to blank thickness and alpha is equal to semi mandrel angle. Then ironing is the process of thinning the walls of the drawn cylinder by passing it between the punch and die where T2 less than T1. For example brass cartridge cases, thinned wall beverage cans. Then there is bending load calculation for the equation that Fb is equal to C into B into T square into sigma u by W where B is equal to width of the stroke, sigma u is equal to ultimate tensile strength, W is equal to width of the die opening, C is equal to die opening factor and T is equal to stroke thickness. One more equation is there like Lb is equal to alpha into R plus Kt where length of the neutral axis in the bend zone that R is equal to bend radius. So LB is equal to length of the neutral axis in the bend zone and R is equal to bend radius. Then in the edge blending the diagram is there, for V blending the diagram is there and U bending the diagram is there. Then there is the note for the clearance die opening factor for the E type, V type and the U type blending processes. So for the W less than 16 T for the E type 0.67 then for V type 1.33 and for U type 2.67 and for the W greater than 16T for E type 0.60 for V type 1.20 and for U type 2.40 then under similar bending parameters F E gem F V gem F U is equal to 1 gem 2 gem 4 so this is the ratio in the terms of E V and U then there are two examples for the punching and blanking operations in which you can use the directly the equation which we have discussed earlier in the starting. Then after one note is there for the compounding die F total is equal to F max from the F V or F B where F B is equal to pi into D into tau S and F B is equal to pi into D into tau S. Then there is one example for the drawing operations requirement. If given that the T is equal to 1.5 mm, H is equal to 7.5 mm and we have to produce the D is equal to 5 cm cup, then we have to use the equation of the true ratio which is equal to dm before divided by the dm after. So for the first D1 days 13.32 by 1.8 is equal to 7.34 which is greater than 5 cm. So we have to repeat that once again then D2 days is equal to 7.34 divided by 1.8 which is equal to 4.08 which is less than 5 cm. So at least we require two drawing operations here.
h1 is equal to d square minus d1 square by 4d so you can find the value of h1 from that and find the values of f1 and e respectively then the third example is for using the equation d is equal to under root dn square plus 4d h1 this is used for d1 d2 d3 d4 and d5 when the value of diameter is less than the required diameter the n is equal to your required answer which means that much drawing operations you require here in the example you can see that there are five times we have used that equation and after that the value of n is equal to six means minimum six drawing operations we required for the given example so this is all about the second chart of the sheet metal in which there are main five to six important formulas and some drawing defects and the spinning and the ironing process as well as the bending load is covered so we we'll hope that from this chart you will gain some important formulas so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming chart which is very most important for the gate examination as you all know the chapter is metal cutting and from which in the every gate examination there are four to five marks questions will be there and also share this video to all your friends who is preparing for the gate examination 2021 thank you so much hello and welcome to the bs academy the second subject is production technology so in this subject the third chart is here from total seven charts so in the third chart we will discuss about the metal cutting processes in the metal cutting chart we have included that the geometry of a single point cutting tool after that the tool signature process in which asa and ors is there then after the types of cutting is there then merchant circle which is also very important and mrr then the last one is bue so from these terms there are mainly in the gate examination four to five marks will be covered surely for the exam so please watch the video till the end and all the important terms or all the important formulas will be covered in one chart for the metal cutting process so let's begin with the definition of the metal cutting process it is the manufacturing process to obtain the desired shape and the size by deforming it plastically through the shear mechanism with the help of a machine tool and a cutting tool so that the removal of the material takes place in the form of chips then after a machine tool which is equal to assembly of several different elements mechanisms and a prime mover the examples are like IC engine or the motor it is used for holding the cutting tool and the workpiece rigidly now the geometry of a single point cutting tool you can see here in the diagram that the side flank then face then sank body and the end flank were drawn in the diagram so here asa tool signature is there we'll discuss about that later in the tool signature there is the node there if we increase the nose radius the surface finish will increase and tool life will increase but the excessive rise in the nose radial which results into the chattering and severe vibration now the single point cutting tool it can have more than one cutting edge but while machining only one cutting edge in, is in the contact so that it is called the single point cutting tool and one point contact while machining also the examples are like turning, facing, shaping, planning, slotting, thread cutting, undercutting, brewing, parting, boring etc. These all are the single point cutting tools. So remember that it can have more than one cutting edge but during the operation only one cutting edge is in the contact. Then after multi point cutting tool it can have more than one cutting edge and more than one cutting edge will be in the contact while machining the examples are like drill bit then milling cutter then grinding wheel and hexoblade broach etc tools then tool signature is there 
so the difference in the tool signatures are due to the different angles and the different reference planes and seven components of the tool signature is there so in the tool signature you just have to remember these two tables here you can see in the table that BS, ES, ES and N means in both the tool signature system the first two angles are rack angle and the other two are relief angle and the last two are cutting angle so for the BS alpha beam means the back rack angle then alpha S is side rack angle then for ES gamma E is end relief angle and gamma S is side relief angle then ES which is fifth and sixth psi E is cut side cutting angle then psi S is side cutting angle so N is equal to nose radius for remembering this equation you just have to remember that BS is equal to 2 times ES and N N for radius then in the orthogonal rack signature system the equation will be like i into alpha naught into gamma s into gamma e into psi e into lambda where i is equal to inclination angle then alpha naught is equal to orthogonal rack angle and gamma is equal to approach angle here note that alpha will always greater than alpha b and alpha naught is greater than alpha s and lambda will always greater than or equal to 55 degree then one more note is there if psi s is equal to 0 or lambda is equal to 90 then i is equal to alpha b then pi y is equal to pi c and if alpha naught is equal to alpha s then pi is equal to pi naught here remember that in calculation always orthogonal angles are used means rack angle or orthogonal rack angles are same in the examination then there are types of cutting first one is the orthogonal cutting in which force appears in two dimensionals and i is equal to zero and r is equal to under root fc square plus ft square then examples are sewing broaching turning of a very thin pipe and orthogonal cutting operations is there in the diagram then in the oblique cutting forces appear in the three dimensionals and the examples are all other operations than the orthogonal cutting operations so examples are like turning milling grinding facing etc and for that i is not equal to zero for the oblique cutting Then one more note is there that the heat distribution for the ratio of cheap tool and workpiece is in the terms of 70 gem 20 gem 10 approximately. Then in the primary sear zone three equations are there. First one is for the W which is equal to width of the sear plane. Then L sear is equal to T1 by sin alpha. Then second one is the sear area. The equation is AS is equal to W into T1 upon sin phi which is equal to F into D by sin phi. Then W into T1 is equal to D into F. Then CR force FS is equal to FS is equal to TS into W into T1 upon sin phi which is equal to tau S into F into D by sin phi. Then cutting ratio is there. Here R is equal to chip thickness ratio and R dash is equal to chip reduction ratio. So R is equal to T1 by D2 which is less than 1 and R dash is equal to T2 by T1 which is greater than 1 because T1 always less than T2. So in the examination if R is given less than 1 then you have to understand that this ratio is given as the chip thickness ratio and if the value of R is greater than 1 then the value is given in the form of chip reduction ratio means you have to take R dash is equal to T2 by T1. Then after MRR means material removal rate, so the equation is like uncut volume is equal to cut volume, then W into T1 into V is equal to W into T2 into VC, then T1 by T2 is equal to VC by V is equal to LC by L, this is very important and useful in the examination.
then the concept of sheaf formation for the different materials are there the first one is for better material the courses are the negative rectangle the large speed and depth of cut the low cutting speed and insufficient coolant due to which the non-continuous or discontinuous chips are formed which is non-uniform and shapes and size are non-uniform in the better material then for the ductile material the alpha will always positive and theta is less in this material the chips are continuous then cutting speed is high and small feed and the depth of cut will be provided in this material and enough amount of lubricant will be used for the continuous chips then the most important point is there BUE continuous chips with built up edges then the built up edge two main important thing is there that the by generation of the BUE tool life will increase but by breaking of BUE the tool life will decrease so overall built up edge generation or the formation should not be useful for the processes then remedies for the built up edges we can use the high bake rectangle then we can reduce the cheetah then the, we can increase the cutting velocity then feed depth of cut should be less and lubricant plus coolant should be used and change the tool material like uh, ceramic plus metals can be used for the tool then there is the merchant circle which is most important for the examination because from the, these equations surely the questions will be asked so as you can see here in the diagram there are main six forces which is shown in the diagram the first one is the fc means cutting force is equal to r into cos beta minus alpha naught then the second one is ft which is equal to thrust force the equations for thrust force is equal to ft is equal to r into sine beta minus alpha naught then fs equal to zero force means fs equal to r into cos phi plus beta minus alpha then the equations for the normal to zero means ns is equal to r into sine phi plus beta minus alpha then f is equal to friction force means f is equal to r into sine beta and n is equal to normal force means n is equal to r into cos beta then equation one is there 10 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to ns upon fs then zero reg angle cutting tool alpha naught is equal to zero and fc is equal to n and ft is equal to f for the zero reg angle then orthogonal cutting fc is equal to 67 percent and in ft is equal to 33 percent for the oblique cutting fc is equal to 67 percent and ff is equal to 27 percent and fr is equal to 6 percent means ff is equal to friction force and fr is equal to radial force then there are 10 node points are there in which all the important equations are given so first one is formula for finding the i and alpha node that 10 i is equal to cos into psi s into 10 alpha beta minus sine psi s into 10 alpha s then 10 alpha naught is equal to cos psi s into 10 alpha s plus sin psi s into 10 alpha beta then second one is for orthogonal cutting i is equal to 0 but alpha naught is not equal to 0 then if i not then if alpha 0 is equal to 0 given in the equation then fc is equal to n and ft is equal to f so you can remember it like fsi nova means fc is equal to n and ft is equal to f you can remember like foot fair means ft for foot and f for fair then after the third one is if psi is equal to 0 then lambda is equal to 90 and ft is equal to f and fr is equal to 0 then after for i is equal to 0 r is equal to under root fc square plus ft square then ft is equal to under root ff square plus fr square where ff is equal to feed force and fr is equal to radial force so fc always greater than ft then fifth formula for finding the values of the ft fr psi s and lambda so the first one is ft is equal to ff upon cos psi s which is equal to ff by sine lambda 
Then second one is Ft is equal to Fr by sin psi s plus Fr by cos lambda. Then sixth one is for finding the values of beta, phi, t1 and mu. So the first equation is mu is equal to tan beta. Then tan phi is equal to r cos alpha naught upon 1 minus r into sin alpha. Then the third equation is for finding the value of beta 2 phi plus beta minus alpha naught is equal to 90 degree. Then tan beta minus alpha is equal to Ft by Fc. Then mu is equal to tan beta. So the beta is equal to tan inverse mu. Then there is a note which is most important in the examples like for the example in which the values of f, d and psi s will be given then you have to take the value of t1 by using f into cos psi s then if value of psi s is not given then use the equation of f and if d is only given then take t1 is equal to d. Then after 7th is chip velocity or shear velocity. The equation of the chip velocity is vc is equal to v into sin phi upon cos phi minus alpha naught and vs is equal to v into cos alpha naught upon cos phi minus alpha naught. Then 8th is minimum shear strain gamma is equal to cot phi plus tan phi minus alpha naught and alpha naught is equal to 0 for the phi is equal to 45. Then gamma mean is equal to 2 which was asked in the gate examination where phi is equal to 45 given. Then ninth one is shear strain rate which is equal to vs by t1 then 10th is tool life means t and finding value of f of t so first one is f of t or t is equal to 1 minus n upon n into fc then vt raised to n is equal to constant which is known as taylor's constant c then n is equal to ln into t2 by t1 upon ln into v1 by v2 then rt is equal to f square by 8r which is most important equation because more than 4 to 5 times from this equation the proportionality questions were asked in the gate examination. So you have to remember that rt is equal to f square by 8r and vt raised to n is equal to constant. Then after 11th is power consumption p is equal to fc into v in the kilowatts then ts is equal to fs upon as then ts is equal to fs into sin phi upon f into d where as is equal to f into d by sin phi the value of ts is in megapascal then after 12th is most of abrasive tool alpha is equal to negative and phi is equal to higher then for grinding wheel alpha is equal to zero after the types of year the first one is diffusion in that atoms diffuse to the tool chip interface from the face of the tool and notice that diamond is not used for the hard and ferrous material cbn is used for the hard and ferrous materials then second one is oxidation then second one is oxidation in which oxidized layer continuously carried away by chips and leading to the wear at the face of the tool. Then in the addition, due to the very high temperature at face, the tool material loose from the break face. Then fourth one is abrasive wear. For that, carbides and CBN is responsible for the adhesive wears. Then fifth is crater wear. Crater wears occur at certain distance from the tool chip thickness and temperature is highest at that place and due to all the above types this type of wear can be occur but the rate of wear is less in the crater wear then sixth one is flank wear which is occurred at the flank surface due to the abrasion plunging and the buoy here remember that flank wear will always greater than the crater wear and at high speed, crater wear is greater than the flank wear. One more note is that productivity proportional to MRR, proportional to F, proportional to D, and proportional to V from this. Then, 16 note is there that tool life mostly affected by the V greater than F greater than D means mostly affected by the velocity, then feed, and then the depth. Then, after one equation is there t is equal to c raised to 1 upon n divided by v raised to 1 upon n into f raised to 1 upon n1 into d raised to 1 upon n2 where 
वन अपॉन एन ग्रेटर देन वन अपॉन एम नॉन ग्रेटर देन वन अपॉन एन टू देन देर आर टू मेन एनालिसिस विच आर इम्पोर्टेंट इन द एग्जामिनेशन वाइल वैल्यू ऑफ म्यू इज ग्रेटर देन वन ओनली देन यू कैन यूज द क्रोन एंड बर्ग एनालिसिस द इक्वेशन फॉर द क्रोन एंड बर्ग एनालिसिस म्यू इज इक्वल टू एल एंड आर डेस अपॉन पाई बाई टू माइनस अल्फा नोट रिमेंबर दैट म्यू शुड ऑलवेज ग्रेटर देन वन फॉर यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन then there are unnets and merchants minimum energy consumption theory fc is equal to r cos beta minus alpha not and fs is equal to r cos phi plus beta minus alpha not and 2 phi plus beta minus alpha not is equal to pi by t which is equal to 90 so you have to use these equations and find the values of beta phi or alpha not then lee and seffer's theorem phi plus beta minus alpha is equal to pi by 4 and Stabler's theorem phi plus beta minus alpha not by 2 is equal to pi by 2 sometimes it will be asked in the examination that the choose the correct equation for the lee and seffer's theorem or for the stabler's theorem so you have to remember this equation then after machining constant cm is equal to summation of 2 phi plus beta minus alpha not is equal to cm so if cm is equal to 90 degree then tau is equal to tau s then efficiency is 100% which means minimum energy consumption then if cm less than 90 degree then tau greater than tau s and eta max less than 100% which means machining is possible and if cm greater than 90 degree then tau less than tau s which means efficiency will greater than 100% which is not possible so you can say that machining will not possible so these are the important formulas and the terms you have to remember from that you can directly answer any example this is the third chart of the production technology in which we have covered all the metal cutting portion so we we'll hope that you have liked this video so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel in which we will cover the rolling as well as extrusion as well as wire drawing tube drawing as well as forging process are there so please do like and share this video to the other friends who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. Second subject of the GATE 2021 is production technology. In the second subject, the fourth chart of the production technology will be related to the metal forming processes. In the fourth chart, we'll include that the flow stress, then the rolling process, then the tube drawing, then the forming process as well as the forging process, and at the end. the non traditional machining methods will be there all the formulas related to these processes will be covered in this chart so please watch the full video till the end let's begin with the first one which is the flow stress as you can see here that the stress at any point in the strain hardening region is called the flow stress then types of stress strain curve are there first one is the perfectly elastic material the diagram is shown here for that material then the second one is the rigid plastic material for that stress strain diagram is there after that the elastic perfect plastic then elastic linear strain hardening material for the fourth one sigma mf is equal to sigma f1 plus sigma ff y2 where sigma f is equal to initial stress and the ff is equal to final stress then after the fifth one is the elastic non linear strain hardening material for that sigma mf is equal to k into strain raised to n upon n plus 1 so sigma f is equal to k into e raised to n so here one note is there during the metal forming processes if v is equal to constant is given in the examination then by this equation you can solve the questions The equation will be like ln Lf upon Li plus 2 into ln Df upon Di is equal to zero. That means 
epsilon l plus 2 into epsilon d is equal to 0 it means where epsilon l is equal to length y is true strength then epsilon d is equal to dimension y is true strength and epsilon t is equal to thickness y is true strength so you can use this equation of el plus ed plus ex is equal to 0 then coming towards the rolling process first one is the assumptions which are taken in the rolling process the first is the rolls are straight and rigid cylinders the second is strips are much wider as compared to the thickness that means w is greater 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 than than the t means thickness then arc of the contact is circular with a radius greater than the radius of the roll then material is rigid and plastic which is perfectly plastic then cof is constant on the both the sides of the material then after from volume consistency hivi is equal to hfvf it means tivi is equal to tfvf then you can say that t is directly proportional to 1 upon v then vf upon vi is equal to ti by tf greater than 1 then vf greater than vi that's why you can say that the velocity at the end of the rolling process is greater than that of the starting of the rolling process then the second equation is for enlarging zone the percentage of backward slip which is equal to vr minus vi by vr into 100 is equal to 1 minus vi by vr into 100 then 1 minus hi upon hi into 100 percent so vr greater than vs for the backward slip and in the third one in the leading zone the equation will be like vf minus vr upon vr into 100 percent then vf upon vr minus 1 into 100 percent then hn upon hf minus 1 into 100 percent here you can say that v is greater than vr for the leading zone then one more important equation is arc length or the contact length l is equal to under root r into delta h then for self entry of plate in the roller gap you can use this equation like first one is the mu is equal to greater than or equal to 10 theta then 10 theta is equal to mu which is equal to under root delta h upon r and the third one is cos theta is equal to 1 minus delta h by 2r from the first equation you can say that mu and cos theta greater than or equal to n into sine theta then six one is for maximum draft delta h is equal to mu square into r then delta h is equal to hi minus hf then maximum draft is directly proportional to mu square and proportional to r now the eighth one is for maximum reduction in area ai by af is equal to e then fd is equal to sigma total into af then af upon ai is equal to 1 upon 1 plus beta raised to 1 upon beta where beta is equal to mu into cot alpha and alpha is equal to semi side angle then sigma total is equal to sigma y plus sigma d minus sigma y into e raised to minus 2 into mu l upon rf then seventh is force power and torque for the rolling process so you can use this equation like p total is equal to 2 into p1 is equal to 2 into 2 pi n t1 upon 60 then second is t is equal to f into l by 2 where sigma f is equal to sigma mf is equal to sigma y then sigma mf is equal to 2 by under root 3 into sigma y so third one is f is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus mu l upon 4h into w into l so h is equal to hi plus hf by 2 then f is equal to wl into sigma mf then sigma mf is equal to 2 by root 3 into sigma y so these are the equations for the rolling process now the next is tube drawing process the drawing stress in the tube drawing you can calculate by this equation of sigma td is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus beta upon beta into 
1 minus HIF upon HI into beta. Then tube drawing with stationary mandrel beta is equal to mu1 plus mu2 by 10 alpha minus 10 gamma and beta is equal to mu into cot alpha. Then second is for floating beta is equal to mu1 minus mu2 upon 10 alpha minus 10 gamma. Then tube drawing with movable mandrel beta is equal to mu1 upon 10 alpha and fourth one is sigma td is equal to sigma mf into ln hi upon hf for floating mandrel then sigma 2 is equal to sigma y into 1 plus beta by beta into 1 minus hf upon hi raised to beta then sigma 2 by sigma y is equal to ln hi upon hf then after jigs and fixture so the device is used to support and guide the workpiece while repeating the production jigs and fixtures are used jigs is basically used to guide and support the workpiece and the fixture is only used for the support then 3 to 1 principle of the location you can see in the diagram the plane 1 2 and 3 for plane 1 there are two fixtures are made and in the plane 1 three fixture is the here note that in order to locate the workpiece in a fixture from 12 degree of freedom 9 is fixed by this 3 to 1 principle and the three translational motion will be left in the direction of the minus x minus y and minus z then different methods of the location the first one is the flat location then cylindrical location then conical location then jack pin locator then fifth is drill bush locator then sixth is v locator and seventh is setting lock mostly the setting lock location mostly used in the drilling machine then after extrusion process in the case of extrusion, the metal is compressed and forced through a suitable diameter having constant cross-sectional area. In hot extrusion process, phosphate-based lubricant plus molten glass used. And here one more note is there, ratio between the initial cross-sectional area of billet and final cross-sectional area of the product which is equal to extrusion ratio which nearly equal to 40 gem 1 then the hot extrusion process still is around 400 gem 1 then advantages is huge reduction in cross-sectional area and limitation is same cross-sectional area throughout the line then for the forward extrusion process or direct extrusion process material is extruded in the same direction of the stroke means f external is equal to means f extrusion is equal to sigma extrusion into ai and large deformation can be obtained then second one is backward or indirect extrusion the material is extruded in the opposite direction of the stroke and the hollow parts are made by this extrusion process as well as the solid extrusion can be formed then for the backward or indirect extrusion process f extrusion is equal to sigma extrusion into area of die then there is most important equation which is of the johnson's equation sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into a plus b into ln r where sigma mf is equal to k into e raised to n upon n plus 1 and r is equal to extrusion ratio and a and b are johnson's constant then ideal case sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into ln into ai upon af then sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into ln into r and for the real case sigma extrusion is equal to k into ln r where k is equal to constant then after slab analysis Sigma extrusion is equal to sigma mf into 1 plus beta by beta into 1 minus ai upon af raised to beta. So beta is equal to mu into cot alpha, same for the wire drawing. 
these are the equations which are similar for the extrusion process as well as the wire drawing process. Then after the impact extrusion is there, it is used for softer material examples are like aluminum and its alloy. Then collapsible tubes are formed by this process. Then hydrostatic extrusion is used for the bitter material like wire drawings and for this extrusion process sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z then extrusion defects are first one is the bamboo defect which is due to the non-uniform velocity and the second one is pipe defect which is equal to due to improper planing so this is all about the extrusion process now the forging process steps in forging now the forging process the steps involved in the forging processes are first one is the fullering or the swaying which is used to reduce the workpiece at the center then the edging or rolling after that third one is bending then fourth is blocking then fifth is flattering the workpiece then sixth is finishing and after that the forging process is complete for the press forging in this process, using the workpiece into the shape dies with help of the hydraulic press and the production rate is faster and structure quality is good for this process. Then hardness is higher, then toughness is also the higher. Then the equations for the forging processes are first one is in the average method F average is equal to F into I minimum plus F into F minimum by 2 then for the slab analysis method F actual is equal to sigma Y into 1 plus 2 into mu RF upon 3 into HF into AF then for the work done e is equal to F actual into HI minus HF upon 2 into WH where W is equal to hammer weight then F separable is equal to sigma MF into LNR into AI upon efficiency then after the barreling in the forging in which it can occur due to the hot forging process and in this process at the ends the metal cools faster than at the center and for controlling this the friction control by lubricant and the second one is the same cooling rate maintaining proportional gradient throughout the height then at the end the forging defects First one is the left fold, second one is the unifold section, third one is the scale pits, fourth one is the die shift, and fifth one is hot tear and thermal cracking. So this is all about the forging process. Now coming towards the non-traditional machining method or you can say that the non-conventional machining method, NTM and NCM. So first one is the form of energy. There are four types of forms of the energy. First one is the electrochemical, then the chemical, then mechanical and the thermal. So according to the form of the energy, we have divided the processes like in the electrochemical portion, ECM, ECG, ECH and ECD are there. Then for the chemical, CM, PCM and for mechanical, HJM, WJM, AWJM and USM for the thermal. EDM, WDM, LBM, PAM and EBM are there. Then the full form of laser is light amplification for the stimulated emission and radiation. In the ECM, electrochemical machining, the diagram will be like here. In this process, you can say that the reverse of electroplating process. Here, supply voltage is less than 2 to 35. DC then high magnitude I is equal to 500 to 4000 ampere properties are for electrolyte PP will be higher then corrosiveness will be lower K will be lower and cost will be lower mu is equal to also less then for the material electric conductivity should be higher and K should be higher as well as the good machinability and the stiffness will be higher so you can choose the material with the respective properties then after for ECM process equations are there 
MRR is equal to I into A upon F into rho V, which is equal to I into E equivalence upon F into rho, then 100 upon E equivalence is equal to sigma 0 to N Xi Vi upon Ai, where R is equal to rho L upon A. Then after, second one is ECG, electrochemical grinding, in that it is used for the shaping and sharpening the high wear rates on expensive diamond wheels then low voltage and high current process it is then no heat damage and no residual stresses third one is EDM process electro discharge machining the diagram is there the workpiece will be positive and tool will be negative as a dielectric you can use the kerosene or deionized water and energy per spark will be equal to E is equal to 1 by 2 into C into Vd square then cycle time T is equal to R into C into Ln Vs upon Vs minus Vd then power is equal to E by T and the average power output is equal to 0.5 into C into Vd square by T so these are the main equations for the EDM process then there are advantages of EDM like used for the hard and brittle material, no chip mark or no burr mark on the workpiece, then FC is equal to zero. Then applications are to produce the small holes which is greater than of 0.30 mm to 20 mm, then blind cavities can be made, then burr free surface can be made only by this EDM process and the narrow dies for molding slots. Then fourth one is WDM process means wire electric discharge machining. In this process dielectric is deionized water and electrode wire diameter will be 0.05 to 0.25 mm then thickness will be equal to 5 mm. Applications are punches, stripper plates, dies, intricate shapes and difficult openings. For all these processes, you have to remember their applications because in the gate examination, the applications of the every process will be asked in the form of the tabular form. So all are very important processes. Then after ultrasonic machining, in this process, tool vibrate with the frequency of the amplitude between the 15 to 50 microns then machining is for the brittle materials and poor conductors then abrasive materials for the USM process are L203, B4C, SIC and diamond based on the physioelectric effect, magneto striptive effect and electro striptive effect then Applications are most useful process in the fabrication of glass, silicone, skew, round and irregular holes, then making impressions on the glass and for making the logos. These applications were asked more than two to three times for the USM process. Then the sixth one is HM means the abrasive jet machining. The abrasives are L203 and WC and SIC for the AGM process. Then applications are cutting, drilling of metal foils, then intricate holes, cleaning, polishing and deburring of the surfaces. In this process, case compressed and mixed with the abrasive, then pass through the outlet nozzle. So the pressure is very high in this process. Then there are two important tables for the note here. You can take a screenshot because it is very helpful notes for your examination. The first one is for ECM process. It is used for the highest MRR. Then second is USM and HAM are used for the non-materials. And the third one is LBM and EBM are used for the highest penetration with low MRR and used for micro drill and sheet metal cutting. Then there is the note for shape cutting capabilities. So LBM and ABM are used for the micro drilling and metal cutting process. Then EDM and USM are used for the 
die cavity, shrinking, standard, trading holes, logos and blind holes. Then ECM is used for contour cutting and fine hole drilling. Then PM is used for clean and radial cuts. Then HM is used for shallow pocketing and impression on tough glass. So this is all about the fourth chart of production technology in which the first one is the flow stress then after rolling then extrusion then forging and tube drawing as well as the all the non-traditional machining methods we have included in this chart so please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel and for the upcoming video please press the bell icon which is for the welding process in which we will include all the welding processes please share this video to all the get experience of the gate 2021 Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. In the second subject of Gate 2021 which is production technology, this is the fifth chart for the production technology. And this chart will include all the welding processes. So let's start one by one. First one is the arc welding process. So before starting the welding processes, let's see first the definition of the welding process. Welding is the fabrication process in which the permanent joints are made in between two similar or dissimilar material with or without the application of heat and or pressure. The examples are arc welding and gas welding are based on the heat then expulsion welding based on the pressure and the resistance welding based on the heat and pressure. Let's begin with the first welding process which is arc welding. So the principles of arc welding process are like DCN and DCSP or SPDC. Then third one is DCRP or RPDC and fourth one is DCEP where DCN stands for direct current electronegative process then DCSP stands for direct current straight polarity then DCRP stands for direct current reverse polarity and DCEP stands for direct current electropositivity. So the diagrams of the respective processes are shown here. So for the DCN process the collide at the interface and UV radiant or arc heat is used then high arc length avoided in this process and V is equal to A plus B into L where V is proportional to L and L is proportional to V. So you can say that L is directly proportional to 1 upon I. Then for the DCRP process the diagram is also there and maximum standard arc length is equal to diameter of electrode then L proportional to voltage maximum voltage is equal to 80 volt in this process thermodynamic emission is used for the arc welding then arc blow is equal to low heat penetrations occur due to the unbalanced magnetic force especially near the edges and the corners then types of electrode first one is the non-consumable it includes the tungsten then graphite then deposition rate is near equal to zero for the filler matter and stable arc as well as the electrode is not melt in this process then second one is for consumable electrode two types are there first one is the bare electrode in the form of spool of wire and used for the semi and automatic welding then coated electrode in this electrode coating is used for the prevent the oxidation of the electrode then blinders which are used for the arc blending process are Na2SiO3 and K2SiO3 then deoxidizing ingredients are cellulose and dolomite as well as the starch dextrin wood flour and the graphite here for the manual arc welding process here for the manual arc welding process, the note is important that in the case of the semi and automatic arc welding process, 
V is equal to constant transformer R used. V is equal to A plus BL is equal to V naught minus V naught upon IS into I was asked in the gate examination. Then linear volt ampere characteristic curve is there. Here for semi-automatic arc welding you can use this equation V is equal to OCV minus OCV upon SCC raised to I and P is equal to IV. Here note that V is equal to IR you cannot use in the arc welding process. Then after modes of the metal transfer in the welding, first one is by short circuit method, then the globular transfer, then after the spray transfer and the fourth one is the deep transfer. So in the short circuit method, the welding current is very low but enough for the stable arc and metal droplet is used for the weld full then in the globular transfer the i is lower and the gap is enough to drop the continuously to grow until the fg greater than fs means gravitational force greater than the surface force here in this method the size now in the spray transfer welding current is very high and no surface tension so the droplets are formed rapidly and pinch off from the electrode tip. In the deep transfer method, the current is very low and feed rate is too much. So the short circuit leads to the melting of the electrode. Then after the second one is the gas metal arc welding GMW or you can say that the MIG. It is used for any metal. Then primarily it used for non-ferrous metal then welding of steel O2 or CO2 gas is added to improve the arc stability and for shielding AR and HE or AR plus HE is used in this process. Here we have only mentioned the important terms which are important for the exam point of view. So only important points are noted here. Then third one is the submerged arc welding. It is used for the thickness greater than 30 mm and also used for the CPR parts, flat bed vessels and fillet weld and LPG cylinder. Mostly for the low carbon or medium carbon steel, high speed, high deposition rate and the limitations are for other metal the suitable flux is very difficult and only in the horizontal position welding can be done then after the fourth one is the atomic hydrogen welding for this process the applications are useful the ceramics carbide tungsten can be weld by this method fourth one is oxy fuel gas welding then Fusion welding process is also known as the oxy fuel gas welding in which heat is obtained by the burning acetylene in the presence of the oxygen. So C2H2 gas burns into two stages. First one is C2H2 plus O2 gives 2 into CO plus H2 plus heat and in the second stage 2 CO plus O2 gives 2 CO2 plus heat. So H2 plus half O2 is equal to H2O plus heat generation. Here note that in the black cylinder always oxygen will be there and in the red cylinder always C2H2 will be there at any stage or at any place. Then after the types of flame, first one is the neutral flame, second one is the oxidizing flame and the third one is carburizing flame. So the temperature and the ratio of O2 by C2H2 is very important for all the three flames. So let's see one by one for the neutral flame the ratio of the oxygen to the acetylene will be near equal to 1.05 to 0.95 means near equal to 1 and this flame is neither the carburizing nor the oxidizing and most widely used the flame then neutral flame is more safer flame than other two then for the oxidizing flame O2 by C2H2 is greater than 1 it means the oxygen ratio is more 
than the acetylene ratio that's why it's called the oxidizing flame and the not suitable for carbon steel mostly used for cu and its alloy then third one is the carburizing flame for that flame o2 by c2h2 is less than one then used for ni and cu alloy means nickel and copper alloy then hydrocarbon steel and some alloy steels also can be welded then flame welding is used in the field work and manufacturing processes and fusion welding is used where flux may use to clean the surface then there is one small topic of duty cycle from which more than two to three times the questions may be asked in the gate examination so for duty cycle you have to just remember these equations of i square r into dr is equal to i square d into dd where ir represents the rated current dr for the rated duty cycle id for the desired current and dd for the desired duty cycle and p is equal to iv you can use here then after the explosion welding you can see here in the diagram that the process of the production of excision gas isolation is equal to ap upon ap plus ar into 100% where ap is equal to perpendicular area and ar is equal to reinforcement area and ideally ar is equal to 0% but in the practical situation ar is not equal to 0 then seventh is thermit welding the applications for thermit welding is very useful because all the welding processes the applications are important so it is used in the joining railway track and the large size cubic then in remote location and note is there medium velocity explosive like aluminum nitride and al perchloride as well as the amatol and the dynamite are used for the thermite welding processes in this process the temperature of 2750 degrees celsius will be produced in just 30 seconds hence it is used in the large welding requirement then the eighth one is sport resistance welding in this welding process heat and pressure both are used for the welding process heat is generated by the electrical resistance of the workpiece and interface between them and pressure is supplied externally then for gas welding and arc welding t is lower then advantages are dissimilar metal can be weld rapid process as well as the filler metal are not required here and limitations are high initial cost then skilled workers are required and the limitation in the lap joint the ninth one is seam welding process in this process the electrodes in the form of wheels are used and the sheet metal is fed between the two rollers connected with the electrodes and this is the variation of the spot welding process the applications are in the gaseous or the liquid joints and in fabrication then the tenth one is the upset welding process in this process you can use the equation of h is equal to i square rt then v is equal to ir you can use this in process and h is equal to v square upon r into t then hn is equal to 2 into t minus indentation then dm of nugget is equal to dn is equal to 6 into under root t then after the last welding process is gas tungsten arc welding process which is also known as gtaw or tig or you can say that the tig welding process in this process the voltage is in the range of 20 to 40 and current is less than 150 degree ampere then one note is there for aluminium it oxidizes very easily so tig is used for cast iron oxyacetylene or brass welding is there and for stainless steel the welding is difficult due to the ni and cr so tig and mig both are best process for the stainless steel then after the welding defects first one is the gas porosity the second one is the slag inclusion third one is the weld spatter then fourth one is the lack of fusion and penetration then fifth one is the weld cracks sixth one is welding decay and 
सेवंथ इज द हाइड्रोजन इम्ब्रिटमेंट इम्ब्रिटलमेंट एंड एंड सेवंथ इज हाइड्रोजन इम्ब्रिटलमेंट फॉर वेरिएबिलिटी एल्यूमिनियम लेस देन सी यू लेस देन कास्ट आयरन लेस देन माइल स्टील This is the fifth chart of the production technology in which we have covered all the welding processes and the important knots as well as the duty cycles is there. So we hope that you have liked this video. So please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming chart of production technology which is the final chart of production technology subject in which we will cover the all the machining operations thank you so much as you can see here in the milling operation it is used for producing the flat surface in a horizontal vertical and the inclined position for producing 2d countering such as case of the gears clutches and 3d contour of the dies and cavity in mold then helical grooves in the drills are used for milling operation then after milling time Tm is equal to L plus LA plus L0 plus LC upon F into Z into N, where N is equal to RPM, L is equal to length of workpiece, LA is equal to approach, then F is equal to feed, then LC is equal to compulsory approach, and Z equal to number of teeth. From this equation, many times in the gate examination questions were asked, plane milling or the side milling. So the diagram you can see here in the screen. Then cutting teeth on periphery and uh, axis of rotation is parallel to the workpiece surface in this type of milling the lc is equal to under root d into capital d minus d then after four phase milling the cutting teeth on the face and axis of rotation is perpendicular to the workpiece surface then the third one is the symmetric phase milling for this type of milling lc is equal to 1 by 2 into d minus under root d square minus d square then wi is equal to w then after fourth one is asymmetric phase milling so wi is equal to w plus 2 into offset and fifth one is end milling for that cutting tooth are both side face and periphery or the surface then d is equal to w and lc is equal to d by 2 for this type of milling then for the straddle milling it is used to cut the t slot and gang milling is used more than two slab milling cutters are there then on a single arbor these type of operations can be made so these are the types of the milling process then up milling and down milling processes are there so for the up milling process the workpiece and cutter movement are in opposite direction and thickness is in between 0 to the maximum then force will be minimum to maximum and feed f is equal to more and mrr will be more then undercut may be possible and rough operation is there in the up milling process then tool life will lower and wear will be higher then strong holding required and strong jigs and fixtures are used for the up milling process then in the down milling process workpiece and the cutter movement are in same direction t is equal to maximum to 0 then force is equal to maximum to the minimum then feed is less and mrr will also lesser then better surface finish then tool life will higher and wear is lower then strong holding is not required and normal jigs and fixtures are used in this process then these are the some equations which are useful f is equal to f upon n into z then sin theta is equal to 2 into under root d by d then t max is equal to f into sin theta 
then t max is equal to f into 2 into under root d by d then t max is equal to 2 into f upon n into z into under root d by d then third one is average chip thickness t average is equal to f upon n z into under root d by d so t average is also equal to t max by 2 then indexing in milling it can be achieved by divide the peripheries of the workpiece into subdivisions and n subdivisions are there then 360 upon n is equal to angle and suppose 40 holes rotate then one time workpiece will rotate Now coming towards the second operation which is drilling. So it is the oblique cutting operation to cut the cylindrical holes in the workpiece and made from HSS then first HSS blank is forged then forged blank is twisted to increase the torsional rigidity. Then milling cutters are used to make helical grooves called flutes and flutes are on cylindrical periphery so that chip flows outward easily. Then width of the cut for drilling. So depth of the cut D is equal to capital D by 2 and width of the cut W is equal to D upon 2 into sine beta where sine beta is equal to D by W. So that after uncut thickness T1 is equal to F by 2 into sine beta. Then else is equal to D by 2 into cot beta and else is equal to capital D by 2 into tan beta. Then drilling time T D is equal to L upon F N and L is equal to T plus L A plus L naught plus L C. Then the last one is the MRR which is equal to pi by 4 D square into F into N and for blind hole L C is equal to 0.33 D and for conventional processes L C is equal to 0.5 D through hole. Then angle between two cutting edges is equal to point angle 2 beta and standard point angle to beta is equal to 180 then beta is equal to normal taken as 59 degree then after helix angle angle between the leading edge of land and axis of drill bit maximum helix angle is equal to rectangle angle of drill bit after the steel cast iron 116 to 118 degree celsius to beta then for hardened steel 125 degree then for brass and bronze 130 to 140 then wood and plastic 40 to 60 now the third process is broaching it is orthogonal cutting tool and primary is used for making keyways then now used for several shapes especially in the automobile and industries rise per tooth is equal to each of the tooth slightly higher than the previous tooth then gap between two different teeth is called as the pitch then Here you can see that HR is greater than HS greater than HF. It means the height for roughing is greater than height for semi finished teeth is greater than that of the finishing teeth. Then for the broach length LB is equal to LB is equal to ZR into PR plus ZS into PS plus ZF into PF. Then depth of keyway D is equal to ZR into HR plus ZS into HS and the broaching time tv is equal to lb plus t upon vv then keyway cutting then fourth one is keyway cutting for that depth of the keyway d is equal to zr into hr plus zs into hs and for the fifth one enhancing a hole Z is equal to D by H is equal to DF minus DA by 2 into H and D is equal to DF minus DA by 2. So these are the equation these are the equations for the broaching process. Then after ISO designation of the grinding wheel, there are six types. So you have to remember this table because from this table so many times the questions were asked in the exam like if first one is the 30 means manufacturers private marketing then a is the type of abrasive then 220 is equal to grain size then r is equal to hardness 
और सॉफ्टनेस दैन इलेवन इज इक्वल टू स्ट्रक्चर एंड वी इज इक्वल टू टाइप ऑफ बॉन्ड दैन द लास्ट वन ट्वेंटी फाइव वंस अगेन इट इज द प्राइवेट मार्केटिंग टू कीप द रेकॉर्ड so in the types of aggressive there are four types a is 4l to 3b for bonazon then sic for silicon carbide then d for diamond then grain size 10 to 20 is coarse then 30 to 60 is medium then 70 to 180 is finishing then 220 to 600 is very fine then for hardness A to T is soft, then I to P is medium, and P to Z is hard. Then for the structure, one to eight is dense, nine to sixteen is open. Then after types of bond, so V for vitrified or clay bond, then E for silic, then R for rubber, and B for bakelite or resonite, and M for metal bond. Then after the last one is private marketing to keep the record. then there are types of bond in detail here then after shaper slotter and planner so in the shaper tool will reciprocate and feed is given to the workpiece then in the slotter it is vertical then cutting stroke is slow and the return stroke is faster then in the planner the feed is given to the tool and workpiece will reciprocate So there are some equations also similar to the other operations like L is equal to L plus L A plus L naught, then W is equal to W plus W A plus W naught, then number of strokes N is equal to W by F and T one is equal to L by V C plus L by V R. Then after total time taken, T is equal to N into T one where T one is equal to L by V C plus L by V R. Grinding process. Grinding wheel contains the abrasive grades and grinding wheel is milling cutter with infinite number of cutting edges. Then each grade is equal to SPCT means width alpha is between 40 to 60 and SPCT means single point cutting tool. Then in the grinding it is the combination of the shearing, plugging and rubbing. Then there are types of abrasives Here two or three SIC CBN and diamond. Then there are some properties for the grinding wheel, like grit number is inversely proportional to the grain size, and for grinding hard material, the soft grinding wheels were used. Then there are structures are there dense and open, and there are two processes are important like truing. It is an act of the regenerating the required geometry on the wheel before brazing. then in the brazing process the glazed and the loaded wheels are turned at its surface so that the fresh and sharp grits are exposed to the workpiece during the grinding process then sixth one is lathe operations in that there are four to five lathe operations are there first one is for the plain turning operation D is equal to di minus df by 2. Then t1 is equal to l upon f into n1. Then n is equal to 1000 into v upon pi into d1. And t is equal to t1 plus t2 plus t3. Then for the facing process, t is equal to pi upon 4 into fv into df square minus di square. Then for solid plate, t is equal to pi into df square upon 4 into fv. Then for the taper turning process, capital T total is equal to d max into cosec theta upon f into n into n into n plus 1 by 2 then l is equal to d max into cosec theta then t is equal to l upon f n once again ln is equal to d max into cosec theta into n and n is equal to 1000 v upon pi into d1 then for thread cutting process external thread n is equal to 25 upon tpc then internal thread 
n is equal to 30 by TPC, then TPC is equal to thread per cut. Then after gear ratio, GR is equal to pitch of thread upon to the pitch of lead screw. So GR is equal to P of T by P of L. Then gamma is equal to N max upon N min raised to 1 upon N minus 1, where N is equal to 1000 V by pi into D. Then there are taper turning methods. The compound rest method includes D is equal to DI minus DF by 2, then 10 theta is equal to DI minus DF by 2 into L is equal to D by L. And it is not used for the long length and production rate is lower and poor surface finish in the compound rest method. Then in the tail stroke offset method, H is equal to L into 10 theta and H is equal to L into DI minus DF by 2 into L. Then the tail stroke is offset and feeded. Then the last one is foam tool method. In this method, a foam tool is plunged into the workpiece to produce a very small taper such as in case of the chamfering. Now these are some notes for the boring process. If the offset is in upward direction then alpha effective will decrease and gamma effective will increase. If the offset will be in downward direction then alpha effective will increase and gamma effective will decrease. Now the last one is the powder metallurgy. It is the method of producing the fine powder material blended and pressed into the desired shape then heated in a controlled atmosphere. And the manufacturing of powder process there are five steps are there first one is by atomization then the reduction then after third one is electrolytic deposition fourth one is granulation and fifth one is shooting then two important terms are there infiltration and impregnation the infiltration the pm component is dipped into the low melting point alloy in metal alloy and voids are filled by the liquid then decreasing the porosity strength will increase then in the impregnation in this process kept in oil bath the oil penetrate into the void by capillary action during the actual process service condition and the oil is released slowly to provide the necessary lubrication ELU is in CNC machines the length of the work table for one pulse output from the machine is defined as BLU This is all about the 6th chart of the production technology. We have completed all the 6 charts of the production technology. So if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming videos. Now we will start the next subject of the machine design. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books we hope that your preparation is going well so let's start the next video before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the upcoming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box in heat transfer we have made total three charts are there in which will include all the important formulas and concepts of the heat transfer let's begin with the first chart in which will include the basics as well as the conduction process as you can see here in the basics there are modes of heat transfer first one is the conduction heat transfer occurs due to the temperature difference by intermolecular interaction within the body which is known as the conduction then here note that heat transfer deals with the rate of which heat transfer occurs. Then here difference between the thermodynamics and heat transfer. Basically thermodynamics gives you the information about how much heat should be transferred and heat transfer gives the information about how heat is to be transferred. 
then if we talk about the thermodynamics then it can give the information about how much work is required to transfer and in heat transfer you can get that the rate of which heat is to be transferred and there is the closure statement that energy flow from low temperature to high temperature in the body is not possible without the external work because heat is always transferred from high temperature to the low temperature than any system we required both the thermodynamics as well as the heat transfer in the thermal conductivity there are two types of the solids first one is the non metallic and the second one is metallic for the non metallic solid heat transfer due to the lattice vibration then in the metallic solids heat transfer is occurred due to the lattice vibration as well as the motion of free electrons then if we increase the temperature in non metallic solids then k will increase and for the metallic solids with increasing the temperature k will decrease if k is the thermal coefficient then convection includes intermolecular interaction plus the bulk transfer here convection is equal to conduction plus bulk transfer you can say that then types of convection two types are the natural and forced in the natural convection moment of fluid caused by density difference of fluid due to temperature of the body and in the forced convection fluid motion is caused by external agents examples are like boiling water the newton's law of cooling which is also known as the convection law here q is equal to h a into t s minus t infinite t s is always greater than t infinite then in the radiation the transfer of heat by electromagnetic radiation that arises due to the temperature of the body and here q radiation is greater than q conduction greater than q convection so the maximum heat transfer is occurred due to the radiation then stefan's boltzmann law q is equal to sigma b into epsilon into a into ts raised to 4 then sigma b is equal to 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 volt per meter square into k raised to 4 here sigma b is equal to boltzmann constant then for the emissivity as temperature increase the emissivity will be increase then there are some notes there first one is for heating the water in steel vessel then after heating the coil in water and the third note is for freeze door is kept open in the room temperature here in the first case when the surface is not open to sun so you can use the equation of radiation and in the second case when surface is open to the sun then you have to use the total heat transfer equation in which you have to add the 1 kW which is during the open surface then after heat flow in plain wall there are two cases first one is for uniform thermal conductivity and the second one is for different thermal conductivities so the equation will be q is equal to ka t1 minus t2 upon l and for the second case q average is equal to k0 into 1 plus b into tm into a into t1 minus t2 divided by l here b less than 0 for metal b greater than 0 for non metal and b is equal to 0 for k is equal to constant here tm is equal to t1 plus t2 by 2 then the next chapter is conduction in conduction we will include all the equations which are important in the examination let's begin one by one first one is for one dimensional steady state heat conduction the objective of this heat conduction is to determine the temperature of field within the body here dxyz depends on the boundary conditions then generalized equation of conduction del square t plus q by k is equal to 1 upon alpha into dt upon dt here it is known as the equation for cartesian coordinate then after there are some important equations are there based on which 
so many times questions were asked in the gate examination first one is for steady state heat conduction with q is not equal to 0 the equation will be l square t plus q by k is equal to 0 which is known as the Poisson's equation then after the second one unsteady state heat conduction with no heat generation it means q is equal to 0 then the equation will be del square t is equal to 1 upon alpha into dt upon dt here the equation is known as the Fourier's equation then the third one is for steady state heat conduction with q is equal to 0 equation will be del square t is equal to 0 which is known as the Laplace equation then number 4 1d steady state conduction two cases are there first one is for Cartesian coordinates the equation will be del square t upon del x square is equal to 0 and for polar coordinates del square t upon del square r plus 1 upon r into del t upon del r is equal to 0 then generalized equation for the polar coordinate you can note down that as well as there are the equations for spherical coordinates and the cylindrical coordinates are there so you can take a screenshot if you want then here note that TC is equal to thermal conductivity and uh, all electrical conductors are good at the thermal conductors but all thermal conductors are not good at the electrical conductors then the second one is the thermal resistance in that first one is the ohm's law here q is equal to delta t upon rth then first equation for plane wall here you can note down that q is equal to minus k into t2 minus t1 by l then our convective is equal to 1 upon h and q is equal to h delta t then third one is thermal circuit for plane wall the equation will be q is equal to t3 minus t4 divided by r3 it is useful to find the intermediate temperature then fourth one is overall heat transfer coefficient q is equal to ua into t infinite 1 minus t infinite 2 then 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon h1 plus 1 upon h2 plus l by k which is in watt per meter square into kelvin here u is equal to 1 upon a into r then fifth one is for composite wall Q is equal to T1 minus T5 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. This equation is very important for the gate examination. Then the sixth one is the series and parallel arrangement. For the series, sigma R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And for parallel, 1 upon R is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. And there is one example for the different arrangements then after 1d heat conduction through cylinder for that the equation will be for that the equation of our conduction is equal to 1 upon 2 pi kl into ln r2 by r1 and our convection is equal to 1 upon 2 pi rl into h then overall heat transfer coefficient for cylinder sigma r is equal to 1 upon ua here u1 is equal to 1 upon ai into sigma r and u0 is equal to 1 upon a0 into sigma r then after composite cylinders for that the equation of finding the resistance is very important for the examination here r1 is equal to 1 upon h1 into a1 then r2 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi k1 into l into l and r2 by r1 similarly for the third and fourth the equation is there the 2k and k so here the base one is the second one then after the critical thickness of insulation this is also very important for the examination here two cases are there first one is adding insulation for a plane wall then our conduction is greater than our convection in the second case adding insulation for a cylinder here r is equal to our conduction plus convection but here the convection value of R is greater than that of R conduction. 
then thickness of insulation T is equal to RC minus R2 and T is equal to K by H minus R2. This equation of T is mostly asked in the examination then RC is equal to K by H here RC is equal to critical radius. In third case is adding insulation for a sphere RC is equal to 2K by H and T is equal to RC minus R2. Then if R2 is less than RC then up to critical radius Q will increase and after that the heat transfer will be reduced. In the second case R2 greater than RC then Q will decrease here no need of insulation. Then after geometrical mean area the equation of R total is equal to 4 upon k pi s square into 1 upon x1 minus 1 upon x2 and q is equal to delta t upon R total here a is equal to d by x1 then after the next topic is internal heat generation for that first one is for plane wall here t is equal to minus q dot upon 2k into x square plus c1x plus c2 then t wall is equal to q not l upon th then t wall is equal to q not l divided by 2h plus t infinite then t max at x is equal to l by 2 here t max is equal to t1 plus q dot generation into l1 square by 2k then second one is for solid cylinders t is equal to tw plus q dot by 4k into r square minus r square and q dot into acl is equal to h into s into tw minus t infinite then similarly for the sphere t is equal to tw plus q naught by 6k into r square minus r square here you have to remember the values of just only 2 4 and 6 because for the plane world q dot by 2k is there then for cylinder q dot by 4k is there and for sphere q dot by 6k is there then for the sphere t max at the r is equal to 0 and then q dot is equal to 4 by 3 into pi r cube is equal to h into 4 pi r square into tw minus t infinite then heat generated due to the electric current q is equal to i square r and q dot is equal to i square r divided by v here r is equal to rho l upon ac then thermal contact resistance q is equal to delta t by rth here k of air is less than less than that of k of solid here the role of trapped air is reducing the heat transfer that's why in big structures the gap between the two walls are there which is for reducing the heat transfer rate so this is all about the first chart of heat transfer in which we have discussed about the basic formulas of the convection, conduction and radiation. And that after we have included the, all the formulas of the conduction. But still the concepts of the conduction is remaining. We will discuss about that in the second chart. As well as in the second chart we will discuss about the convection and the heat exchangers. So please do like and subscribe for the upcoming videos. Then, and if it is helpful and if the short notes are useful to you then please share to your other friends also is preparing for the examination thank you so much hello and welcome to the bs academy we hope that your preparation is going well so let's start the next video before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. This is the second chart of the heat transfer in which we will start the remaining portion of the conduction. And in the first chart, we have included the basics as well as the portion of conduction in which we have completed the one dimensional steady state heat conduction equation as well as the thermal resistance and the critical thickness of insulation you can check out 
that's all not as you can see here the first concept in the second chart is fins fins are extended surface and heat is transferred by the convection it is used for to increase the convective heat transfer and reduce the temperature of one side the equation will be q is equal to ha into ts minus t infinite then after first one governing differential equation for fin so del square theta upon del x square minus m square theta is equal to 0 which is the equation for the fin then after theta is equal to c1 into cos h into mx plus c2 into sin h into mx then for infinite long fins theta is equal to theta naught into e raised to minus mx then m is equal to under root hp by k into area of cross section then the second one is for infinite long fins theta is equal to theta naught into e raised to minus mx here theta is equal to t minus t infinite and q is equal to under root h into p into k into cross section area into theta naught then here m1 is greater than m2 greater than m3 and for ideal case theta by theta naught is equal to 1 and q is equal to h a into epsilon f into theta naught then third one is for insulated fin tip theta is equal to theta naught into cos h m into l minus x divided by cos h into ml and similarly the equation is given for the convection at tip here lc is equal to l plus d by 2 for rectangular fin and lc is equal to l plus d by 4 for cylindrical fin then after some more equations are there you can take a screenshot for the efficiency and the emissivity of the fin then there is one example which was asked in the gate examination the conical fin enhance the heat transfer rate because more area at more temperature difference then you have to include the q loss is because of the r convection as well as the r radiation then there is some more notes are there first one is the critical insulation thickness of steam then q will decrease then for steam boilers adding insulation will decrease the q you have to remember just one line that by adding the insulation in the boilers the Q will decrease then in the electric wire first the Q is increased up to the critical radius then after the Q will decrease here two more examples are there Now the next topic is transient heat conduction. The governing differential equation is del square t plus q by k is equal to 1 upon alpha into del t upon del t. Here temperature is function of both space and time. So you can say that t is equal to f of x, y, z and t. Then one more important topic is there which is lumped heat analysis. It is an analysis in which the temperature varies only with the time but not with the space. So you can say that T is equal to F of T. Here note that possible causes for lump system is first one is thermal conductivity is too much higher then the conduction is resistance less and the second one is the object is very small. Then the next topic is the time required by a system to reach particular temperature here the equation will be here the equation is h a t infinite minus t is equal to mcp into dt upon dt here the equation is h a into t infinite minus t is equal to mcp into dt upon dt then t minus t infinite divided by t naught minus t infinite is equal to e raised to minus h a upon rho cv into t so you can say that theta by theta naught is equal to e raised to minus vt this equation is also very useful then t is equal to t2 plus t1 minus t2 into e raised to minus bt body is cools down and when the body is heats up in both the cases t3 greater than t2 greater than t1 then characteristics length for various shape 
here for the slab lc is equal to l by 2 then for sphere lc is equal to r by 3 for cylinder lc is equal to r by 2 and for cube lc is equal to l by 6 then after for lump system bi is equal to hlc by k less than or equal to 0.1 then theta by theta naught is equal to e raised to minus bi into fo is equal is equal to t minus t infinite by t naught minus t infinite then for your number f naught is equal to alpha t upon lc square then bi is equal to minus ha upon rho cb this is all about the conduction chapter now we'll start the next one which is convection and if you like this video please do like and subscribe to our academy then here in the convection First one is the definition. The heat transfer in presence of a fluid motion on a solid surface is given by convective heat transfer and the equation for that Q is equal to HA delta T. Then classification of convection flows. First one is based on the driving mechanism. First one is force convection, the second one is free convection. Then after based on the geometry there are two types. First one is internal flow and the second one is external flow. Here in the internal here in the internal flow fluid is surrounded by the solid body that can resist the development of boundary layer. The example is flow through pipe and it, then in the external flow fluid is unbounded by solid body so that in the external flow boundary layer can be developed. Then after boundary layer concept is there, it is a fluid layer over the solid surface in which the gradient exists and if the viscous force is sufficient then velocity gradient exists which is called the velocity boundary layer and it is also known as the hydrodynamic boundary layer. Then after if the thermal force is significant then temperature gradient is exist and it is known as the thermal boundary layer. Here note that the above boundary layer temperature and velocity of the fluid is same as free stream condition. Then after boundary layer thickness the equations of that is very useful. Delta is equal to 5 into x divided by Rex. Here delta proportional to Pr raised to 1 by 3 into del D. Then delta is proportional to root x is proportional to 1 upon hx. Here in general you have to remember that q is proportional to 1 upon delta t, 1 upon dt and 1 upon lc. Then this note is most important in the examination because frequently the questions were asked based on the relation between this to del and delta t. So for PR is equal to 1 which is Prandtl number, delta is equal to delta T. Then for PR is less than 1, delta is less than delta T. And for PR greater than 1, delta greater than delta T. So in general you can remember that PR is proportional to delta. Here delta is for hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness and delta T is the thermal boundary layer thickness. Then after force convection correlations, first one is the Nusselt number, here NU is equal to HLC by K, then after Reynolds number R is equal to rho L by mu, then the third one is Prandtl number, PR is equal to mu CP by K, then rec coefficient FD is equal to CF into rho e square by 2 into A, here it is the value of average rec coefficient. Then fourth one is Gresov number. Here R is equal to GR into PR. Then after Reynolds Colton analog. Here ST is equal to NU upon R into PR. ST is equal to Stanton number. And NU is equal to Nusselt number. R is equal to Reynolds number. PR is equal to Prandtl number. Here R is equal to GR into PR where R is equal to Rayleigh's number. 
here ra is equal to gr into pr in which ra is equal to railing number gr is equal to kreshoff number and pr is equal to prandtl number then the local nature of convective correlations first one is for the laminar flow or you can say that the flow over a flat plate with the constant volt temperature here first one is laminar flow in which a flow over a flat plate with constant volt temperature then local temperature then value of local nu is equal to then the equation of local nu x is equal to 0.332 into rx raised to 1 by 2 into pr raised to 1 by 3 here h bar is equal to 2 into hl then average nu bar is equal to 0.664 into r e raised to 1 by 2 into pr raised to 1 by 3 then for the here in this type the temperature is constant and in the second type for heat flux is constant here the value of nu is equal to 0.453 into r e x raised to 1 by 2 into pr raised to 1 by 3 and and u bar is equal to 0.906 into r e s 1 by 2 and p r e s 1 by 3 then similarly for the turbulent flow the equations are given constant then here one more note is there h l bar is less than that of h t bar and h bar at t is equal to constant is less than that of h bar at q is equal to constant as well as the third note is there at t is equal to constant h bar is equal to 2 into hl and fourth note for q is equal to constant h bar is equal to 1.25 into h from these four notes so many times questions were asked so just you have to remember this notes then for the free convection the equations of the horizontal plate and the vertical plate are given there you can take a screenshot then here nu is equal to q convection by q conduction is equal to r conduction by r convection which is always greater than 1 then for pipe flow two conditions are there first one is for t is equal to constant and in the second one the q is equal to constant so you can take a screenshot for that equations also then after volumetric expansion coefficient beta is equal to 1 minus beta is equal to minus 1 upon rho into d rho by dt at p is equal to constant and nu is equal to 0.15 into ra l raised to 1 by 3 then after for free convection then after this table is also very important for finding the value of lc and l here for the free convection for horizontal plate lc is equal to as by p similarly for the force convection lc is equal to l then in the horizontal cylinder lc is equal to d and lc is equal to l then for horizontal circular plate lc is equal to d by 4 in the free convection and in the force convection lc is equal to d then vertical plate lc is equal to l for both the convections then here nu is equal to 0.15 into r a raised to 1 by 3 is the equation for the free convection here n is equal to 1 by 3 for the turbulent flow and n is equal to 1 by 4 for the laminar flow then the third chapter is heat exchangers here first one is the definition it is device in which heat transfer occurs from one fluid to another fluid mainly used to condense the vapor and to evaporate the liquid also to recover the heat first here the classification of heat exchanger in that first one is based on heat exchanging process in that type also there are two types 
first one is the regenerators and the second one is the recuperators then based on the relative direction of motion three types are there cross flow parallel flow and the counter flow then there is the special case for that the equation of q is equal to ua into theta m here for the same heat transfer the area of parallel flow is greater than that of the area of counter flow hence the counter flow heat exchanger is more economical for the same heat transfer then after lmtd which is most important for the gate examination the full form of lmtd is logarithmic mean temperature difference and the equation for q is equal to ua theta m theta m is equal to theta naught minus theta l upon ln theta naught upon theta l then ntu is equal to number of transfer unit and the equation for that ntu is equal to ua by m dot into cp small and effectiveness of heat transfer for the parallel flow epsilon parallel is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus ntu into 1 plus c divided by 1 plus c then epsilon counter is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus ntu into 1 minus c divided by 1 minus c into e raised to minus ntu in bracket 1 minus c then after two special cases are there first one is for gas turbine and recuperator the equation of epsilon parallel and counter is given there the equation of epsilon parallel is equal to 1 minus exponential of minus 2 into ntu divided by 2 then epsilon of counter is equal to 1 minus exponential of minus ntu here note that for gas turbine and recuperator c is equal to 1 then for then the second case is for boiling and condensation c is equal to 0 and epsilon is equal to 1 minus exponential raised to minus ntu and the next topic is the radiation this is just brief introduction about the radiation in detail we'll discuss about that in the last chart of heat transfer here first one is the definition radiation is the energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves as a result of changes in the electronic configuration of the atoms and molecules then in radiation the internal energy of the object decreases and there is one chart for electromagnetic spectrum or wave then here note that in the infrared curve lambda range lie between the thermal radiation and the microwave then for the second one thermal radiation can be reflected refracted and subjected to scattering and absorption when they pass through the media then the final note for this chart of heat transfer that the properties of emission mainly depends on temperature, nature, wavelength and the frequency of the radiation. So this is all about the second chart of heat transfer in which we have discussed about the remaining portion of conduction as well as the convection and the heat exchangers. Now in the final chart of the heat transfer, we will discuss about the radiation portion. So please do like and subscribe for the upcoming chart of radiation and if it is useful then share to your other friends also thank you so much
Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos. In the heat transfer, we have completed two charts in which we have discussed about the basics, then conduction, convection, and heat exchangers. The links for that are in description box. In the heat transfer, this is the final chart of the subject in which we will discuss about the radiation and some basic portion of the radiation also we have covered in the second chart now let's begin from that second chart here first one is the properties of surface emission depends on the temperature nature wavelength and frequency then here for the total emissive power e is equal to sigma into epsilon into a into t raised to 4 into W. Here for black body emissivity is equal to 1 and, and for grey body emissivity is equal to 0 to 1. Then sigma b is equal to 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 port per meter square into Kelvin raised to 4. This is known as the Boltzmann constant. Then the second one is Kirchhoff's law. It states that the emissivity is equal to alpha when the body remains in the thermal equilibrium with its surrounding. Then the third one is the irradiation. It is the total incident on a surface from all direction per unit time per unit area of surface. Then the fourth one is radiosity J. J is equal to all of the radiant energy leaving a surface per unit time per unit area of surface. Here the equation of J is equal to epsilon plus rho into G. Then Planck's law. E lambda b is equal to 2 pi c square into h lambda raised to minus 5 divided by exponential into ch by lambda kt minus 1. This equation is very helpful in the examination. Then fifth one is absorptivity. It is the fraction of incident radiation absorbed. And reflexivity is equal to rho. Then third one is in the transmissivity the fraction of incident radiation transmitted then the note of this table is very helpful in the examination for black body alpha is equal to 1 rho is equal to 0 and tau is equal to 0 epsilon is equal to 1 similarly for the opaque body tau is equal to 0 alpha plus rho is equal to 1 then for white body rho is equal to 1 alpha epsilon and tau is equal to 0 then for grey body emissivity is between 0 to 1 and tau is equal to 0. Then after heat exchanger for non black bodies. First one is infinite parallel planes. Then q12 is equal to sigma to t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 divided by 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1. The value of q12 will be in watt per meter square. Then here this equation is for the net radiation heat exchanger. Then if a surface is black then q12 is equal to sigma into t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4. Here epsilon is equal to 1 and alpha is equal to 1. Then for equivalent emissivity epsilon bar is equal to 1 divided by 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1 then for infinite long concentric cylinder let consider two cylinder as shown in the figure then a1 into f12 is equal to a2 into f21 here f12 is equal to 1 and f21 plus f22 is equal to 1 then f21 is equal to a1 by a2 from this concept also the questions were asked so many times in the examination just you have to remember one thing that if a closed cylinder is outside then that of the other cylinder then for insider cylinder the value of f12 will be 1 then q12 is equal to a1 into sigma into t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 divided by 1 upon epsilon 1 plus a1 by a2 into 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1 
then t proportional to root x and k is equal to k0 into 1 plus a t. Here for a greater than 0, temperature will increase, for a less than 0, temperature will increase but k will decrease. Then radiation seal concept, for that q12 of sealed is equal to a into sigma into t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 divided by 1 upon epsilon 1 plus 1 upon epsilon 2 minus 1 the summation of j is equal to 1 to n into 1 upon epsilon j1 plus 1 upon epsilon j2 minus 1 here if the seals have same epsilon then in the first case if one seal is used then 50 percent reduction will be there then if 9 seal is used then 90 percent reduction is there then after for monochromatic emissive power of black body equation will be eb lambda is equal to c1 lambda raised to minus 5 divided by e raised to c2 by lambda t minus 1 here the value of c1 and c2 also you have to remember then Wayne's displacement law lambda max into t is equal to constant this is also important for the examination then eb is equal to sigma b into epsilon into a into t raised to 4 then after sixth one is the Lambert's cosine law e theta is equal to en into cos theta here note that solid angle by sphere theta is equal to 4 pi and for hemisphere theta is equal to 2 pi then emissive power of black body is pi times then the intensity of radiation eb is equal to pi into i then the last topic of heat transfer is safe factor the fraction of radiative energy that is diffused from one surface element and strikes the other surface directly with no intervening reflection here f12 is equal to fraction of energy here the equation of f12 is equal to q.12 divided by q.1 and similarly for f21 q.21 divided by q.2 then we are note that fmn which is safe factor only depends on the geometry and 0 less than or equal to fmn less than or equal to 1 here if the body is enclosed by the other body then f12 will be 1 which we have discussed earlier so this is all about the subject of heat transfer in which we have included all the important formulas of the heat transfer so for that the upcoming chart of the theory of machines please subscribe and press the bell icon and to like this video as well as share to your other friends who is preparing for the examination thank you so much Hello everyone, welcome to MyDC Global. Today we are discussing about the lean manufacturing which is newly added topic in the gate examination 2021. These are the topics like 5S technique, then after Kaizen, then pool manufacturing, mistake proofing, quick changeover, then Six Sigma and the TOC. Let's see one by one. Here in the diagram, as you can see that first one is what is lean? So in the western world price is defined as cost plus profit but nowadays in Japan mainly Toyota company employed the following expression which is profit is equal to price minus cost. So basically we have to reduce the cost for increasing the profit in the lean manufacturing. Then after the definitions here value is equal to performance by cost and waste is equal to any activity that consumes resources but creates no value which is also known as muda then after the next topic is the toyota production system here toyota has developed its production system around eliminating three enemies of lean first one is muda which stands for waste then after muri which is for overburden and third one is mura for unevenness 
here in the diagram you can also see the images of the three different type of TPS production systems so these are the enemies of the lean manufacturing then after the next topic is seven ways of the lean first one is the inventory then after waiting then third one is defects then after ore production then motion then transportation and the ore processing so by eliminating this waste we can achieve the lean manufacturing then after some questions here first one is how is the lean manufacturing achieved by an organization so here it is simple but confusing sometimes so answer is elimination of waste then after the next question is which waste type the shortage of materials is classified under so the answer is waiting then third question is which factor is the main motivation for organization to adopt lean manufacturing here the answer is increasing competition then next question is which waste is also called the ore processing here the answer is non value processing so there are some questions which are easy but but sometimes it's confusing in the examination now the next topic is 5s technique so here as you can see that 5s includes sort set sign standardize and sustain these five steps are important in the 5s techniques and you have to remember the order of the process also because sometimes in the examination the question may be asked like which is the third step of the 5s technique then after next topic is visual factory implementation so here in this technique you have to just identify first one is the map of the company then after the necessary realignment of the walkways then assign an address to each of major action areas and the following topics are so on so you can read and take a screenshot if you want then after what is kaizen here kai means change or action to correct and zen means good for the better basically it stands for change for improvement and here three different terms are there like first one is the value added process or sometimes some non value added process but which are required which is denoted by nva and r and the third one is non value added process then after the kaizen is run by the damming cycle here it includes here the damming cycle includes plan do check and act so it is also known as pdca cycle here act is for the implement the base solution then after in the plan identify your problems then in the do test potential solution and in the check study results so this is the cycle the cycle is very important and also known as damming cycle so in general kaizen is used for the gradual or orderly and continuous improvement and it is one of the most important tool of lean manufacturing that after the next topic is pool manufacturing why pool manufacturing is required so here you can see that work centers only authorized to produce when it has been signaled that there is a need from a user or downstream department and no resources kept busy just to increase utilization so you can say that pool manufacturing is always required when the demand of the customers are there so it is purely based on the demands of the customer here it requires the small lot sizes then after low inventory then fast throughout and the guaranteed quality then after next one is sometimes inventory hides the problems like the unavailable vendors or scrap or capacity imbalance 
so here lowering inventory is the solution for that type of problems so here in this process you can achieve this by reducing variability then after eliminating waste then after streamlining production and material flows and the next one is accurate information then after the next topic is JIT here JIT is one of the most useful tool of the lean manufacturing which stands for just in time here the diagram is also there for JIT so just in time is purely based on the customer demands it is forced by driving inventory out of the production system and supplies and components are pulled through systems to arrive where they are needed when they are needed and the main goal of the JIT is achieve the minimal level of the resources required to add the necessary value in the production system so these are the main five factors you can see in the diagram TQC then product planning then after inventory then supply chain integration then after here you can see that the objectives of the JIT first one is to produce only the products the customer wants and the next one is produce the products only at the rate that customer wants them then after produce with perfect quality then produce with minimum lead time and the next one is produce products with only those features the customer wants so these are the main objectives of the JIT then after JIT principles here the first one is one piece flow production then after machines in order of process then small and inexpensive equipment then after use a layout then multi-process handling workers, then easy moving and the standard operations defined. So these are the objectives of the GIT and the principles of the GIT. These are the small things but sometimes the MSQ questions will be asked in the gate examination based on these topics. So you have to note down every points from that slides you can see here in the screen. Then after the next topic is Kanban which is also most important tool here Ken is Japanese word which stands for the card and Ben is also Japanese word which stands for signal it may be a card or maybe flag or maybe the verbal signal and Kanban quantities are a function of lead time and consumption rate of the item Then after here it is the sample of Kanban card you can see in the screen here and there are two types C card and P card. So this is the sample of the Kanban card which contains customer location container and here C card for the conveyance and P card for the production. Then after work balancing or you can say the take time. So Take time is calculated as total available production time per day divided by daily required customer demand in parts per day. Take time is the rate at which customer requires your product. And work balancing maximizes the operator efficiency by matching work content to take time. So this equation you have to remember for the take time. Then after the next topic is mistake proofing. Here you can say that POKAYOK, the use of the process or design features to prevent errors or their negative impact. It is also known as POKAYOK which is Japanese slang for avoiding inadvertent errors which was formalized by Sigyo Singo and it is inexpensive and very effective process. So here you can see the diagram also for the mistake proofing. The second one is the right assembly. Then after next one is what caused the errors. So there are mainly five types. First one is poor processors or standards. Then the next one is machines. Then third one is non-conforming material. Fourth one is worm tooling. And fifth one is human mistakes. 
then after common mistake proofing devices are guide pins then blinking lights and alarms then limit switches proximity switches and the other sensors then the next tool is single minute exchange of dials here it is also known as smed here you have to remember the full form of the smed because this full form is also important for the examination and single minute exchange of die is changing process tooling in 9 minutes or less this question was asked in the examination one time then after change over is defined as it is the total process of the converting a machine or line from running one product to another so here in the smd internal activities are converted in the external setups then smd process here you can see the steps first one is separate internal and external activities then after the convert internal activities to external activities and the third one is streamline all activities and then last one is document internal and external procedures so these are the four stages of the smd process This process is mainly used for reducing the time for the tool changing by converting internal to external this you have to remember. Then after the next tool is Six Sigma. Here as you all know this is very important for the examination point of view. Here it includes 3.4 defects per 1 million products and in the diagram you can see here for plus or minus 1 sigma 68% accuracy is there then for plus or minus 2 sigma 95% accuracy is there and for plus or minus 3 sigma 99.7% accuracy is achieved and it is based on the DMAIC or you can say that define, measure, analyze, improve and control cycle there are 5 types of cycles on which 6 sigma is run so you can Remember this DMAIC which is important for the examination point of view. Here then after the next one is 3 sigma versus 6 sigma. In the 3 sigma company will spend 15 to 25 percent of sales dollars on a cost of failure and in the six sigma companies will spend five percent of sales dollars on cost failure so these are some points you can take a screenshot if you want then the next topic is theory of constraints here the constraints will determine the output of the system whether they are acknowledged and managed or not and minimum capacity is equal to maximum product rate this simple thing you have to remember for the examples of theory of constraints here in the diagram you can see that also then after significance of bottlenecks maximum speed of the process is the speed of the slowest operation in the bottlenecks and any improvements will be wasted unless the bottleneck is relieved. Here the question is also there. What will be the maximum output per hour from a process with 4 steps having outputs of 20 units per hour, 25 units per hour, 30 units per hour and 15 minutes per hour? Here the answer is 15 units per hour which is maximum output per hour for the process. Now here, this is the summary of all tools of the lean manufacturing. Although we have not covered all the tools, but we have included in this video which are most important for the examination. And here we have provided the full forms of the tools which are included in the lean manufacturing. So first one is TQM. The full form of TQM is Total Quality Management. Second one is KPI, which means Key performance indicator then after 5y which indicates simply asking why until desired solution then fourth one is QCC which is for quality control cycle 
Then fifth one is OAE which is for overall equipment efficiency. Here 100% OAE represents the perfect performance. Then after number six, Endon which is for managerial maintenance and in this type of tool, alert is given by manually or automatically. Then number seven, pool system which is based on demand. Then here number eight which is 5S. Here in this, you have to remember the order of the system which is sort, set, sign, standardize and sustain. Then after JIT which is for just in time. Then Pokayok for the mistake proofing. Then Kanban. In this, Can is for card and Ben is for signal. Once again here C type for conveyance and withdraw. And P type for production. Then after Kazan in which K for change. Zen for good and it indicates the continuous improvement. Then after line balancing or take time, here it is the product rate required by the customer. Then SMAD which is for single minute exchange of dice. In this one you have to convert internal to external and time less than 9 minutes. Then the last one is 3M, here Muda for waste, Muri for overburden and Mura for unevenness. So in these last two slides, we have covered all the important terms for the examination. You can take a screenshot if you want. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to Medici Global. And share this video to all your other friends who is preparing for the GATE examination. Similarly, we have made quick reason for all the subjects of the mechanical engineering. The links for that videos are in description box. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, welcome to Medesi Global. Today we are discussing about LED manufacturing which is newly added topic in the GATE examination 2021. So here as you can see that LED manufacturing is a group of emerging technologies that creates objects from the bottom by adding material one cross-sectional layer at a time. Then after revisiting the childhood analogy this is conceptually similar to creating an object using building blocks. Then generalized steps of AM technology you can see here. This is the diagram for the different steps like 3D CAD, then .steel file, then slicing software, then layer slice and tool path, then after AM processes and at the end 3D object. Here additive manufacturing processes are also known as stereolithography then after cloning design then rapid prototyping and the fabrication then after based on these three types additive manufacturing process can be classified first one is liquid based here in the liquid based stereolithography then after jetting system then direct light processing then after in the powder based selective laser centering, three-dimensional printing, then fused metal deposit system, electron beam melting, and so on. Then in the solid-based fused deposition modeling and seat stacking technologies. We are discussing here the stereolithography as well as fused deposition modeling. Here there are some pros and cons means advantages and disadvantages of the additive manufacturing system. First one is in the advantages here you can see that freedom to design and innovate without penalties then after rapid iteration through design permutations then excellent for mass customization elimination of tooling green manufacturing then minimal material waste and energy efficient. So these are the advantages of the additive manufacturing now let's see what are the disadvantages. First one is unexpected pre and post processing requirements. Then after high process cost, then lack of industry standards, low speed, not suitable for mass production, incongestion material.
than limited number of materials and high equipment cost per high end manufacturing so these are the disadvantages of the additive manufacturing system and here the next topic is stl file the advantages of dot stl files are it provides simple method of representing 3d data then standard and has been used by most CAD system and RP systems. Here RP for rapid prototype. Then after it can provide small and accurate files for data transfer for certain steps. Then disadvantages are the STL file size is larger than original CAD file. Then the geometry flows exist in the STL file. And the last one is the subsequent slicing of large STL files can take many hours. Basically, dot .stl file is required more time as compared to the other softwares. Then here some more notes about stl file. Here stl stands for standard triangle language or stereolithography and standard tessellation language. Then after stl files describe only the surface geometry of a three dimensional object without any representation of color, texture or other common CAD model attributes. Then after the STL format specifies both ASCII and binary representations. Then after binary files are more common since they are more compact. It is one type of extension file. Then here STL uses triangles to build surfaces. Each triangle is described as 3 points and 1 facet normal vector indicated in outward side of triangle. Here the diagram is also there. Then after part build time in STL. Here the equation is Ti is equal to Ai by Vd plus Td. Here Ti is equal to time to complete layer. Then Ai is equal to area of layer. Then Tc is equal to STL build cycle time. Here the equation of Tc is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to ni into ti. So these two equations are very important in the examination. Then after the first process is stereolithography. The short form of stereolithography is SLA. You have to remember this short form. Then after here it is also known as the stereolithography apparatus optical fabrication, photo solidification or resin printing. It is a form of 3D printing technology used for creating models, prototypes, patterns and production parts in a layer by layer fashion. Here the diagram is also there. You can see the diagram. It used the photochemical process by which light causes chemical monomers and Oligomers to cross link together to form the polymers and those polymers then make up the body of a three-dimensional solid Then after the next process is selective laser sintering which is SLS So here it is an additive manufacturing technology that uses a laser to sinter powdered plastic material into a solid structure based on a 3d model SLS 3D printing has been a popular choice for engineer in product development of decades. Then after third one is laminated object manufacturing LOM. It is a rapid prototyping system developed by Helices Incorporate. Cubic Technologies is also now successor organization of Helices. Then in it layers of adhesive coated paper plastic or metal laminates are successively glued together and cut to shape with a knife or laser cutter. Here basically in the LOM the layers are made from the seeds. Then the next process is 3D printing. It is also known as additive manufacturing and 3D printing has come a long way since it was first developed in 1980s. While 3D printing originated as a tool for rapid prototyping it has now evolved to cover a number of different technologies. Then here the table is very useful for the examination because all the important process we have included in this table. First one is for liquid type stereolithography. It includes liquid layer curing. Then phase of change of type is photo polymerization and materials which can be used in the 
the stereo lithography are photopolymers and resins then after in the FDM process the layer creating technique is extrusion of molten polymer and the phase change type is solidification by cooling materials are polymers wax and metals then coming towards the powder which includes 3d printing and layer creating technique is layer of powder and binder jet deposition here no phase change in the 3d printing and the materials are ceramic polymer metal powders here no phase change and materials are paper and polymers so you can take a screenshot if you want then after the questions which are important for the examination first one is to meet the customers demand in today's market we need we can say that rapid manufacturing then after the next one is the renewal of production process and the establishment of environmentally friendly operations within the manufacturing field is called as green manufacturing then after the next question is as you can see here which of the following is an additive manufacturing process so the answer is stereolithography you can say that this is the oldest method of the additive manufacturing then after the next question is if a polymer changes its properties when exposed to light it is known as photopolymerization this we have recently seen in the table then after what is STL format stands for here all three names are true for the STL file then after next question is additive manufacturing is generally a blank process so you can say that 3d process then after which radiations can be used for photopolymerization diffusion of diffusion between the powder particles by heating is based called as sintering then after the next question is after the design is made in software what is made first to use it as a sample for reproducing the particular goods the answer is prototype then what is the common characteristic of chemically induced sintering answer is porosity then after the precision in fused deposition molding depends upon bonding force weight of upper layer and sifting of layers so these are the questions which are useful in the examination after next one is directly printing from a CAD file reduces the number of in-house remakes due to the error by 100% then after STL file format uses three triangular points and one facet normal vector then the next question is blank are used for high quantity production in traditional manufacturing here the answer is special purpose machines then after next one is which of the following is required to achieve very low porosity level the answer is long sintering time here it is confusing sometimes here remember that long sintering time is there then after sport size is smaller in the stereolithography apparatus so these are some important questions from the additive manufacturing now let's see some important concepts from the CAD here some eight useful terms are there first one is SAPM which stands for standard for the exchange of product model data then CAM which is for computer data manufacturing then CAQ for computer added quality assurance then CAD for computer added design then CRT for cathode ray tube then CATD for computer added tool design then CAE for computer added engineering and last one is SMPD which is for synchronous modeling and parametric design then after two basic techniques for generating CRT screen here first one is stroke writing which is based on point to point line diagram and the second one is raster scan which is based on matrix of pixel so these two terms are also important then after here in the solid modeling two basic approaches are there first one is CSG which is known as constructive solid geometry or building block approach and the second one is BREP which is for boundary representation now the next one is matrix operations here first one is rotation in this first one is counterclockwise for that you have to remember the value of R which is cos theta minus sin theta and sin theta cos theta so you have to just multiply this R matrix with the given matrix here one example is like if you have to 
rotate any matrix by 90 degree counterclockwise then you have to multiply it by the matrix of R. So here the answer is 0 minus 1 and 1 0. Then after the next one is transformation or you can say that 3D rotation. Here you have to remember these three values of Rx, Rz and Ry. Similarly for the scaling, you have to multiply the given matrix with the scaling factor. If the question is like the given point P31 is scaled by the factor of 2 then you have to multiply the identity matrix by the factor of 2 then multiply A into T is equal to ADS. So here the next new point is 6 and 2. The last one but not the least which concatenated transformation. In this you have to multiply the given matrix with the transformation and then after the rotation. Here the order of ATR is important for the examination. Now here we have included some important transformations. You can directly remember this. These are some common matrix transformations based on which the questions were so many times asked in the examination. You can take a screenshot if you want. First one is identity matrix. Here the matrix is 1001. Here just keep one thing in the mind. Here all the matrix transformations are applied with reference to the identity matrix. So the first one is reflection in the y-axis. Then after the next one is reflection in the x-axis. Then rotation by 180 degree is there. So here the xy will be converted into minus x minus y. Similarly reflection in the line y is equal to x. So your xy will be interchanged in y dash x then rotation by 90 degree anti-clockwise then after rotation by 90 degree clockwise and reflection in the line y is equal to minus x so here xy will be converted into minus y minus x then after these four are very important enlargement by scale factor a in the x direction right here you just have to multiply a with x because the direction given is x direction similarly in the y direction you have to multiply a with y then after enlargement by scale factor a from the origin so you have to multiply a with both x and y then the last one is if enlargement by scale factor of a in the x direction and scale factor b in the y direction then you have to multiply a with x and b with y so these are some common matrix transformations based on which questions were so many times asked in the examination so that's it this is all about this video if you like this video please do like and subscribe to mad is global we have made quick reasons for all the subjects of the mechanical engineering the links for that videos are in the description box you can check out the links are there please share this video to all your other friends who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. Now here in the general aptitude and operability, we will discuss about the important concepts which were frequently asked in the gate examination. But for the general aptitude and the verbal ability, you have to practice more and more questions for the examination because from the practice only you can get the idea about how to approach the questions from the general aptitude and verbal ability. So here we'll provide some important notes and the formulas for calculating the examples in easy way. Basically in this video we have prepared 26 concepts from the general aptitude and in the verbal ability we have made total 20 short notes let's begin one by one here the first type of questions which are like under root a into under root a into under root a then the answer will be a then similarly if under root 12 plus under root 12 plus under root 12 for infinite terms 
12 is the multiplication of 4 into 3. Here the sign between two terms are positive so you should take the bigger value from the multiplication. So the answer is directly 4. And if the value is negative then you take the smaller value. So in the case of 12 minus 12 the answer will be 3. So the questions from the general aptitude are looking very difficult but if you have gone through their notes once then you can solve it just in 2 to 3 seconds then after the third one is is under root 7 plus under root 7 plus under root 7 up to infinite then here 7 is the prime number so you cannot divide into two parts so you have to use the formula 1 plus under root 1 plus 4a by 2 here a is equal to 7 then similarly y is equal to under root sin x plus under root sin x up to infinite terms then the answer will be cos x upon 2y minus 1 then fourth one is number of square is equal to sigma n is equal to m cross n where m is equal to number of columns and n is equal to number of rows then after sigma n square is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6 which is used for the summation of In the examination there may be the combination of the figures also can be asked. So here for the first figure if the diagram is like this then there are 5 triangles are there and in the second one if the star is like this then 8 triangles are there and in the rectangular star the 10 triangles are there then here if this type of diagram is there and you have to find the number of triangles then you have to just add the number of divisions which are given at the bottom like 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and you have to just multiply the number of divisions in the vertical direction which are 2 so the answer will be 10 into 2 is equal to 20 so th in this way we have prepared our short notes in which we have used tricks and tips for the general aptitude and verbal ability. Next one is for this type of figure 8 triangles are there and for this type of figure 5 squares are there. Then number of parallelograms are mc2 into nc2 here m is equal to number of columns and n is equal to number of rows. Then ncr is equal to n factorial upon n minus r factorial into r factorial and ncr is equal to n c n minus r then after four trains there are some formulas first one is if two trains cross each other and you have to find the time to cross the tree or time to cross the pole or time to cross the man or time to cross the objects then you can use this formula directly t is equal to l of t1 divided by s of t1 plus s of t2 where t is equal to time l is equal to length and s is equal to speed then in general t is equal to l of t by s of t then here remember that if the man in the second train you have to take length of the train 1 then after you have to take the positive sign for the opposite direction and you have to take the negative sign for the same direction then time required for the crossing the bridge or the platform t is equal to l of t plus l of b divided by s of t in general in any case for finding the time you have to just take the relative length by relative speed then after the concept of percentages here in that also there are three cases first one is if a is 50 percent more than b this type of question is asked then you can calculate it by 50 into 100 by 150 you have to use the cross multiplication here then in the second one if a is 10 percent less than b then you can calculate by 10 by 90 into 100 and if a is 20 percent less than b then you have to take 20 by 80 into 100 then in the third case 
if the radius is increased by 10% or area is increased by 10% then you can use that v is equal to lbh upon lb which is equal to x plus y plus xy by 100 here you have to take positive for the increase value and you have to take the negative for the decreasing so here for example if area is increased by 10% then the equation will be like 10 cross 10 divided by 100 plus 10 plus 10 so the increase in the area is 21% here in the number series if the example can be solved by both the methods by taking the difference between two terms or by prime numbers difference so you have to give the priority first to the prime numbers that which prime numbers should be the next prime number remember this thing and in the later series you have to give the priority first to the difference not to the prime number so in the later series the difference is first priority you have to just remember that then then after if number of terms are odd then average equal to k and if number of terms are even then average equal to k minus 1 in the coding and decoding questions you have to consider the statement given is true without thinking the simple logic that sun is rise in the north direction so you have to take that statement is true that sun is in rise in the north direction you need not to apply any simple logic in the coding and decoding questions then after the 12th one is for log there are two formulas log m at a is equal to m log a and log a by log b is equal to log b to a here the example is log a to a is equal to 1 then for general rise you can use this concept that if the sum of edges numbers are 7 then that values are opposite numbers to each other like here 3 and 4 are opposite to to 5 and 6 then after for the blood relations you can use the general symbols like for couple you can use this symbol then for parent or child you can use the arrows or line and for brother you can use positive symbols and for sister you can use negative similarly for male you can use positive and for female you can use negative here plus and minus doesn't matter you have to just use any symbol which you can remember very easily Here in the first one, P is the daughter of R. Then in the second one, P is the granddaughter of R. So in the blur relation, you have to just use the notations. And after that, you can solve it very easily. The questions of blur relations, you can calculate from applying simple logic also. But it takes more time as compared to using the symbols. So please use the symbols while calculating the examples of blood relations then after here in 15 topic there are some series from which the questions were asked frequently like here in the third one k raised to n plus n was asked in the 2013 then after the gap of increase with 0.5 was asked in 2016 then after in 2018 the multiplication is reduced by 1 like first it is multiplied by 6 then after multiplied by 5 and the answer will be 1440 so for the series you have to just practice more and more questions because any kind of series can be asked in the examination there is no any other way so just you can go through some concepts here like the series in the form of n square or n square plus 1 or n square minus 4 or n cube or n cube plus 1 or k raise to n plus n or k raise to n minus n or prime numbers or prime number square or prime number square plus or minus 1 etc this type of series can be asked in the examination and difference of prime numbers as well then after in the 16 
topic here ratio and proportional for this type of questions first one is the equation for finding the duplicate ratio a square gem b square then second one is sub duplicate ratio you can find by under root a gem under root b then triplicate ratio a cube gem b cube and inverse ratio 1 by a gem 1 by b so here you have to remember that duplicate ratio can be find by a square gem b square this is very simple but sometimes students don't know that what is the duplicate ratio so then after there is one more example for the ratio of proportionality now the 17th concept is for mixture in which for a g gem c and for b g gem c then what is the percentage of g gem c in the mixture of a and b so first we have to add the proportion like 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 then 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 you have to multiply the 5 with 10 for equalizing the value so the proportion of a will be 4 gem 6 then after you can find the proportional of g gem c by adding the value of a and b so this is very simple in this way you can find the proportion questions similarly there is proportion question which was asked in the 2019 then after in the direction you can use the sunrise concept then there are some notes are there if the shadow is in the left side then people is facing in a north side then if shadow is on the right side then person is facing in south south then if shadow is backward then facing in east direction and if a forward shadow is there then person is facing in west direction then here remember that one line that your shadow is my right and my shadow is my right so there is one example for that also if a man goes to the market suddenly his shadow becomes right side of him then the man is facing in the south direction then after four alignment and mixture here for the mixture weight of pure milk or liquid you can find by equation of x into 1 minus y by x raised to n where x is equal to initial liquid or pure milk then y is equal to replaced milk and n is equal to number of times operation is done then number 20 time and work for that you can use this only one concept that m into d into h into eta by w is equal to constant from this proportional you can solve any question of time and work like m is proportional to 1 upon d or d is proportional to 1 upon eta or any kind of interchange so you just have to remember m d h into eta by w is equal to constant where m is equal to main d is equal to day h is equal to hours w is equal to work and eta is equal to efficiency then there is one more notice there if by one machine one toy can be made in seven minutes then from two machines also seven minutes are taken for making one toy but there are two toys are made by two machine then t into m by w is also constant you can also remember this note Share these short notes to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination to successive discounts. Here you can use the equation of selling price is equal to cost price into 100 plus or minus x divided by 100 into 100 plus or minus y divided by 100 into 100 plus or minus a divided by 100 where x, y, z are discount percentage. Here just you have to go through the concepts once and then after you have to practice more and more questions and need not to worry about the general aptitude and verbal ability 
then after the pipe concept is also there in which you have to find the time taken for filling the tank or empty the tank then after the 23 is for population concept in which p is equal to p into 1 plus r by 100 raised to plus or minus n is the equation for finding the present percentage of population where r is equal to rate percentage plus or minus n is equal to plus for the years after and minus for the years before then number 24 which is arithmetic mean of a and b is equal to a plus b by 2 then geometric mean of a and b which is equal to under root a b and harmonic mean of a and b is equal to 2 into ab by a plus b here note that am greater than gm greater than hm and gm square is equal to m into hm then z is equal to mu minus 3 into mu minus m and z is equal to 3 into m minus 2 mu here mod is equal to 3 into median minus 2 into min z is equal to m minus 2 by 3 into mu minus z here z is equal to maximum repeated number then mu is equal to sigma x by n so here z for the mode then m for the median and mu for the mean then 6 quaternary and division is equal to 5 mean division is equal to for standard deviation this note can also useful then after variance is equal to standard deviation square which is equal to sigma square and skewness is equal to mean minus mode by standard deviation then after 4 rank correlation note is there e is equal to 1 minus 6 into sigma d square divided by n into n square minus 1 then sigma n is equal to a upon 1 minus r which is the summation of series the example is given for that then after the last one is the profit and loss here selling price is equal to cost price into 100 plus or minus x divided by 100 and for profit selling price greater than cost price and for lost cost price greater than selling price here the equation of selling price is important is all about the general aptitude portion in which we have included the important concepts and some tricks which are useful to you in the examination now there are 17 notes which you can keep in mind for the verbal ability portion first one is uncle gave me three advices this is wrong you can use three piece of advice then here sagacious is equal to intelligent or clever or wise then inmate rate is equal to habituated then judicious is equal to clever at judgment and mollify is equal to calm down then after the types of nouns are there in the abstract noun or material noun you cannot use the a and the articles and s and es so here a wisdom is wrong and irons is also wrong because wisdom is the abstract noun and iron is a material noun then here note that you can use s and es for papers or the things which are made from the material noun like here example is that papers are made from the trees so you can use the papers for certificate this is right and in the old days people used woods for furniture this is wrong but you can use like this the thief run and vanished among the woods because in the first one wood is known as the material noun which is wrong and in the second one wood is used in the concept of tree so this is right then similarly for living in any place you cannot use a and the article like living in Ahmedabad is wrong but the comparison between the two parts at that time you can use a and the article 
like here Coimtur is an Ahmedabad of South India so for similarity you can use a and the article then s and e is always in the first words and apostrophe s is always used in the last word then here for one of the or none of the plus plural noun and singular verb then you have to take it as the singular so for example none of the girls have donated blood which is wrong because you have to take the example as a singular none of the girls has donated blood this is right then in the eighth one two plus verb is there then use the ing form and with could would or should use only the v1 then after used to is applicable in the past activities and the hobbies and to be used to is applicable in nowadays then after t002 is used for negative or minimum concept and to2 is used for positive sentence like for example the tea is too hot for me to drink then after hardly scarcely really plus had plus v3 is always used so in the sentence where you read hardly scarcely or barely then you have to just use had plus v3 then for already completed after and when you have to use had plus v3 and had plus been plus ing form both the sentence are right after for 12th one sense organ like noise sound smell feel appear or taste in this type of terms you cannot use the ing form then also you cannot use here hardly you have to replace hardly by hard and often you can use seldom you can use similarly newly you cannot use but you can use the new as well as it smells perfectly this is wrong question but it smell perfect this is right sentence then after adverbly is mostly used in the first sentence then number 14 much and more you cannot use where real perfect or unique and excellent talent are there but you can use when the comparison is done like for example this guy is more unique this sentence is wrong but you can use this guy is more unique than that of other so in the comparison you can use the much and more then after for the shapes also like triangle circle or rectangle we cannot use much and more and when compared to the triangle then you can use much and more then after you can use the oldest for the relationship between the things and eldest you can use for the relationship between the humans then after the next one is for the prepositions there is one table here for the place here if you want to use the preposition in then it should be the enclosed area is there or you can say that or you can say that the main should be completely inside the temple then only you can use the main is in the temple and in the time point of view it is used for month or year like for example his birthday is in january or her 16th birthday is in 2020 so this is right sentence then after for preposition on there is stable context should be there for place point of view and for the time point of view it is used for representing the date and days like on 25th september or on wednesday or on monday then after for the preposition at you can use it for landmarks 
and for the time point of view you can use for am pm or o'clock and it is used for the sharp and the exact value then after the preposition by you can use for the things only like for example by the window and you can use in the time point of view for the peoples like beside the friend of mine so in this way you can use these prepositions we can use a before the consonants like the words which are starting from b or c or d or any consonants we can use the a article before that words but here you have to keep one thing in the mind that that the pronunciation is also considered while using the a article like here for the example european is start from e so this thing you have to keep in mind similarly for using an article we are using an article for only the vowels for example the words which are starting from a e i o u here for an example a hour is wrong but an hour is right so this is all about the verbal ability in which we have included some important notes are there so in general in this video we have discussed about the concepts and tricks of the general aptitude as well as the verbal ability so we hope that you have liked this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy channel please share this video to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination the complete short notes for all the subjects of mechanical engineering so please share this video to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination as much as possible Thank you so much for watching the video. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books now the next subject is strength of materials in which we have prepared total five charts are there let's begin with the first one in which we'll include the basics as well as the simple stress and strain and after the plain stress conditions before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. Now let's start with some introduction about the strength of materials. Basically in the applied mechanics, it is the branch of science which deals with the study of forces and their efforts over the body. Here in the forces, external plus internal forces and in the body it includes rigid plus deformable. So here applied mechanics divided into three parts, first one is the engineering mechanics, then the second one is strength of materials and the third one is fluid mechanics. So strength of materials, it is the branch of applied mechanics which deals with the internal resisting force and the deformation due to the externally applied load. And the basics of the strength of materials is used while designing any machine component or structure. It is one part of the applied mechanics. The examples of all the concepts we will include is only about the externally applied load. Now there are some assumptions which are taken in strength of materials. First one is materials should be isotropic or homogeneous. Then second one is member or body should be prismatic. Then third one is materials should obey the Hooke's law. And fourth one is externally applied load must be gradually applied load. Then number fifth, member or body should be in static equilibrium and St. Venant's principle is applicable. 
Then sixth one is analysis is done on the basis of ensuring stress and strain only. Here effect of true stress and strain are neglected. Then seventh one is effect of body forces are neglected. Analysis is done on the basis of surface forces only. And number eight is effect of residual stresses are neglected. Then number nine, the body should be deformable and it should be continuous. Then deformations should be within the limits only. Here note that if the above listed assumptions are valid, then only the strength of material equations will give the exact value of the stress strength and the deformation. Here factor of safety is used while designing because to follow these all assumptions which are really hard in the real life. Let's start with the basics. Once again, these all are very basic concepts and formulas the whole subjects of but it will be really helpful to understand the concepts of the strength of materials during all the subject. First one the diagram of homogeneous body and the isotropic body. The homogeneous body is independent with respect to the location and the isotropic body is independent with respect to the direction. And third one is the anisotropic body. It neither homogeneous nor isotropic. Then fourth one is orthotropic body. In the orthotropic body properties are different in all three perpendicular or all three orthogonal directions. And fifth one is prismatic body. For that same cross section throughout the whole body. Here three types of load. First one is static, then fatigue and third one is impact. Then after engineering stress is equal to P by A and true stress is equal to P by AI where in the engineering stress you have to take the original area and in the true strain you have to take the area after deformation. As you can see here first one is the load it is any external force or couple to which a member is subjected during its functionality and there are two types of load first one is normal load second one is shear load normal load is always perpendicular to the cross-sectional area and shear load is parallel to the cross-sectional area then after one diagram for the axial tensile load then after eccentric axial compression load and eccentric axial tensile load so s for transverse shear load and t for eccentric transverse shear load Then after couples, here two types of couples are there. First one is bending moment couple which is about the transverse direction and turning moment couple is about the longitudinal axis. Then there are some examples are there. First one is for finding the turning couple at A. Then second one is for finding the turning couple at X section. And third one is for finding the bending couples. Then after shifting load is there. If you want to shift the load from one point to another point, then you have to add one couple for that load. And here by applying two axial eccentric load, it can produce the pure bending couple. Then after classification of stress, first one is the normal stress and the second one is shear stress. Normal stress, it includes two types, first one is direct normal stress and the second one is indirect normal stress or bending stress. And the equation for the stress you can use here m by i n a is equal to sigma by y it is equal to e by r. And the second equation for shear stress tau is equal to V A Y bar upon I N A into V and uh, T by J is equal to tau by R is equal to G theta by L. Then after coming towards the strain, here normal strain then after shear strain. Normal strain is axial or linear strain you can say that here epsilon x is equal to delta L by LG similarly epsilon y is equal to delta H by H and epsilon z is equal to delta B by B. Here L for length, 
H for height and B for width. And after shear stress, it is the change in angle between any two planes which were originally at right angles. And phi is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. Then third one is volumetric strain epsilon v is equal to change in volume by original volume epsilon v is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z. There are nine terms for the stress in the direction of x, y and z. Then e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu and e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu and e greater than k greater than g. This note is very useful in the examination in every year there may be questions for the equation of e g and mu then here for the material of homogeneous and isotropic the minimum number of elastic constraint required are two then for orthotropic nine constants are required and for the anisotropic 21 constants are required then after Poisson's ratio mu is equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain and mu is equal to minus epsilon y by epsilon x and epsilon y is equal to epsilon z then minus 1 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to 0.5 and there are some values of mu for general material mu is equal to 0 for coke then mu is equal to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 for concrete then mu is equal to 0.3 for steel then 0 0.25 to 0 0.33 for engineering materials then 0 0.49 which is near equal to 0 0.5 which is for rubber this value of mu is important for the rubber then mu is 0 0.5 for all incompressible materials then for general mu is equal to 0 0.33 and k is equal to e then after 2d plane stress system for that the equation is there then examples are beams and shaft and for 1D loading, sigma is equal to sigma xx, 1 cross 1. Examples are like bar, road and column. Then strain system is there. The equation for epsilon you can see there. And then there is one table for stress strain system. And total number of sigma or epsilon component needed. And independent number of epsilon component required. Here for 3D, 9 components are needed and from that 6 are independent for 2d 4 component are needed and from there 3 are independent and for 1d 1 component is needed and that is independent component and then after elastic constant first one is young's modulus e is equal to sigma by epsilon which is equal to stress by strength and here note that sigma is equal to constant for material and if e will increase then epsilon will decrease then shear modulus g is equal to tau by phi then shear modulus is also known as the modulus of rigidity then third one is bulk modulus it is only designed for the hydrostatic pressure condition where sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z is equal to p k is equal to p by epsilon v so you can say that k is equal to p by del v by v from there delta v is equal to p v by k these equations you can use in the mcqs then after longitudinal strain it is normal strain in the direction of load and lateral strain which is transverse strain it is the normal strain in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of load. Every longitudinal strain is associated with two lateral strain and nature of longitudinal and lateral are opposite to each other. So this is all about the basics of the strength of materials. So from the basics the equation of normal stress and shear stress is very useful in the zone as well as the MDID. And the equations of E, K, G and mu in the terms of each other is also very useful. Now in the second chart we will include three chapters are there. From the first one we will keep some basics also there. Now in the, now in the second chart we will include the three chapters are there. First one in which we will include some more basics like Oak's law, then thermal stress, then after axial deformation, 
then in the second chapter centroid and moment of inertia and the third chapter will be SFD and BMD so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy and press the bell icon for the upcoming charts of strength of material Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. Now in the second chart of strength of materials will include there are three chapters. First one is the basic then after the centroid and moment of inertia and the third one is SFD and BMD. Let's begin one by one. First one is Hooke's law. Before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in description box. Here you can see that in the Hooke's law there are three questions for the direction of EX, EY and EZ. For the direction of X here epsilon X is equal to sigma X by E then for Y direction mu into sigma by E and for Z direction epsilon Z is equal to mu into sigma by E where mu is equal to minus epsilon Y by epsilon X. And after the second one is general Hooke's law. For that, three equations are there for three different directions. Ex is equal to sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e minus mu into sigma z upon e. Then after for y direction, epsilon y is equal to sigma y by e minus mu into sigma x by e minus mu into sigma z by e. Then for the z direction, epsilon z is equal to sigma z by e minus k into sigma y by e minus mu into sigma x upon e here a plane stress system need not necessary will results into a plane strain system then after a uniform bar lying in the x direction is subjected to the pure bending which one of the following tensors represents the strain variations when bending moment is applied about z axis then the equations will be like epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e and epsilon y is equal to minus mu into sigma x upon e and epsilon z is equal to minus mu into sigma x upon e then after the applications of general Hooke's law there are two cases first one is a rectangular bar subjected to 3d stresses and the second one is solid cylinder shaft so for the first case epsilon v is equal to 1 minus 2 mu upon e into sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z and for the second case epsilon v is equal to epsilon l plus epsilon d plus epsilon d here epsilon v is equal to epsilon l plus 2 into epsilon d then after thermal stresses it is a secondary type of stress because primary stress comes due to load only then delta x is equal to alpha L delta t this equation is very useful then for a bar which is hinged from one end then the equation epsilon v is equal to 3 into alpha delta t and epsilon v is equal to 3 into epsilon d here for prismatic bar is fixed from x and y direction then you have to use directly this equation of sigma is equal to minus e into alpha dt upon 1 minus mu and if a cube is fixed from all three directions then sigma is equal to minus 3 into alpha dt upon 1 minus 2 mu then for composite bar or compound bar the equation will be like sigma l upon es plus alpha l delta t of s which is equal to alpha l delta t of cu minus sigma l upon e of cu then there are some examples there Then after thermal stress calculation, here first one is prismatic bar is fixed between the two rigid supports along the length in the x direction. So the equation will be like sigma t is equal to e into alpha delta t which is thermal stress and sigma is equal to minus e into alpha dt. Then after in the second case, if alpha dt into l is greater than the stress produced then sigma x is equal to 
minus e into alpha dt plus e into delta by l. Then in the fourth case, when the bar is fixed from the both the side, then sigma t is equal to minus e into alpha dt by 2 which is equal to sigma here the value of sigma and sigma t will be same then for this type of composite beam sigma is equal to minus e into alpha dt by 2 and for the cube which is fixed from all the sides then delta x is equal to alpha l delta t into 1 plus mu then for the compound bar there are four cases are there here in the first case face to face connection and if temperature will increase then you can use the equation of sigma l upon e of s plus alpha l delta t of s which is equal to alpha l delta t of cu minus sigma l upon e of cu so similarly for the three cases you can write down this equation the second case is for the phase to phase and temperature will decrease then third case is for fixed between two supports and temperature will increase and the fourth case in which fixed between two supports and temperature will so you can use the equation of sigma l upon e of s minus l alpha dt of s plus sigma l upon e of cu minus l alpha d of cu which is equal to zero so by using this equation you can find the value of any of the term like uh, sigma or e or l now then after axial deformation is there for that there are three cases first one is for prismatic bar you can see the diagram here and the equation of deflection delta is equal to pl upon a which is equal to sigma l upon e and here note that for spring the if axial load is applied then k is equal to a e upon l and here k is proportional to a proportional to e and proportional to 1 by l then for the non prismatic bar delta l is equal to pl upon a and delta l is equal to delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 then for solid sphere epsilon v is equal to 3 into epsilon d Here circular tapered bar then equation of delta L will be 4 PL upon Y into E into D1 D2 and for square tapered bar delta L is equal to PL upon AB then after for rectangular tapered bar with constant thickness delta L is equal to PL upon B2 minus B1 into T into E to L and B2 by B1 then for self weight deformation first one is the prismatic bar delta L is equal to gamma L square upon 2E which is equal to WL upon 2A and delta L is proportional to L square then W is equal to gamma A into L and second one is for conical bar delta L is equal to gamma L square by 6 into E and gamma is equal to 1 upon 3 into A into X here area of X section is there then in the third case a bar of uniform strength then sigma is equal to w by a then sigma xx is equal to gamma x and delta l is equal to rho into w square into l cube upon 3 into e then by compatibility delta l of solid is equal to delta l of hollow then p1 l upon a1 e1 is equal to p2 l upon a2 e2 then there are some sign convection are there first one is based on direction here in the left direction you can take the positive and in the right direction you can take the negative then in the upward direction you can take positive and in the downward direction negative then clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive here in this sort notes wherever we have used the sign convection you can consider this sign convection then based on the deformation tensile will be positive and compressive will be negative then for zagging 
it will be positive and counterclockwise then for hogging it will be negative and clockwise direction now the next topic is circumferential diametral or you can say that the hoop stress here diameter of wooden wheel is equal to capital D and diameter of steel wheel is equal to D here D less than capital D and as temperature will increase then D days will greater than that of D then here circumferential strain epsilon h is equal to D minus D by D then sigma h is equal to E into D minus D by D then minimum increase in the temperature epsilon h is equal to epsilon t and delta t is equal to 1 upon alpha into capital D minus D by D here sigma t is equal to E into alpha dt here note that for the hoop stress conditions in the steel ring the tensile stress is produced and in the wooden steel compressive stress is produced and for cross sectional sigma fy is equal to 0 then you can use the equation of sigma w into aw which is equal to sigma h into as then the next chapter is centroid and moment of inertia then here first one is center of mass it is the point where total mass of the body can be assumed then second one is the center of gravity and the third one is centroid all the area can be considered at a point then here note that center of mass and center of gravity is identical if the solid body is placed in uniform gravitational field then centroid will always less than axis of the symmetry and here in the strength of materials analysis is done on the basis of cross section and it's a plain geometry hence centroid is used in the strength of materials now for the moment it is the total load acting at the centroid then mo is equal to wl square by 2 for the bar the then there are two methods first one is the integration method and the second one is the biparts method it is used when step bar is there and bodies like i or t shape or l or h or e shape then you can use x bar is equal to sigma ai into xi bar upon sigma ai then y bar is equal to sigma ai into y a bar upon sigma ai then there are two examples you can take a screenshot and calculate it then moment of inertia i y is equal to integration a s square into d a then three examples are there for finding the moment of inertia then here two nodes are there for the conical shape x bar is equal to 2 r upon 3 into alpha into sin alpha second one is for this type of shape the centroid is at the distance of minus r upon 6 these two questions were asked in the examination frequently then here parallel axis theorem is there it is used to transfer the moment of inertia from centroidal axis to the another parallel axis and ix is equal to ixc plus a into k square here ix greater than ixc then for the perpendicular axis theorem iz is equal to ix plus iy here izc is equal to pi by 32 into d raised to 4 for the sphere and j is equal to ix plus iy then here note that at a point the sigma i about any two mutually perpendicular set of the axis remains constant then the next chapter is sfd and bmd here beam is an structural member which is mainly subjected to the shearing and due to the variation of load sf and bm is also varied to find the maximum shear force and bending moment or variation the sfd and bmd is drawn then after the types of support first one is the fixed support 
then after hinge support and the third one is the roller support and types of beam first one is the SSB in simply supported beam then the second one is cantilever beam then third one is overhanging beam and fourth one is continuous beam and fifth one is prop cantilever beam then sixth one is fixed beam then after types of loads then the second one is uniform distribution load and the third one is uniform wearing load then calculation of reaction forces for that there are some examples are there then there are calculation of reaction forces in the first example the point load is acting at the center and you have to find the reaction at C and A and in the second example you can see that here you have to find the value of RA and RC here uniform distribution load is applied then for the third example UL is applied and you have to find the RA and RB so these three examples for the three different types of load then in the fourth type the combination of UDL and point load then in the fifth example UL is applied then here note for the SFD and BMDs for the three types of load here for the first one in which no loading between two points then the SFD will be like rectangular and BMD will be like triangular then for the UDL the shape will be linear and BMD will be parabola then for the third one UVL W is proportional to X then SFD will be parabola and BMD will be cubic parabola this shapes of the each type you have to remember in the examination sometimes the shapes were asked so these are about the second chart of the science of materials now in the third chart we'll include the most important chapter from the strength of materials the slope and deflection and also we'll include the theory of pure bending in the third chart so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy and please share this video to your friends also who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books now in the third chart of the strength of materials will include the slope and deflection and the theory of pure bendings let's begin one by one first one is slope and deflection before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box here you can see that the definition of deflection it is the vertical displacement of any point from its initial position up to elastic curve and delta max is less than delta allowable it is the condition for design of a beam on the basis of thriftness criteria and the shape of the elastic curve depends on the types of loading here note that if SF is equal to 0 then BM is equal to 0 and the diagram will be like straight line and linear curve then if SF is equal to 0 then BM will be constant and the shape of the BM will be like 
arc of a circle then sf is not equal to 0 and vm is also not equal to 0 then the curve will be like parabola and it will be of second third or fourth or any order of degree then for the straight beam concept here you can use the equation of delta c is equal to delta b plus bc into theta b then after standard formulas from which the questions were so many times asked in the gate examination we are not that these formulas are valid for only the prismatic beams and ei is equal to structural rigidity or bending rigidity here for the first step theta b is equal to ml upon ei and delta b is equal to ml square upon 2 into ei then in the second type the load is acting at the end theta b is equal to pl square upon 2 into ei and delta b is equal to pl cube upon 3 into ei then third one udl is there then theta b is equal to wl cube upon 6 into ei delta b is equal to wl raised to 4 upon 8 into ei then for uvl delta b is equal to wl cube upon 24 into ei and delta b is equal to wl raised to 4 upon 30 into ei then for the fifth type the load is acting at the center theta a is equal to theta b is equal to pl square upon 16 into ei and delta c is equal to pl cube upon 48 ei then for the sixth type theta a is equal to theta b is equal to wl cube upon 24 into ei and delta c is equal to 5 by 384 into wl raised to 4 upon ei then in the seventh type here the moment will be acting from both ends theta a is equal to theta b is equal to ml upon 2 into ei then delta c is equal to ml square upon 8 into ei and for the 8th type ul at the center delta c is equal to wl raised to 4 upon 120 ei and 10th one delta c is equal to l square upon 8r which is the equation for pure bending then there is the example if two bars are connected face to face and rigidity will be 2ei and ei then theta c is equal to phi into pl square upon 60 ei and theta and delta c is equal to 3 pl cube upon 60 into ei then after superposition principle for the first one if the udl and point load both are acting then it will be near equal to the equations of udl and point load so you can say that delta b is equal to wl raised to 4 upon 8 ei plus pl cube upon 3 into ei similarly for the second one here you can use the equation of delta b is equal to wl raised to 4 upon 8 into ei minus wl raised to 4 upon 30 into ei then for the third type you can use the equation of delta a is equal to 5 upon 384 into wl raised to 4 upon ei and Maxwell's reciprocal theorem. The equations for the theorem is delta 1 upon P2 is equal to delta 2 by P1 and theta 1 upon M2 is equal to theta 2 by M1. You note that only for concentrated point load and concentrated moments. Then there are some more examples for the values of delta B and delta C. There are methods of finding the deflection. First one is the double integration method or Maculus method. The equation for this method is m is equal to e into i into d square y upon dx square. So you can say that m is equal to e into i into y double dash. Here the final equation will be e into i into y is equal to mx square by 2 plus c1x plus c2. Then the second one is modified Maculus method in which the equation will be like e into i into y is equal to ra into x cube by 6 plus c1x plus c2 minus p1 into x minus a cube by 6 minus p2 into x cube by 6 then the third method area moment method or you can say that the Morse method it is used for both the prismatic and non prismatic bar in the first theorem 
theta b minus theta a is equal to area of diagram m upon ei and in the second theorem theta b is equal to area of m upon ei into x bar so you can find the values of theta b minus theta a by finding the area of m by ei and for delta b you can find the area of m by ei into x bar then fourth one is strain energy method for this method the equation of delta which is equal to integration m into x into del mx upon del p into dx divided by ei then theta is equal to integration mx into del mx by delta m into dx divided by ei and here equation of u will be integration a to v mx square dx upon 2 into ei which is the equation of strain energy this method is also known as the casting Lianos method then fifth one is the conjugate method this method is also used for the both the type prismatic and non prismatic bars here loading diagram is equal to m by ei diagram of the real beam first we have to convert the real beam to the conjugate beam for that these are the some rules for the conversion you can take a screenshot then here sfd of the conjugate beam will be the slope diagram of the real beam and bmd of the conjugate beam will be the deflection diagram of the real beam which gives the value of delta b so these methods you have to use only when the standard formulas you cannot use most of the time in the gate examination the questions were asked based on the standard formulas only and sometimes you have to use the superposition principle and the maxwell principle and the maxwell's reciprocal theorem then after analysis of statically indeterminate beams then first one is broke cantilever beam for this type of beam unknowns are 4 and equations are 3 so you can use the computability delta a is equal to 0 and theta a is equal to 0 and delta b is equal to 0 then for the fixed beam 6 unknowns are there and for the third type here you can use the theta b minus theta a is equal to as plus af and summation of as plus af will be 0 Then there are two special cases for first one is the beam of uniform strength and the second one is the slicing of beam. Here for the special case of beam of uniform strength you can use the equation of z is equal to bt square by 6 and sigma max is equal to 3 into px by bt square. Then in that also there are two cases are there. First one is depth changing with the constant diameter and for this type of case sigma max is equal to 3 into px by b into dx square then for second type of case b is not constant and d is constant then sigma max is equal to 3 into px by bx into d square the example is beam of uniform strength and a prismatic bar with the pure bending moment then for the second type of cases then for the second special case the slicing of beam here in that first case is horizontal slicing then the equation of z will be z solid is equal to b into nt square by 6 and z slice will be n into bt square by 6 here n is equal to z solid by z slice second case is vertical slicing of beam for this type of beam for this case z solid is equal to nt into d square by 6 and z solid by z slice is equal to 1 hence from long beams vertical slicing is more used in the practical cases then the next chapter is shear stress in beam 
here tau max always on neutral axis is not necessary then then after material should be isotropic homogeneous and should follow the hooke's law and third one is shear stress constant e to f and do not change with the width of the cross section b then changes along the depth here the value of shear stress at any level e to f is given by tau is equal to v a into y bar upon i n a into b note that because of shear force v the variation of shear stress is always parabolic along the depth with zero at the top and bottom and maximum somewhere in the middle here not necessary at the neutral axis then due to shear force v shear stress will produce on two mutually perpendicular planes first one is vertical plane or parallel to the shear force the second one is horizontal or longitudinal plane which is perpendicular to the shear force then third note is tau average is equal to v by b into d then these are some preferable areas which you have to take for the value of y bar like in the t steps you have to take the y bar from the bottom side y bar is equal to d by 2 then for triangle y bar is equal to 2 by 3 into a from upward side and for the circular y bar is equal to 4r by 3 pi which is for circle and semi sphere these are some values of y bar which is the centroidal distance from the considered area from na here one more note is there for the values of z for the different shapes first one is for rectangular cross section area z will be vd square by 6 if the cross section will be vertical and for the horizontal z will be vd square by and for the horizontal z will be db square by 6 then for the square z of square is greater than that of z of diamond then z of r is equal to a cube by 6 and here for z of diamond is equal to a cube by 6 into root 2 and then after the fourth one is for triangle z is equal to bd square by 24 for hollow rectangle z is equal to bd cube minus bd cube by 60 and for solid circular z is equal to pi d cube by 32 then for hollow circle z is equal to pi d cube by 32 into 1 minus k raised to 4 here k is equal to di upon d naught which is less than 1 then the theory of pure bending in that some assumptions are there first one is material should be isotropic then homogeneous and should follow the Hooke's law then Then there are four types of examples first one is the strength comparison and the second one is for the bending stress calculation so for the first type of questions you can use the relation of m proportional to z proportional to i by y and for the second type of question you can use the equation of m by i is equal to e by r is equal to sigma by y then sigma max is equal to m by z then the third type 
here it is the most useful equation f is equal to sigma max upon y max into a into y bar then the fourth type of question which is for the composite beam m is equal to e strong by e weaker then e steel by e wood is greater than 1 then there are two special cases which we have discussed earlier then for the top and bottom fletching the modular ratio will be sigma s upon es and sigma w by ew here s for the steel and w for the wood similarly for the side fletch sigma s is equal to m into sigma w so this is all about the third chart of the strength of materials now in the fourth chart of the strength of materials will include the equations of shear stress in beam as well as the theory of pure torsion and the next one is the complex stress and strain Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. Now in the fourth chart of the strength of materials will include there are four chapters. First one is the CO stress in beam and then second one is theory of pure torsion. Then third one is complex stress and strain and the fourth one is strain analysis let's begin one by one here the first one is shear stress in beam here as you can see that shear stress distribution in various cross section so we have made the equations for the five types of cross section you can note down that for the rectangular cross section the tau is equal to va y bar upon i n a into b and the ratio of t max by t average is equal to 3 by 2 then for the circular cross section tau average is equal to v by pi r square and the ratio of tau max by tau average will be 4 by 3 then for the triangle shape cross section tau max upon tau average is equal to 3 by 2 and tau na upon tau average will be 4 by 3 then for diamond shape tau na less than tau max and tau max by tau average will be 9 by 8 and tau na upon tau average is equal to 1 then after for the i section tau f is equal to vaf i bar upon i na into v and tau w is equal to vi bar upon i na into v here tau is proportional to 1 upon v and tf less than tw in general you can note down this table also because it is very useful for the rectangular cross section the ratio of tau max and tau average as well as the tau na upon tau average you can see here the value of first one is 3 by 2 and 1 then for circle 4 by 3 and 1 for triangle 3 by 2 and 4 by 3 and for diamond 9 by 8 and 1 for i section it is 3 by 2 and 1 based on this ratio you can solve the question in the examination because sometimes they will give the value of tau max or tau average and you have to find the value of tau na or tau average so these ratios will be helpful for you so these ratios are very important for the examination for pure torsion sl bm and al is equal to 0 and tm is not equal to 0 here sl for shear load bm for bending moment and al for axial load all these are zero but turning moment is not equal to zero sign convection you can take positive for the clockwise and negative for the counter clockwise then there are some assumptions for the theory of pure torsion first one is the material should be isotropic and homogeneous then second one is variation of the shear strain across any diameter will be linear with zero at center and maximum at all the points of outer periphery then phi max is equal to all the points on the periphery and phi is proportional to r 
and third one is theory of pure torsion is only valid for the pure torsion then for bending and twisting there are some equations this will be very helpful in the examination first one is m by i n a is equal to sigma y y which is equal to sigma max upon y max which is equal to v by r then similarly for the twisting t by j is equal to tau by r which is equal to tau max upon r is equal to g theta upon l then zp is equal to j by r which is polar section modulus then z is equal to i n a by y max then third one is sigma max is equal to m by z for bending similarly for the twisting tau max is equal to tau by zp then ei is equal to flexural rigidity in the twisting gz is equal to torsional rigidity then ae upon l is equal to axial stiffness and t by theta is equal to gj upon l is equal to kt which is known as the torsional stiffness so from this table you can remember by comparing the equations then after torsion equation is there t by j is equal to g theta upon l is equal to tau by r which is equal to tau max upon r here t for the applied or resisting turning moment and r for radius of variation j for polar moment of inertia tau for shear stress at radial distance r from center and j is equal to modulus of rigidity theta is equal to angle of twist in phi for shear strain or shear angle then l phi is equal to r into theta this is also important for the pure torsion then after for solid circular cross section zp is equal to pi by 16 into d cube and j is equal to pi by 32 d raised to 4 then for hollow circular cross section tau max by d not by 2 is equal to tau min by di by 2 then zp is equal to j by r is equal to pi d cube by 16 into 1 minus k raised to 4 Then k is equal to d naught by d o less than one. Then j is equal to pi by thirty two d o raised to four minus d i raised to four, where r is equal to d o by two. Then these four equations are very useful in the examination of relation between e, g, k, and mu. From these equations, every year there may be one questions for the finding the value of e, g, k, or mu. So here first one is e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu then e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu third one is e is equal to 2g into 1 plus 1 upon m because mu is equal to 1 upon m then e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 by m similarly e is equal to 9kg upon g plus 3k here tau is equal to mu du by dy So these equations are useful in the examination. Then after power transmission by shaft, here the equation of P will be 2 pi nt by 60, where omega is equal to 2 pi n upon 60. Then here note that Z of solid is greater than Z of hollow, and Zp of solid is less than Zp of hollow. Here Z for the section modulus and Zp for the polar section modulus. Then after connection of shafts. First one is the series connection. The equation will be theta c by a is equal to theta c b plus theta b a, which is equal to theta c a is equal to t1 l1 upon g1 j1 plus minus t2 plus t1 into l2 divided by g2 into j2. Then for the parallel connection, the equation will be like minus t c into l1 upon g1 j1 plus Minus T C plus T into L two upon J two J two is equal to zero. Then these two equations also you can use for finding the values of T or J. Here by static equilibrium T S plus T H is equal to T, and by compatibility T S into L upon J into J of solid is equal to T into L upon J into J of hollow. So in general till now for the four types of equations we have used first one is for axial load you have to remember sigma is equal to p by a then for bending you have to remember m by i n a is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r and sigma max is equal to m by z then for the third one shear load tau is equal to va by r upon i n a into b and for the torsion 
tau max is equal to t by zp then after the next chapter is complex stress and strain here stress and strain on the inclined plane is known as the complex stress and strain and because of an axial load normal and shear both will come on the inclined plane then principal stress the definition for that it is the normal stress acting on the principal plane as brittle material are weakest in torsion therefore the maximum principal stress is required and sigma 1 max is principal stress theory then ductile materials are weakest in the shear for that we have to find the tau max and you can use the maximum shear stress theory Similarly for finding the sigma 1 max you can use the principal shear stress theory. Then here resulting stress sigma r is equal to 1 root sigma theta square plus tau xy square. Then 10 alpha is equal to tau into theta by sigma theta. Then the equation of sigma theta will be sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos 2 theta plus tau xy into sin 2 theta and for tau theta the equation will be tau theta is equal to minus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sin 2 theta plus tau xy into cos 2 theta then design of brittle material here 10 2 theta p is equal to 2 into tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y and sigma 1 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau xy square then for tau max is equal to under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau x y square. These equations we have discussed in the MDID also. Then after sigma 1 plus sigma 2 which is equal to sigma x plus sigma y and sigma xx is equal to sigma y y is equal to sigma average which is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2. Then tau x y is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma y by 2 and take the mode of that equation which is equal to tau max then then tau xy is equal to mode of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 which is equal to tau max the equation for tau theta minus in bracket sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sine 2 theta plus tau xy cos 2 theta then here for tau maximum theta s1 is theta p1 plus 45 degree and theta s2 is theta p2 plus 45 degree then epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 upon e minus mu into sigma 2 upon e here phi is equal to g theta upon l here phi is equal to g theta upon l and e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu then after for the combined bending and twisting the equation will be sigma 1 2 which is equal to 16 by pi d cube into m plus or minus under root m square plus t square then sigma max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 which is equal to 16 then sigma max is equal to mod of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 which is equal to 16 by pi d cube under root m square plus t square then after sigma 1 is equal to 32 m e upon pi d cube and m is equal to 1 by 2 in bracket m plus under root m square plus t square then equivalent twisting moment t is equal to under root m square plus t square these all equations we can use in the machine design also and the complete short note for the machine design you can check the link in the description box and here in the more circle r is equal to under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau x y square then tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and sigma average is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 then resultant will be under root sigma average square plus tau max square and theta dash is equal to 2 theta we are here theta dash is equal to angle in more circle then d is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 d for the diameter here then some special cases are there for more circles you can take a screenshot for that special cases now the next chapter is strain analysis here for the first one in the strain analysis for inclined plane epsilon theta is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y by 2 plus 
epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 into cos 2 theta plus 5 xy by 2 into sin 2 theta. Then for principal plane, tan 2 theta into p is equal to 5 xy by epsilon x minus epsilon y and for principal strain epsilon 1 or 2 is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y by 2 plus or minus under root epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 square plus 5 xy by 2 square here the equation will be same as the sigma 1 2 but you have to replace the tau xy by phi xy by 2 then epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 upon e minus mu into sigma 2 by e then epsilon 2 is equal to sigma 2 by e minus mu into sigma 1 upon e maximum of then after equation of maximum shear strain phi max or phi absolute is equal to maximum of mod of epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 or mod of epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3 or mod of epsilon 3 minus epsilon 1 then after Lamis equation is there sigma 1 is equal to e by 1 minus mu square and epsilon 1 plus mu into epsilon 2 similarly for the sigma 2 the equation is there then after strain rho set is there it is the arrangement of three strain gauges in three different direction and here note that the measurement of zero strain is not practical because no such instrument is available and but with the help of this combination we can measure the zero strain so basically the strain rosettes are used for measuring the zero strain here are three different types of strain rosettes are there first one is the rectangular then after the delta and third one is the star here are the angles for the three types you can note down that angles now for the impact loading the equation of if is very useful if is equal to 1 plus under root 1 plus 2h by delta st then after strain gauges here it is a device which is used to measure the normal strain when it is less than 0.001 for measuring normal strain and first one is optimal strain gauge then after mechanical strain gauge and third one is electrical strain gauge first two are works on the magnification achieved then after strain energy due to the basic loading there are four equations first one is for axial load u is equal to integration px square dx upon 2 into a then then after for the cl load u is equal to integration of vx square dx upon 2 into ag then for bending u is equal to integration of mx square dx upon 2 into ei and for twisting u is equal to integration of tx square dx upon 2 into gj so you can say that u is equal to t square l upon 2 into gj then u is equal to 1 by 2 into t into theta now the next topic is strain energy for that strain energy is the form of energy which is stored in the material due to externally applied load and here the equation of u will be 1 by 2 into p into delta and delta is equal to pl upon a then u by volume is equal to 1 by 2 into sigma into e which is known as the toughness and this equation is very useful in the examination u by volume is equal to sigma square upon 2e which is equal to 1 by 2 into e into epsilon square then after strain energy stored in the bar due to self weight u is equal to gamma square a into L cube upon 6 into E so you can also say that U is equal to P square L upon 2 into A into E <coughs> so this is all about the fourth chart of the strength of materials in which we have discussed about the zero stress in beam then after the theory of pure torsion then third one is the complex stress and strain and at the last the strain analysis now in the fifth and the final chart of the strength of materials will include the theory of columns and the pressure vessels.
Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Before that, if you are new to your academy, then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in description box. In the fifth chart of the strength of materials, this is the final chart of strength of materials. In this chart, we will discuss the remaining chapters are theories of columns and the next one is the pressure vessel. Let's begin with the first one which is theory of columns. As you can see here in the theory of columns, the first one is the difference between columns and struts. In the columns, there are vertical compression member and the struts are compression member in any position. Then all columns are struts but you cannot say that the all struts are columns. Then after short columns, he is gone under the crushing and long column is gone under the buckling. These are very basics but some important topics are there. Then after buckling, it is the special case of bending which happens only in the long columns due to axial compressive load. An example is bamboo. Then buckling door is PB and sigma B is equal to PB upon A which is buckling stress. Then for crushing, sigma C is equal to PC upon A. Here for safe design, sigma should less than sigma C and sigma should less than sigma B. And after design of short column, for that you can use the equation of FC is equal to sigma C into cross section area. Then FCF is equal to FC upon FOS. Then after four columns, Euler's theory is there for the long columns. Here if K will increase then buckling will decrease. And the equation of P will be pi square EI mean upon L square and PB upon A is equal to sigma B is equal to pi square E upon lambda square. Here this equation of P is very useful in the examination because the question based on this equation were asked more than two to three times. So remember that P or PB which is equal to pi square EI mean upon L square. Then radius of variation i is equal to x square. Here k is equal to under root i upon a and k is equal to d by 4. Then after Rankine theory, for that pr is equal to sigma c into a upon 1 plus alpha lambda square. Here alpha is equal to sigma c upon pi square into e. Then after Rankine's theory for the long and short columns, first one is for long columns, it fails due to the buckling where sigma b less than sigma c and k is higher than buckling is lower then for slenderness ratio lambda greater than 89 for long column and lambda will be less than 89 for short columns then you can remember the equation of lambda is equal to le upon k min then for short columns it fails due to the crossing load here sigma b is greater than sigma c and the sword column is having the more load carrying capacity. Then after effective length, it is the center to center distance between two successive point of zero bending moment. Here this note is very useful. For the hinge hinge type beam, here L is equal to L. For hinge and fixed beam, L is equal to L by root 2. Then after for fix and fix type L is equal to L by 2 and for fix and free type L is equal to 2L. Then slenderness ratio lambda is equal to LE by K min. Here IXX is equal to AK square of maximum and IYY is equal to AK square of minimum. Then after the eccentric loaded sword columns, first one is for the rectangle. Ex is less than or equal to b by 6 and Ey is less than or equal to d by 6. Then for rhombus, Ex is less than or equal to b by 3 and Ey is less than or equal to d by 3. Then for circle, Ex is less than or equal to r by 4. Here E is the eccentricity value. Here note that generally the columns are made by concrete and it is a brittle material. So tensile stress should be avoided, then for no tensile stress. Then here for the cross section area of rectangle, 
you can consider the shape of core is rhombus then for eye section here also the rhombus then for square you can take the shape of core is square and for circle the shape of core will be circle four. then after the next chapter is pressure vessel which is the final chapter of the strength of materials here in the thin pressure vessel the ratio of t by t is greater than or equal to 20 and the examples are like cylinder cell etc and it is used for lower pressure then after in the thick pressure vessel d by t ratio will be less than 20 and the examples are like high pressure boilers then tanks and gun barrels etc and it is used for high pressure after for thin cylinder first one is circumferential or diametral or hoop stress the equation of sigma h is equal to pd by 2t then for axial or longitudinal stress sigma l is equal to pd by 40 then after note that as there is no shear stress first one is sigma 1 is equal to sigma h is equal to pd by 2t then for sigma 2 is equal to sigma l is equal to pd by 40 and sigma 3 is equal to sigma r is equal to p here compressive for thin cylinder these are the loads from the three directions of sigma r sigma h and sigma l then after maximum shear stress tau maximum of 1 2 is equal to mod of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 which is equal to pd by 80 then tau max 2 3 is equal to mod of sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to pd by 80 and for tau max of 3 1 mod of sigma 3 minus sigma 1 by 2 is equal to pd by 40 which is tau maximum or tau absolute then after strain in the thin cylinder here you can note down the equations of first one is hoop strain epsilon h is equal to pd by 40 e into 2 minus mu which is equal to delta d by d then sigma l is equal to p and into d upon 40 then after sigma h is equal to p local into d upon 2t then longitudinal strain epsilon l is equal to pd upon 40 into 1 minus 2 mu is equal to delta l by l and the third one is volumetric strain epsilon v is equal to pd upon 40 into 5 minus 4 mu which is equal to delta v by v these three equations of the strains are useful in the examination and after the last topic is for the spherical cell the equation of sigma will be sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma h is equal to pd by 40 which is tensile in nature then here no sigma l so tau max is equal to absolute is equal to pd by 80 and here neglect the value of sigma 3 which is compressive then the last equation for the strain epsilon h is equal to sigma h upon e minus mu into sigma h upon e is equal to delta d by d so these are the equations you have to remember for the thin cylinder this is all about the last chart of the strength of materials so now we have completed the whole subject of the strength of materials and the links for the other subjects like the production technology thermodynamics as well as fluid mechanics machine design and industrial engineering are in the description box you can check out the complete short notes for these subjects also if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy and We'll start the next subject of the heat transfer in which we have prepared total 3 charts. Please share this video to your other friends also who is preparing for the GATE examination 2021. Thank you so much. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. 
so recently iit bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches so according to the new syllabus uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence so basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books this is the eighth subject for the theory of machine in which will include all the syllabus of theory of machines and the concepts as well as the formulas which are important for the examination these are the main important chapters from the theory of machines first one is the basics then after the flywheel then after third one is the gear train then after the next chapter is gear then after the vibration and at the end we'll discuss about the gyroscope so let's start one by one first one is here in the basics as you can see that there are types of links before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in description box so mainly four types of links are there binary link then after ternary link then the third one is quaternary link and the fourth one is profile link then the next topic is degree of freedom here for the spiral system degree of freedom will be 6 minus r and for the planar system degree of freedom will be 3 minus r here r is equal to constraint or the arrested motions then the third topic is equivalent linkage here the equation for the degree of freedom f is equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2l minus h which is the equation for the Kutzbeck's law then there is the conversion for higher pair to the lower pair here one higher pair is equal to two lower pair plus one link and for one single slider clink mechanism one four bar chain mechanism with two links of infinite length you can say that then after the difference between the lower pair and higher pair here in the lower pair the surface contact is there and the example is cylindrical pair then after in the higher pair point contact or you can say that joint contact is there and the examples are like cam and follower then to gear and the journal bearing at the slot then here remember that for turning pair degree of freedom is equal to 1 then for screw pair f is equal to 1 and sliding pair f is equal to 1 Similarly, for the revolute joint, f is equal to 1, for cylindrical pair, f is equal to 2, and for spherical pair, f is equal to 3. These all are the basic concepts, but from these concepts also the questions were asked in the examination. So we have included this part also. Now then after, there is the Glubrer's criteria. Basically, Kutzbeck law with all lower pairs known as the Grubler's criteria and the equation for that fm is equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2l minus h here the degree of freedom here the degree of freedom should be 1 and it gives the information about the mobility of linkage this question was asked in the examination that the Grubler's criteria gives the information about the mobility of linkage then after moving towards the next one which is Gresov's criteria as you can see that there are three conditions are there first one is if s plus l is less than p plus q then the linkage is Gresov's linkage then after the second one if s plus l is greater than p plus q then non Gresov's linkage is there and in the third case s plus l is equal to p plus q then it is known as the special Gresov's linkage Now in the special grass of linkage there are three types first one is the parallelogram linkage in this type of linkage the opposite links should be same and then after the second one is the rhombus linkage in this type of linkage the value of all the links should be same then after in the deltoid linkage two types are there in the deltoid linkage there may be the short link is fixed or in the other case the long link is fixed but the sufficient condition for this type of linkage is 
the nearby value of the link should be same then after this table is very useful in the examination which is about the types of the motion as well as the type of structure and the type of chain here for f less than 0 the motion will be redundant motion and the mechanism will be superstructure and the type of chain will be redundant chain then for f is equal to 0 then there is no motion in the mechanism and the type of mechanism is structure then chain is locked chain then for f is equal to 1 here the motion is constrained motion and the mechanism is kinematic mechanism then the chain will be kinematic chain then for f greater than 1 here the motion is unconstrained motion and the mechanism is unconstrained and chain is also unconstrained then after the inversion of the single slider crank mechanism there are main four inversions for the single slider crank mechanism let's see one by one first one is in the first case link one is fixed here the degree of freedom will be one then here two cases are there if the second link is input link then the mechanism will be reciprocating compressor and if the fourth link will be the input link then the mechanism will be the reciprocating engine and here it is the crank rocker mechanism in which the adjacent to the shortest link should be fixed then after the second inversion here you can see that in this inversion the shortest link is fixed so it is known as the crank crank mechanism or you can say the double crank mechanism and the examples are Withworth quick return motion mechanism and the rotary cylinder engine mechanism then the third inversion as you can see here in the third inversion the connecting rod is fixed so the mechanism will be the crank rocker mechanism and in this type of inversion the adjacent to the shortest should be fixed here note that it is not necessary that the longest is fixed but the adjacent to the shortest should be fixed in the crank rocker mechanism here then the fourth inversion is in which the link is fixed and it is known as the rocker rocker mechanism or the double rocker mechanism in this type of mechanism the opposite of the shortest link is fixed and the example is hand pump then after types of QRMM here three types are there first one is the Withworth quick return motion mechanism then after the crank and slotted lever quick return motion mechanism and the third one is the offset slider crank mechanism then there are some equations for that first one is for Withworth quick return motion mechanism there are two cases in the extreme position of QRMM here the first diagram for the end of the return stroke then here the equation of cos beta by 2 is equal to length of the fixed link divided by length of the crank and stroke length is equal to c1 c2 is equal to v1 into v2 and is equal to 2 into o1 v then after the second figure is for end of cutting and start of return so the equation will be then the equation of QRR is equal to 360 minus beta divided by beta here QRR is also equal to alpha upon 360 minus alpha then crank and slotted lever mechanism for that the equation cos beta by 2 is equal to length of crank divided by length of fixed link which is also equal to time during the forward stroke divided by time during the cutting stroke the stroke length for the crank and slotted lever mechanism SL is equal to 2 into O1 B2 into O1 A2 divided by O1 into O2 and here QRR is equal to 360 minus beta divided by beta then third one is for the offset slider crank mechanism there are three equations are there first one is sine phi 1 is equal to 
e by l plus r then sin phi 2 is equal to e by l minus r then l is equal to l plus r into cos phi 1 minus l minus r into cos phi 2 and here qrr is equal to 180 plus theta divided by 180 minus theta here theta is equal to phi 2 minus phi 1 so these are the equations for the qrmm then after the inversions for the double slider crank mechanism here three inversions are there in the first one where the slotted bar is fixed the diagram you can see here and the mechanism is known as the elliptical trammel and here in this type of mechanism the diagram will be straight line and equation is xp square plus yp square is equal to r square then the second inversion is scotch yoke mechanism for this type also the diagram is there and the mechanism will be the crank rocker mechanism in this type the slider is fixed then in the third inversion here the connecting road is fixed and you can say that the shortest link is fixed for this inversion and the example is old ham coupling which is used for the linear misalignment up to the 20 to 30 mm and for the angular misalignment the universal coupling is used or hooks joint is used then after the next concept is the mechanical advantage here ma is equal to v in divided by v out which is equal to w in by w out which is equal to f out by f in then remember that this note is very useful in the examination for the toggle position the value of mechanical advantage will be infinite and in the toggle position theta is equal to 180 and psi is equal to 90 then angular velocity is zero then after the next concept is Coriolis it is one type of acceleration coming because of the change in the direction of the sliding velocity and it is occurs into the Whitworth quick return motion mechanism as well as the rotary cylinder then after oscillatory cylinder then crank and slotted lever mechanism old ham coupling from this also the questions were asked in the examination then after the equations for the analysis of the single slider crank mechanism here as you can see that the diagram is shown here then L is equal to N into R and here sine beta is equal to sine theta by N then sine beta is also equal to sine theta into R by L then L into sine beta is equal to R into sine theta then after X is equal to R into 1 minus cos theta then V is equal to r omega into sin theta plus sin 2 theta divided by 2n then if theta is equal to 0 to 80 then v is equal to 0 and if theta is equal to pi by 2 then v is equal to r omega then omega cr is equal to omega into cos theta divided by under root n square minus sin square theta here omega cr is equal to critical angular velocity then omega cr is also equal to omega cos theta divided by n then alpha cr is equal to minus omega square sin theta into sin 2 theta divided by 2n into under root n square minus sin square theta here f is equal to mr omega square into sin theta and crank radius is equal to stroke by 2 then one more important equation for acceleration a is equal to omega square into r into cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n then for the force in the connecting road here first is the thrust force fcr is equal to fp by cos beta then n is equal to fcr into sin beta and n is also equal to fp into tan beta then here t is equal to ft into r then t is equal to fp into sin theta plus y divided by cos phi into r then t is equal to fp by cos beta into sin phi into r here phi is equal to theta plus beta then after for radial thrust in the crank shaft wearing trb is equal to fcr into cos phi and t is equal to fcr into sin phi into r then cos beta is equal to 2l square minus r square divided by 2l square then cos theta is equal to r square by 2rl 
so you can say that cos theta is equal to r by 2l and t is equal to fcr into sin phi into r now the next chapter is flywheel here as you can see that first one is the work done per cycle w is equal to t min into theta then after t max minus t min is equal to i into alpha max then the equation for the fluctuation of speed cs is equal to n max minus n min by n min here and mean is equal to n1 plus n2 by 2 which is capital N then after the third equation is for the coefficient of the steadiness m is equal to 1 upon cs so m is equal to n upon n1 minus n2 then fourth one is maximum fluctuation of energy delta e is equal to 1 by 2 into i into omega 1 square minus omega 2 square here omega 1 is equal to maximum and omega 2 is equal to minimum then delta e is also equal to i into omega square mean into cs these all equations are very useful in the flywheel chapter then after the coefficient of the fluctuation of energy c is equal to delta e max by work done then the next one is energy stored e is equal to i into omega square then dimensions of the flywheel rim v is equal to r omega which is equal to under root sigma by rho and uh, here mass of the rim for that mu is equal to pi into d into a into rho and m is equal to rho into pi into d into a here we have considered only the important formulas from each chapter so the next chapter is gear train here as you can see that there are five types of gear train for the first one which is simple gear train the equation of train value is equal to t1 by t5 which is equal to n5 by n1 which is equal to the teeth of the driving divided by the teeth of the driven then speed ratio is equal to 1 upon train value then for the component gears the equation will be same like tv is equal to t1 by t6 which is equal to n6 by n1 similarly for the reverted gear train here the train value is equal to t1 into t3 by t2 into t4 here r is equal to pitch circle radius and you can compare r1 plus r2 is equal to r3 plus r4 as well as here m by 2 into t1 plus t2 is equal to m dash by 2 into t3 plus t4 then for the epicyclic gear train the degree of freedom is 2 this question was asked more than 2 to 3 times in the gate examination and it is used for the large speed reduction ratio for the epicyclic gear train the method is long so here we have not included the equation for that you can search out in the google then after the fifth one is sun and planet gear train for this type if the sun is fixed then the degree of freedom is 2 and the equation is na divided by n capital a which is equal to 1 upon ts by ta plus 1 and for the annular is fixed then n is equal to 0 so the equation is na by ns is equal to ts by ta divided by 1 plus ts by ta these are the equation from the gear train then after the next chapter is gear here some important equations are there which are very basics but frequently asked like module is equal to d by t then circular which is equal to pi into d by t then diametral pitch is equal to t by d and the multiplication of cp into pd is equal to pi then gear ratio is equal to t of gear divided by t of pinion then after contact ratio is equal to arc of contact divided by circular pitch and here cr is equal to 1.2 to 1.8 then after cr is also equal to angle of action divided by pitch angle then this note is very helpful which is for the proportionality here as you can see that v is equal to r omega so here omega is proportional to 1 upon r which is proportional to the n proportional to 1 upon train value proportional to 1 upon gear ratio which is proportional to 1 upon teeth and proportional to vr means the velocity ratio then after the minimum number of teeth required for the gear or pinion to avoid the interference here for the pinion t min is equal to 2 into ap divided by 
under root 1 plus g into g plus 2 into sin square 5 minus 1. Then for the gear, t min is equal to 2 into a g divided by 1 plus 1 by g into 1 by g plus 2 into sin square 5 minus 1. Then after 4 gear, t min is equal to 2 into a g divided by under root 1 plus 1 by g into 1 by g plus 2 into sin square 5 minus 1. A which is addendum here A is equal to RA minus R and the equation for RA RA is equal to R into under root 1 plus sin square 5 into g square plus 2g here g is equal to R by R here capital R for the gear and small r for pinion then T rec is equal to 2 into R by sin phi then after for conjugate profile there are two types involute profile and the cycloid profile in the involute profile phi remains constant and this profile is generated by nature and in the cycloidal profile phi changes and it is made by the hobbing process then after law of gearing the diagram you can see here and the law states that the line of action always pass from the fixed point which is called the pitch point then omega 2 divided by omega 1 is equal to O1P divided by O2P which is equal to O1M divided by O2N is equal to constant. Then here the length of path of contact is equal to KL which is equal to KP plus PL. And the equation of KL is equal to under root R square minus R into cos phi square minus R sin phi plus under root small r square minus r cos phi square minus small r into sin phi. Here in the second term you have to use for the small r. Then here in this diagram KL is equal to O2 O1. Then KP is equal to from O2 to P and for PL which is the arc of recess the value will be O1 into P. Now the next chapter is vibration. So from the vibration chapter, each and every equations are most important for the examination. So you can take a screenshot if you want. Now let's begin one by one. First one is here the general differential equation of motion. Me into x double dot plus c into x dot plus k into x is equal to Fe. Here m into x dot for the equivalent mass or equivalent inertia. Then c into x dot is equal to equivalent damping. Then K into X is equal to equivalent spring stiffness and F is equal to external force here for free or natural vibration F is equal to zero and for forced vibration F is not equal to zero. Then after Fn is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root K by Me which is in hertz or you can say that cycle per second. Then after T is equal to 2 pi under root Me by K and omega N is equal to under root ke by me then omega n is equal to 2 pi f these all are basic equations but you have to just go through it once then after for the series and parallel connections here for the series 1 upon ke is equal to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 and for the parallel k is equal to k1 plus k2 so here this proportionality you can remember that for k proportional to c proportional to i proportional to 1 upon r will be remain same as the equation of the k and for r you can inverse the equation then after i naught is equal to ml square and omega n is equal to under root g by l then t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g then omega n is equal to under root kt by i which is for without mass of shaft then with consideration of mass of shaft the equation will be omega n is equal to under root kt divided by i plus is by 3 and then after some important values of the inertia here for the ring it is mr square then i for disk is equal to mr square by 2 then i of sphere which is solid sphere then 2 by 5 into mr square then for solid cylinder mr square by 2 then I of road is equal to ml square by 12 then I of sphere which is hollow then 2 by 3 into mr square so these terms you have to remember because 
these values may be not given in the examination and uh, here for the disk type of problems here one not there as you can see that while calculating the examples you have to keep this in mind that in consideration of inertia of disk here the value is the 3 by 2 into mr square generally we take the value of mr square by 2 but in this type of figure you have to consider that the mr square value for the distance of bottom to the center so here the value of i is 3 by 2 into mr square you have to take care about the inertia value in any example now mainly from the vibration here four types of questions were asked first one is the spring and damper the second one is lever type and the third one is circular disc type and the fourth one is pulley type so we have discussed the equation of the spring and damper in the terms of under root kt by i and under root g by l here the second type is for the lever based questions in that there are two types are there first one is the vertical type problems and the second one is horizontal type problems so you have to just remember this one equation and based on this you can solve any example of the lever based questions here the standard differential equation of motion is sigma mi li square into theta double dot plus sigma ci into bi square into theta dot plus in bracket sigma ki into a square plus sigma kt plus or minus sigma mi into g into li into theta is equal to zero here similarly for the horizontal type of questions you have to neglect the value of mg into l and the remaining equation will be same so this is very simple equation and based on which you can calculate any examples then after you have to just use the equation of omega n and f for finding the frequency or the angular velocities and if there is a case for the combination of vertical and horizontal problems then you can solve it by considering the problem as the horizontal type problem that means you have to neglect the value of mg into l then after for the free vibration and force vibration the most important equations are there let's see one by one for the free vibration the critical damping coefficient cc is equal to 2 into under root mk then zeta is equal to damping factor which is equal to c by 2 into m omega n and zeta is equal to c by cc then td is equal to tp by omega d then after c by 2m is equal to zeta into omega n then lambda 1 2 is equal to omega n in bracket minus zeta plus or minus under root zeta square minus 1 here if zeta greater than 1 then or dam system is there and if zeta is equal to 1 then critically dam system is there and if zeta less than 1 then under dam system is there then c omega by k is equal to 2 into zeta into q here q is equal to omega by omega n and for the force vibration there are main three equations are there first one is the response x is equal to a into cos omega t minus phi here the equation of a which is amplitude a is equal to f0 by k divided by under root 1 minus q square whole bracket square plus 2 zeta q whole bracket square here mf is equal to magnification factor and value of mf is equal to 1 upon delta st here delta st is equal to f0 by k the next concept is transmissibility ratio epsilon is equal to ft by fo which is equal to under root 1 plus 2 zeta q square divided by under root 1 minus q square square plus 2 zeta q square here f0 is equal to external force and ft is equal to transmitted force so here the value of f0 you can calculate it from the equation of the amplitude here the value of q is less than or equal to root 2 then zeta is lower and epsilon will be higher then for q is equal to root 2 epsilon is equal to 1 and for q is greater than root 2 then zeta is lower and epsilon is also lower which is less than 1 so this is the best condition for the any system or any mechanism
and here for q greater than root 2 mf is also less than 1 which is magnification factor then one more note is there at resonance q is equal to then one more note is there at resonance q is equal to 1 which is equal to omega by omega n and mf is equal to 1 upon 2 zeta then a is equal to f naught divided by 2 into k into zeta then some more notes are there omega is equal to omega n into l square this equation you can use in the exam here as you can see in the example if the figure is given like this then there are two temporary nodes are there and here one loop is equal to number of temporary nodes plus one so you can put the values of l in the equation and you will get the angular velocity based on the natural angular velocity then after omega n is equal to omega by 4 for the effective isolation and omega n is equal to omega by 4 for the effective isolation and q should greater than root 2 then here one more notice there for the critical speed of shaft the equation of y is equal to e by 1 by q square minus 1 then after the methods used for deriving the differential equation of motion two methods are there first one is the equilibrium or the newton's second law for that the equation will be mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero and the second one is the energy method then after some key elements table is there which is very basic but useful the linear motion as well as the angular motion then for the spring and in the damper so these are the notation which are used in the different type of systems you can take a screenshot if you want then after response analysis for that some equations are also there first one is for free vibration of undamped system similarly there are equations you can take a screenshot after that for the free vibration response of the damped system is also there the equation will be x is equal to a into e raised to lambda t here the governing equation is m into lambda square plus c lambda plus k is equal to zero then the last topic of the vibration which is the logarithmic decrement ratio here the equation of delta is equal to 1 upon n into ln x naught by xn here x naught by xn is equal to e raised to n delta then after there is one example for the logarithmic decrement ratio so this is all about the vibration chapter now there are two tables for the cam and followers these tables are important from this table the equations of vmax and mx may be asked in the examination so for the uniform velocity vmax is equal to h into omega by phi a and there is no acceleration there then after for shm means simple harmonic motion vmax is equal to h into pi into omega by 2 phi a and mx is equal to pi square into h into omega square divided by 2 into phi a square then for the cycloidal motion 2 into h into omega by phi a and mx is equal to 2 into pi into h omega square divided by phi a square here the diagrams are also there for the values of v is equal to velocity a is equal to acceleration and j is equal to jerk so then here v max for the cycloidal motion is greater than that of the simple harmonic motion which is greater than the uniform velocity motion then during rise period dy by d theta is positive and phi will decrease and during return dy by d theta is negative phi will increase then 10 phi is equal to dy by d theta divided by rb plus rr plus y and for the offset cam 10 phi is equal to dy by d theta minus e divided by under root pi b square minus e square plus y so these are some important equations from the claim and follower now the last chapter of the theory of machines quick revision is gyroscope here in the gyroscope first one is the definition for the pitching it is the motion about the transverse axis then for rolling it is the motion about the longitudinal axis and in the steering it is the motion about the height you can see the diagram for the respective definitions then after some notations for the ship 
here the front part is known as the bow then the rear part is known as the stern then the right side of the ship is known as the starboard and the left side is known as the port this notation are also important in the examination then after the equation for the gyroscopic torque for gyroscopic couple t is equal to i into omega s into omega p where alpha is equal to omega s into omega p omega s for the angular velocity of axis of spin and omega p is equal to angular velocity about the axis of precision here alpha is equal to angular acceleration and the most important topic from the gyroscope is the effect on the aeroplane or the ship so if we go with the traditional method then it is more confusing for so many students so we have developed one short note here that you just need to remember only one line which is positive line downward it means that here l for left side you have to take the negative here a is equal to anti clockwise for that you have to take the negative so here n is equal to negative then if the resultant is positive then nose goes down you just need to remember that positive line goes down after reading it one or two time you can remember it very easily and based on this now you can take any example like if first one is the direction of the taking turn of plane is left side and the direction of rotor is rotating in the counter clockwise or anti clockwise then for that also the negative and the resultant of two negatives are the positive so the gyroscopic couple will be positive and as we have said you have to take the result that the effect is nose goes down and the tail goes up similarly for the right side and the clockwise the resultant will be positive and you can check any other cases there so this note will be very useful in the examination that the positive line goes down so we hope that you like this trick also and you like this video because all the important concepts and the important formulas we have covered in the short video of the theory of machines mm -hmm. so if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the bs academy and press the bell icon for the upcoming quick reasons for the different subjects of mechanical engineering if you like this video please share it to the other students who is preparing for the gate examination thank you so much